Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. Each week at this time, the Kraft Cheese Company presents for your enjoyment, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Evanson. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But right now, here's a message of very great importance for today's menu makers. I don't know how much you housewives actually know about modern margarine, but there's probably been no time in the history of America when it was so important for you to have the true facts about nourishing wholesome foods for your family. So I want to tell you about Parquet. Parquet is the new quality margarine made by Kraft, a delicious spread for bread, hot rolls, and toast. Now, of course, the fact that parquet does taste so good probably accounts for its popularity as a spread in millions of homes. But this is even more important. Parquet margarine is a protective food with exceptionally high nutritional value. It is one of the best energy foods you can serve and a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. There are 9,000 units of this vitamin in every pound of parquet. So tomorrow, ask your food dealer for a pound of parquet margarine made by Kraft. The whole family will like it because it tastes so good. And you'll know that you're giving them an economical, highly nutritious food made to the craft standards of quality. Just say Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now for the adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Wistful Vista. You say this is... Oh, Wistful Vista, where Pippa McGee and Molly live? Yes, madam. Oh, my. Do you think I'll be able to see them from the train window? No, lady. The McGees are on their vacation. Oh. But say, there's a next-door neighbor of theirs, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Where? Where? That portly gent with the mustache on the platform, the one making a speech to his employees. How do you know they're his employees? Because every time he goes away, he gives them an hour off to come down to the station and wave goodbye. Oh, so that's Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I never... Furthermore, I can't tell you how touched I am to see all the employees of the Gildersleeve Girdle Works down here at the station to bid me goodbye. <laughs> it's indeed... Uh, by the way, is there anyone left at the plant? Uh, well, uh, no. What if some orders come in? Who'll take the phone calls? Uh, Mert. Oh, Mert, eh? <laughs> yeah. As I was saying while I'm away, I expect every one of you to uphold Gildersleeve Girdles to the best of your ability. And don't forget our motto. If you want the best of corsets, of course it's Gildersleeve. <laughs> Very good, T.P., very good. Thank you, thank you. You'll get a raise. <laughs> and though it's necessary for me to go away and attend to other enterprises, the one thing closest to my heart is the Gildersleeve girdle. How long will you be gone, T.P.? At least three days and maybe till the end of the week. <laughs> uh, before you go, T.P., the Gildersleeve Girdle Workers Guild wishes to present you with this handsome leather briefcase as a token of our esteem for you. Yeah. I don't know what to say all except... Aboard. Yes, all aboard? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Out of my way, everybody. Where are my bags? On the train, T.P. Thanks. I forgot to buy a ticket. Where do I buy a ticket? On the train, T.P. Oh, yes. Let go of me, boys. Where are you pushing me? On the train, T.P. Yes. Bye. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, children. Here's your ticket, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sorry I haven't any berths left. Uh, couldn't you squeeze me in somewhere? I'll try, though it'll probably be a tight squeeze. <laughs> yeah, tight squeeze. <laughs> Side splitting, isn't it? Going to be in Summerfield long? Oh, no, just three or four days. I'm taking over the administration of my brother-in-law's estate. They're going to run it for my niece and nephew. Yeah, but that's quite involved, and I'm hungry. Which way is the diner? Why, an old, experienced traveler like you should know where the diner is. Huh? Oh, of course. No matter where you are, the diner's always at the other end of the train. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Uh, 
Excuse me, madam. <laughs> Yes, pretty crowded in this diner. By George, I'm so hungry I could eat the waiter. <laughs> yes, sir. Is it all right if I sit at this table? Uh, yes, sir. Sit right down, sir. If this gentleman doesn't mind reading his paper on his own side. I said if this gentleman doesn't mind reading his paper on his own side. Uh, excuse me, sir. Does you mind? Yes, I do. I'm particular whom I eat with. <laughs> you are, eh? Well, I'm not. I'm hungry. Waiter, bring me a steak. A nice, juicy, double tenderloin rare. Waiter, where's my milk toast? I ordered it 15 minutes ago. Yeah. I'm sorry, but milk toast takes time, you know. And, waiter, I want a big, heaping plate of French fries. Yeah, French fries. And a cup of strong coffee with lots of cream. Yeah, I'll get it right away. Sir. And bring me my milk toast made with gluten bread, remember? Yes. Bread. Oh, that reminds me. Some hot biscuits and a little pot of jam. Gluten bread toasted and a cup of hot water. Uh, and an apple pie a la mode with cheese. Yeah, with cheese. Yeah. I can't stand this. Listening to you is giving me heartburn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is, huh? A uh, waiter. Uh, don't forget the steak sauce, ketchup, piccalilli, and relish. Bring me a glass of bicarbonate of soda, quick. <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. I'll be back. Of course, it's none of my business, mister. And don't stick your nose in it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. That's the way you feel about it. I was just going to tell you you're getting your newspaper in the mustard. I don't use mustard. No, I guess you don't need any. <laughs> but what I was going to say was... Never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, I won't say it then. That mustard from your newspaper is all over your sleeve now. I don't care. What? Of all the messes I... Uh, 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 water only spreads it. <laughs> you see what they tell you? I'll thank you to mind your own business. What's the big idea of jumping down my throat? What do you expect addressing a perfect stranger? You're far from perfect, stranger. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to make a career out of ignoring you. Uh, here comes my food. That's pretty snappy service, waiter. Uh, yes, sir. Well, where's my milk toast? Yeah, I'm sorry, sir, but the chef, he's all out of glutton bread. <laughs> he wants to know, would pumpernickel do just as well? No, pumpernickel wouldn't do just as well. And why keep me waiting all the time while you serve this big buffalo the minute he sits down? Huh? No, look here, mister. I don't want to look here. I'm sick of the sight of you. The idea. An overstuffed ox like you, guttling and gobbling and gorging yourself like an ostrich. <laughs> I've got a bad case of indigestion already just from looking at you. Why, you dyspeptic little dodo. Just because you're mean to your stomach and your stomach talks back to you, you bellyache. Excuse the expression. <laughs> You're not suffering from indigestion. You're just green with Epicurean envy. I won't sit here. Uh, here's your bicarbonate of soda, mister. T take it away. Take it away. I need something stronger than that now. I've got some pills down here in my briefcase. Just a minute there. What are you doing with my briefcase? Your briefcase? This is mine. It is not. My employees gave it to me just this afternoon. Take your fat paws off of my briefcase before I... Before you watch, you dried up little crab apple. <laughs> And now, wait a minute, gentlemen, please. Let go of my briefcase. I will not. It's mine. All right, the idea is... Oh, yes, ma'am. Waiter. Waiter. Did you see anything of my briefcase? I left it... Oh, you gentlemen have it. Thank you so much. Well, for <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I've located a berth for you at last. Oh, that's fine, Conductor. I was getting tired of sitting around here in my pajamas. Where is it? It's uh, upper nine in the next car. Upper nine? Oh, my goodness. The last time I was in an upper berth was, uh, let me see, uh, 50 pounds ago. <laughs> the porter's making it up for you now. Yeah, thanks. I do hope that porter gives me a wide berth. Uh, 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 it's a dark in here. Oh, uh, Porter? Uh, Porter? Quiet! Yes. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Must be sleeping. Oh, Porter? Yes, sir. Have you got up or nine ready yet? Yes, but I didn't anticipate no gentlemen of such ample proportions. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I'd better take a ladder. Yes, I'd better take two. They're small. <laughs> well, all right. Come on. Yeah, uh, here we are, right up there, sir. Up there? Hmm. Oh, my goodness. Uh, hold these ladders steady, Porter. Remember, if they tip, I won't. 
the hours. Now, be careful, mister. Train is coming to a sharp quiet pretty soon. When? Then. Oh! Hold on, mister. Let us slide. I can't hold on. I'm coming down. Look out below. Oh! No! What hit me? Oh, my sacrilege. <laughs> Yeah, miss, uh, let me help you out. I don't want to get up. I want to sleep. Not you, miss. The man in Dapa. He's now in the lower. And where am I? You're right here, brother. Get off of my poor stomach. Who is it? Uh? Oh, it's you. What are you doing sneaking into my berth? I'm not sneaking into your... <laughs> I'm not sneaking. I'm trying to climb into bed. I'm your upstairs neighbor. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I hope that swinging shelf snaps shut on you. Oh, yeah. If it's going to swing, I'll see that it swings your way. And if I land on you again, brother, you'll spend the rest of the night sleeping in the road bed. Oh, quiet. Let me go to sleep. Okay, Grandpa. Unpleasant dreams. All right, Porter. Give me a leg up again, will you? Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-three. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-four. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-five. Oh, my goodness. Two o'clock already and still not a wink. Yes, thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-six. Thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-eight. Oh, what's the use? There was only some way of stopping that buzzsaw down there. I can't stand this any longer. Where's that porter? I'll fix this guy. Did you call me, sir? Uh, yes. Would you mind getting me a drink of ice water? I can't sleep. Uh, yeah, sir. Yeah. Here, here's the water, mister. Uh, thank you. You needn't wait. <laughs> good night, good night, good night. Good night, sir. Yes. Now, if I can hold this cup in this hand and open the lower curtain with it. Ah, I've got it. Yeah. Steady now, Gildersleeve. Ready. Aim. <laughs> oh, no. What, what was that? Porter! Porter! <laughs> Shut this window, will you? It's raining right in on my face. Quiet! Can a man get any rest around here? <laughs> Good morning, sir. He's just pulling into Summerfield. You want me to brush you off? No, I'll walk down the steps like the rest of the passengers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, Porter, you've given me such good service. Here's an order for a gilded sleeve girdle for your wife. Uh, thank you, sir. I happen to be a spinster at the moment. <laughs> but if it's all right with you, I'll put in my hope, sir. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's perfectly all right. Uh, Summerfield, eh? By George, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing Marjorie and little Leroy again. Why can't I, Marjorie? Huh? Why can't I call them T.P. like they do down at this foundry? It isn't a foundry, Leroy. It's a... Oh, never mind. It's nothing that concerns little boys. And I'm sure that he will prefer to have you call him Uncle Throckmorton. Oh, shucks. You can't go around calling a big, tough guy who runs a steel foundry Throckmorton. It's positively derogatory. It's derogatory. Yes, that too. <laughs> Leroy, 
Who told you Uncle Throckmorton was in the seal business? Ah, you thought you were so smart. I saw one of his letterheads. The Gildersleeve Girder Company. Hmm? <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. The Gildersleeve Girder Company. See, he should be here by now, shouldn't he, Marjorie? Now, don't you worry, Leroy. Just as soon as his train arrives, Mr. Wills will bring him here for breakfast. Oh, I wanted to go down to the station, too. I know, but Ted has to discuss all the legal details with Uncle Throckmorton before we go to court. Say, you're getting pretty darn stuck on that Ted guy, aren't you? Why, Leroy Forrester, I am not. Ted Wills is nearly our lawyer. He is not. Williams and Williams, Willies and Wills are our lawyers, and Ted's nothing but the tail end. <laughs> Well, he's young yet. You just give him time. Oh, there you go. Who oh, say, how's if I should call him Uncle Morton? Call who? Oh, Uncle Throckmorton. Well, I don't think he'd object to that. Wait, I can do better than that. How's this? Uncle Mort. Who's that? Uncle Mort. I'll answer it. Well, 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 I'll bet this is little Leroy. Hi, Uncle Mort. If I who? You, Uncle Mort. You don't mind if I call you Uncle Mort, do you, Uncle Mort? <laughs> no, not at all. Go right ahead. Uncle Mort, eh? <laughs> I like that. And this is Marjorie, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Marjorie, eh? Uh, come here, my dear. <laughs> my, how you've grown. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Throckmorton. Let me take your hat and coat. Will you have some breakfast? Uh, no, thanks. I've already had mine on the... Well, I'll have a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> sit right here, Uncle. Ted, you sit over there. Oh, thanks. My, this looks wonderful. Hey, Uncle, will you take me back to Wistful Vista with you and let me work in your factory? Uh, what? Well, I didn't think you'd be interested in that sort of thing. Now, Leroy... See, I am, Uncle Mort. That must be some layout. I bet you make the supports for a lot of big projects there. <laughs> Uh, 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 we don't turn out anything much like uh, We sort of confine ourselves to uh, foundations uh, oh. yeah. Say, I'd like to go along sometime when you install some of those foundations I don't have the... <laughs> what, what did you say, young man? Oh, uh, please excuse me, Roy Uncle Mort He's been like that ever since he found out that you owned the Gildersleeve Girder Company. What? Uh, Gildersleeve Girder? Yes. Oh, oh, yes, I see it all now. <laughs> yes, a bright boy. <laughs> Gee, Unc, Unc, do you ever have to slug it out with any of them tough steel workers of yours? Uh, no, no, I never do. You alone, huh? Uh, oh, well, of course, uh, there have been times when I've had to put uh, more snap into their work. <laughs> Yes. Once I was so angry, I picked up a badly made uh, foundation and bounced it right off the foreman's head. <laughs> you did? Yes. Oh. Now, Leroy, let uh, your uncle eat his breakfast. Yes. Have some toast, Uncle Mort? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, uh, speaking of toast reminds me of an amusing incident on the train last night. Uh, you'll enjoy this, Leroy. When I went into the diner, the only empty chair was at a table with a sour little crab. Heard that little rat yell when the ice water hit him in the face. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's time we leave for court, Mr. Gildersleeve. It is? Uh, come on, kids. This won't take long. Well, all I can say is we run things better than this in Whistle Vista. Eleven o'clock and the judge hasn't even shown up yet. Judge Hooker's usually very prompt. Yes, the trouble with some of these judges is they think they're little tin gods. Take those black robes away from them, and what have they got? Bow legs. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that's a hot one, Uncle Moore. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Everyone rise, please. Ah, at last. Superior Court, Department 25, the Uncle Hitter, they took a judge for signing is now in session. Be seated. Sit down, Uncle Moore. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Who's that man sitting in the judge's chair? Well, that's Judge Hooker. Judge Hooker? That's the man in the lower berth. Ladies and gentlemen, P. Gildersleeve for appointment as administrator of the state of Ray Forrester. Oh, that's us. Come on, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm not feeling very well, Ted. <laughs> uh, couldn't we postpone this over to another judge? Oh, come on, Uncle Mort. Remember what you said. This guy will be a pushover. Yes, a pushover. Oh, come on, come on. Step up. Don't dawdle. 
Sam got all day. Make a snappy, folks. The judge is pretty short-tempered this morning. He didn't get any sleep last night. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, with your permission, I'll put Mr. Gildersleeve on the stand first. Go ahead, Mr. Wills. Uh, Where in the witness belt? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, stop here? I do. <laughs> well, do you or don't you speak up? I do. That voice is very familiar. <laughs> Turn around, Mr... Oh, so it's you. Yes. Uh, hello, Judge. <laughs> Mr. Wills? Yes, Your Honor? I will examine this man's qualifications if you don't mind. I don't, Your Honor. But I do. Silence. <laughs> now then, Gildersleeve, what do you do for a living? I make girdles, Your Honor. <laughs> Order in the court. Order in the court. Yes. Order in the court. Order. Order. And you, Gildersleeve, any more cheap humor and I'll judge you in contempt. But it's true, Your Honor. I'm the president of the Gildersleeve Girdle Company. Uncle Moore, tell him the truth. He doesn't make girdles, Judge. Yes. And what does he do? Steal foundations. I bet he would, too. <laughs> now, no more interruptions, my boy. Remember, this is a courtroom. You realize who I am, of course. Sure, you're a bow-legged little tin god. Yes. What? Oh, Leroy. <laughs> You just said so yourself, Uncle Morris. Oh, you did. Uh, just a little joke, Your Honor. You know how I kid. Uh, I know. Uh. Well, I'm going to ask you a plain question, and I want a plain answer. Uh. What business are you in? Well, I... Uh, oh, uh, that is... Uh, Leroy, would you mind going out into the hall and get me some uh, some ice water? One moment. Who's running this court? You or I? Better not get Uncle Mort mad, Judge. Last night he threw a whole bucket of water on a guy in the bus under him. Oh, my. Here we go again. <laughs> he did, did he? Yeah. And this poor sap woke up and thought it was raining. Oh. <laughs> you ought to hear Uncle Mort telling. <laughs> Thanks, I will. Let's hear all about it, Uncle Mort. Judge Hooker, it's after five o'clock. This poor man's been on the witness stand all day. All right, all right. One more question, then I'll hand down my decision. Mr. Gildersleeve, what makes you think that you have executive ability? Well, I have a large staff of my own, and through years of experience, I know the proper relationship between employer and employee. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wells? Our firm has thoroughly investigated Mr. Gildersleeve, and we're satisfied as to his qualifications. Uh -huh. Mr. Wells, I have great respect for you and your associates. That is probably the only reason why I'm going to grant your petition. Hooray! However, in order to protect these children from their own misguided enthusiasm, I'm going to require this Gildersleeve to report to me every single week. Uh, but he Your must Honor... get an okay for every cent that he spends. But, Judge... And I will require him to post a bond of $50,000 in cash. Now, see here, Hooker. <laughs> I won't stand for this. I'll resign. Quiet. Jeez. Gildersleeve, I never sent for you. You came here begging for this job. To quote from Brawby versus Union Buggy Corporation, Civil Code of Nebraska, you made your bed and you can't lie out of it. But my business in Whistful Vista. You remain here and make this estate pay or go to jail for contempt. Now, wait a minute. I'm not good. Court is adjourned. I'll kill that old goat. <laughs> Ted, we've got to do something about this. Do you realize that a $50,000 bond would not only take every cent of my ready cash, but also means a mortgage on my Gordel Works? <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry about how the whole thing went, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, maybe if we went into the judge's chambers, we could persuade him to lower the bond, Uncle Moore. Sure, just let me talk to him. Young man, you've talked enough for one day. Well, how about it, Ted? Well, it won't hurt to try. Come on. Yeah. Come in. Uh, excuse us, Judge Hooker. Uh... You remember me, don't you? <laughs> I, I thought perhaps maybe we could possibly get that little cash bond reduced. I don't see why I should... Have if a... you spoke to somebody who'd known me for a long time, they might convince you that I'm not such a bad fellow. <laughs> oh, that would be fine, Uncle Moore. Yeah. Who could the judge talk to? Why, uh, the president of the Whistle Vista Chamber of Commerce. He's my next-door neighbor, too. That chap named Fibber McGee. We can call him long distance, Your Honor. <laughs> Yes, yes, I see, Mr. McGee. 
Yes, I'm glad you put me straight on that. Yes, I knew my little chum would set me in right. That's a very good point. Leroy, I want you to meet McGee one of these days. There's one of nature's noblemen. I guess you've made up my mind for me, Fibber. Yeah, Fibber. <laughs> Hold the phone a second, and I'll tell him. Gildersleeve? Uh, yes, Judge? Gildersleeve, I've decided to rescind that $50,000 bond. Uh, I knew that would happen if you spoke to my little pal. Yes, after talking to McGee, I'm going to make that bond $100,000. What? Give me that telephone. Hello? You're a hard man, McGee. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. While Uncle Throck recovers from that one, I want to say a word that I believe will make every thinking housewife want to try parquet margarine tomorrow. This delicious new craft product is most popular as a spread for bread and a seasoning for hot cooked foods because of its delicate, pleasing flavor. But the same qualities that make it so good for table use make it an extra fine shortening for baking. I say extra fine because it has all the qualities of an ordinary shortening plus fine flavor and added nourishment. Let me read you a statement from Mrs. Lillian Watts, who, having been born and raised on a farm, is mighty particular about food. She says, quote, I have a family of eight, and they all like parquet margarine. I use it in various ways. Cakes, bread, muffins, biscuits, soup, spreads, and other ways too numerous to mention. Thank you a thousand times for this wonderful product. End of quote. Now that's a mighty enthusiastic statement. But you'll be just as enthusiastic once you have tried parquet. It's so delicious, so nourishing, so grand in every way. Tomorrow, be sure to order parquet, the economical spread made by Kraft. And remember, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. George Leroy, I'm going to show that judge I can run that estate, or my name won't be Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. You bet it won't, Uncle Mort. You won't even have a name. Yeah, no. I'll just have a number. Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Original music on tonight's program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon saying good night for Kraft and reminding you to tune in again next week at the same time to hear the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Kraft presents the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, the Kraft Cheese Company presents for your enjoyment Harold Terry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. (laughs) 
We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But right now, here's an important message for you. Probably all of you are aware of the efforts of our government to make us a healthier, more vigorous nation by improving our diets. Yes, food, proper nutrition, is as important these days as airplanes. And that's why you should know about parquet margarine, made by Kraft. It's not only a delicious spread for bread, it's also rich in nourishing food elements your whole family needs. Of course, most people like parquet margarine because it tastes so good spread on bread, hot rolls, or toast. But health-conscious housewives also use parquet because it's a protective food of exceptionally high nutritional value. Yes, parquet margarine is one of the best energy foods you can serve. And to make its natural, wholesome goodness even better for you, Kraft adds 9,000 units of vitamin A to every pound of parquet, making it a reliable year-round source of this important vitamin. Why not ask your food dealer for parquet margarine tomorrow? One taste will tell you it's a superior product made to Kraft's exacting standards of quality. Yes, you'll like its flavor, and you'll like its economy, too. Just say parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Last week, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, Fibber McGee's next-door neighbor, left Wistful Vista to become the legal guardian of his niece and nephew, Marjorie and Leroy Forrester, in the city of Summerfield. Relaxing after a hard week's work as father, mother, and big brother to the pair, we find the great Gildersleeve explaining the finer points of baseball to Leroy. <laughs> As a result of that play, Leroy, we have a member of our team on each base. You understand? Yeah, the bags are loaded. Yeah. Come on, gang! Yoo-hoo! Uh, now, Leroy, don't get so excited. Remember, this is only a baseball game. Leroy! Why, you robber! Uh, <laughs> as I was saying, Leroy, we mustn't give way to our emotions. No, sir, Uncle Mort. Yes. Let's remember to be sportsmen. Leroy! Get an umpire! Always give the other fellow the benefit of the doubt, Leroy. Leroy! Right, Cree, your grandmother. Oh, shut up, you big wind bag. I am not. The umpire's nothing but a horse thief. Horse thief? Hey, I'm sorry, sir, but I've warned you before. Everybody's complaining. What do you mean, everybody? I'm not complaining, am I? Hey, Jesse James, where's your horse? Uh, we can't tolerate this any longer. Now, you'll have to get out. All right, we'll get out. Come on, Leroy. We've seen this newsreel three times already anyway. <laughs> Uh, don't forget your cap. <laughs> Careful stepping on people's feet. Hey, Uncle Mort, if you'll give me an advance on next week's allowance, I'll treat you to an ice cream cone. Yeah. No, thanks, Leroy. It's time we go home and fix up for that tea party your sister's giving at 5 o'clock. Oh, gee, do we have to go to be at that sissy party? Well, I'm afraid so, Leroy. Marjorie seems to think a lot of young Ted Wills. Yeah, they're stuck on each other, all right. But why drag us into it? Well, now that I'm guardian for you two, she wants me to meet Ted's parents under the proper social circumstances. Couldn't you just bump into them someplace, like in the butcher shop? Uh, you mean meet them in the meat market? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm afraid it's too late for that. Uh, Marjorie's worked awfully hard preparing for this afternoon, and she must be all ready by now. Come on, Leroy. Now, that's all taken care of. Oh, Bertie. Yes, Miss Marge. Will you please put the cake in the back of the pantry while I fold? Yes, ma'am. My, you sure work hard, and it sure is pretty. <laughs> That's my big surprise, and I don't want anything to happen to it. County Courthouse. Judge Hooker, please. One moment. Hooker speaking. What is it? Hello, Judge Hooker. This is Marjorie Forrester. You remember me, don't you? Well, should I? Well, of course. Just last week, you appointed my uncle as guardian for my brother and me. I did? Who is your uncle? Rock Morton P. Gildersleeve. Who? Gildersleeve? Two years in the state penitentiary. What? Oh, I- I'm in the courtroom, my dear, uh, sentencing a prisoner. What'd you call about? Oh, I'd like to have you come to tea this afternoon so you and Uncle Morton can get to be better friends. How can we get to be better friends when we hate each other's... Uh, when we hate each other to begin with? Oh, now, Judge... I planned this as a surprise for Uncle Mort. Oh, going to surprise him, eh? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll come. 
And when he sees me, won't all of his chins drop? <laughs> oh, Bertie, Judge Hooker is coming. Won't Uncle Mort be pleased? And some says yes, and some says no. Oh, oh, look at the time. I'm late for my manicure appointment. Now, I'll walk as far as the store with you. I got some things to pick up. Oh, I do hope everybody will like my cake, all right. <laughs> they sure will, honey. <laughs> it's just simply simple. Oh, thanks, Bertie. It's got to be good. Ted's mother is so discriminating and critical. Yes, and she keeps her nose up in the air like she ain't been introduced to what she's smelling. <laughs> Never mind, Bertie. <laughs> Let's go out the back way. It's quicker. Oh, uh, Marjorie, uh, we're back. Uh, hello, anybody home? <laughs> Leroy, I don't believe anybody's home. Doggone it, I thought we could get something to eat. It's been a long time since lunch. Yes, at least two hours. <laughs> Suppose we rummage around in the kitchen. There's bound to be something here. I usually look in the pantry first. Ah, the voice of experience. Well, here's a lot of canned goods we could open. Uh, kitchen cleanser, tennis balls, shellac, motor oil. <laughs> Just call out if there's anything you like. <laughs> Crunchy cornies. Some genuine New England chopped suey sauce. Hey, what's that in the back of the cupboard, Uncle Morse? Where? Oh, boy, a cake. Say, it's lucky you saw this. It's a honey. Looks good enough to eat. Well, then what are we waiting for? Here's a knife. Uh, one moment, Leroy. This cake hasn't been started yet. I don't think we should cut into it. Oh, it won't hurt to take one piece, Uncle Mort. Well, maybe not. But remember, just a piece a piece. Okay, here's the knife. Yeah. Thanks. Here you are. Hmm. Is that so? Mm. Well, excuse me while I try my piece. Uh, yes, sir. My fine cake. That's the end of it. Yeah, uh, stuffy in here, isn't it? Stuffy in where? Yeah, I see what you mean. Hello, Mr. Gilkley. Oh, uh, hello, Bertie. Oh, there you are, Leroy. Messing around the kitchen for some heat, I speculate. Who, me? I don't want anything to eat. Not now. Yeah. Good. You save your appetite for the tea party. Your sister done whipped together the most delectable cake. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know of her, yes. Mm -hmm. She did it because it's important to impress Mr. Will's mother that she's a good housewife. Uh. <laughs> Looks like Mr. Will's going to get a house and a wife. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, yes, Miss Marge worked her pretty fingers to the bone, baking all day. That's the surprise she's been talking about. Yeah. Uh-oh. Now, you want to take a peek at it? I'll show you. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, but she got it so beautifully redecorated. Uh, now, Bertie, don't go spoiling the surprise. It ain't going to spoil nothing. Oh, yes, it would. Leroy, isn't there something Bertie could go to the store after? After when? If... I mean, uh, Bertie, would you mind running down to the cigar store and getting me some, uh, some, uh, punchinillo panatellas? But I got work to do. Maybe I can get them. Oh, no, he's a miner. They won't sell him. I mean, uh, <laughs> here's a dollar. Get a whole box. But, Mr. Gillis, please. Hurry now, hurry. They may sell out. Remember, uh, punchinello panatellas. Yeah, sir. Hi, George. That isn't a bad name for a cigar, seeing that I just made it up. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, Leroy. Why didn't you stop me from eating that cake? Boy, are we going to catch it when Marge gets back? Yes. Uh, what do you say we take a short walk till about bedtime? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. No, no, we've got to face the consequences. Not me, Uncle Mort. I'll see you later. Come back here, young man. You don't see me running away. I'm going to stick my chin out and take it. That's not your chin sticking out, Uncle Mort. Never mind. Uh, Leroy, we've got to find some way to get an exact duplicate of that cake before that party starts. Come on, Bertie. Come oh, my. Who's that? That's old lady Snoop who lives next door. Oh. She's worse than an earache, Uncle Morse. I don't know the lady, Leroy, but I'm sure you're mistaken. I'll just see what Mrs. Snoop wants. No, no, Uncle. Her name isn't... Ah, how do you do, Mrs. Snoop? Uh, Mrs. Snoop? Oh, uh, this is Mr. Dinwiddie, 
Uncle. But you said... Oh, I'm so glad to meet you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm the girl who lives next door. Yes. Your niece, Marjorie, told me so much about you. I feel we're practically old friends. <laughs> Uncle Mort. <laughs> yes. Is, uh, is Marjorie here? Well, I... Uh, no, no. I remember seeing her go down the street half an hour ago through my front curtain. Uh... <laughs> You'd be surprised at all that I see through them. Yes. I see what you meant, Leroy. Uh, well, uh, anyway, I was looking for Marjorie, but I suppose you'll do instead. Uh, I will? Oh, well, what for, Miss... Uh... Dinwiddie. Yes. Henrietta Dinwiddie. Yes. With an M, not an M. And the accent's on the witty, not on the din. What do you want me for, Mrs. Uh, Dinwiddle? Oh, uh, you'd be surprised, Mr... Oh, I mean, I just dropped in to get a cup of sugar. Why, of course. Uh, Leroy, where's the sugar? Where's the cup? Yes. Oh, dear, imagine me. Oh, I forgot to bring one. I guess I'll just have to borrow a cup, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, you'll have to excuse a poor little flustered bachelor girl. Yes. No, Leroy, not the lump sugar, the granulated, just like I always borrow. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, as I was saying, it isn't often that I get to meet such a handsome man with dark curly hair and merry brown eyes. <laughs> Here's your sugar. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Leroy. Uh, well, it was it was so nice being introduced to you, Mr. Gildersleeve. And don't you worry about the sugar. You'll be getting it back sooner than you expect. <laughs> oh, that old hen, she makes me sick. Me too. Yeah, and a couple of weeks ago, Marjorie showed her a picture of you, and she said you look like Ronald Coleman. Yeah. Ronald Coleman, eh? Yeah. Can you imagine that silly day? Leroy, this is a free country. A lady's entitled to her opinion. <laughs> Uh, uh, better put the sugar back. Oh, wait a minute. They use sugar in baking cakes, don't they? Sure. Leroy, I know how we can save Marjorie's party. How? Bake her another cake. But can you bake a cake, Uncle Mort? Yes, I don't know. I never tried. <laughs> but it ought to be simple. After all, millions of women bake cakes every day. We ought to be able to do anything they can do. Yeah, what do you mean, we? I'm not going to get mixed up in no sissy proposition like that. Uh, but, Leroy, there's nothing sissy about baking. Uh, look at the cowboys who bake their own sourdough bread. And the Indians grinding their own corn into corn fritters. Uh, and the cooks in the Navy making uh, sea biscuits. <laughs> well, I, I guess you're right. Yes, well, let's get started. Uh, should we use a cookbook or make it up as we go along? Well, it should be a cookbook in one of these drawers. Yeah. Uh, here's one right here. Uh, cooking in six easy lessons or the bride's best friend. <laughs> well, let me see now. Here's one. A mocha coca tapioca cake. Oh, sounds too complicated. <laughs> Tomato soup cake with gumdrop icing. Gee, Uncle Mort, don't they make cake out of cake anymore? Uh, I guess not. Uh, look at this picture, Leroy. Doesn't it look like the cake we ate? Yeah, Lady Baltimore cake. Yes, that's it. Now all we got to do is copy this one. Okay, what do we do? Uh, first, uh, three cups of sifted cake flour. We got any cake flour? Nope. Here's some buckwheat flour. <laughs> Well, I doubt if there's any difference. Uh, next, uh, three teaspoons of baking powder. Uh, here's a box of baking soda. Uh, is, is it powdered? Yeah, it is. Uh, that's what they must have meant anyway. Uh, now, uh, salt, shortening, sugar, half a cup of milk. Used all of today's milk, and yesterday's is sour. Fine. My mother always used sour milk in her cakes. It'll give it that old-fashioned sour taste. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Teaspoon of vanilla and six egg whites. Hard boiled or post? Uh, no, Leroy, raw. It's easier to separate the white from the yellow if they're hard boiled, Uncle Morse. Leroy, this is no picnic. Now, you sift the flour, the baking powder, and the salt together. Here, use this sifter. Okay. And I'll take the other stuff. Beat egg whites until stiff, it says. Who, me or the eggs? Hey, hey, Uncle Morse. Uh, yes? This sifter leaks. It leaks? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, and look at the flower on the floor. Uh, get some more, Leroy. <laughs> Wait, I know how we can speed things up. We'll just dump all the ingredients in the electric mixer. Oh, that's a swell idea. Yes, it takes a man to figure out all the shortcuts in life. Uh, let's just pour everything into the bowl. There. Shall I turn on the mixer now, Uncle Morse? Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, my goodness, Bertie. She must have seen this mess. I'll get rid of her. You stay here. Uh, well, Bertie, uh, did you get me those uh, Punchinello Panatellas? Not exactly, Mr. Gillsleeve. I've been to seven stores looking for them cigars, and three of them was fresh out, whilst the other four have them in the morning. <laughs> they will, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
yes, sir. Now, I better be getting back in the kitchen. Yes. Oh, no, no. I mean, uh, I've got to have those cigars, Bertie. Oh, well, maybe after I finish my work in the kitchen. It'd be worth a dollar to me to get those cigars now. Huh? Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe in that case I could... Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, I suppose it's a truck coming up the hill. <laughs> There ain't no hill around here. Sounds like my electric mixing machine in distress. I better go see. Uh, go ahead if you want to lose that three dollars. What three dollars? Uh, for bringing back those cigars. Does I get it in advance? Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> here you are, Bertie. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> I just go on out the back way. It's quicker. No, no, no. Use the front door. It's bad luck to use the back door uh, when you're buying cigars. Take your time, Bertie. Hey, goodbye. <laughs> wow, that was a close shave. Oh, sounds like the boy's in trouble. They're coming, Leroy. All right, don't come out. We'll watch the back. I can't hear you. What's wrong with the mixer? It's throwing the cake batter all over the place. Oh, my goodness. Turn it off. I can't. I got batter in my eyes. Well, I will then. I'm not going to be intimidated by any... Oh! Get you in the kisser room? Right in the pan. Where's that switch, Leroy? Well, watch your fingers, Uncle Mark. I think I've got it now. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Oh, what a mess. Here's a towel, Leroy. Wipe the cake out of your eyes. Oh, Mr. Gillespie. Oh, jumping jelly beans. There's that woman from next door again. Oh, don't let her in here, Uncle Mort. She'll blab everything to Marge. Don't worry. I'll get rid of that gargoyle. <laughs> hey, coming, Miss Dunwoody. Ah, there you are. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I bet you think I'm an awful pest. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> but I wonder if I could trouble you for an egg. Uh, an egg? Yes, an egg. Uh, chicken's hometown. <laughs> I, I know just where Marjorie keeps them, so if you don't mind... Uh, don't I'll... trouble yourself. Uh, uh, Leroy, hand me out an egg, please. How do you want it? Hard-boiled or poached? In the shell. <laughs> Bright boy. <laughs> Lovely weather we're having, isn't it? Yes. It's perfect weather for a ride in the country. I just love to pack a picnic basket and go Here's out... Here's your egg. Uh, thanks, uh, Leroy. Yes, thanks, Leroy. Thanks very much. Uh, goodbye, Miss Dunworthy. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Did you brush her off, Hunk? No, she's walking down the steps. <laughs> yeah, let's hurry with the cake. All we have to do is pour the batter into the pan. Fine, but before I mess myself up anymore, I'm going to put on Bertie's bungalow apron. Help me into it, Leroy. Oh, but gee, Uncle Moore. Hold it up higher, Leroy. Fine. Now run around the back and tie the strings. <laughs> Oop, uh, not so tight, my boy. That's it. <laughs> you sure look funny, Uncle Mort. <laughs> oh, Front doorbell. What kind of a house is this? Leroy, see if you can get that cake into the oven. I'm going to answer the door. Oh, but Uncle, that apron! It's all right. It's dark in the hallway. That's right. Waste the electricity. Ah, ha, ha. Good afternoon, madam. Do you sag and slump over heavy scrubbing? Uh, Have you got that dishwashing droop? Droop, droop. Are you proud of the shape you're in? Uh, I'll see here. <laughs> You nearsighted little nincompoop. Bad cold you have there, madam. Now, I've got a girdle here that's the answer to all your prayers. It's a gilder-sleeve glamour girdle. It'll keep you in, but you'll never wear it out. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, as a special inducement, I've persuaded old man Gildersleeve to cut the price of this girdle to $3.99. You persuaded old man Gildersleeve, eh? Yeah, sure. You'd be surprised how palsy-walsy I am with the old fuddy-duddy. <laughs> <laughs> Why of all the... I know, but you should do something about that coal lady. Now, madam, if you'd care to try on... No, no, I happen to own... You already own a Gildersleeve girdle? Yes. Very good. But have you got a spare? Mister, you'd be surprised how many Gildersleeve girdles I have to spare. Good day. <laughs> of all the interruptions. How's the cake doing, Leroy? Oh, swell, Uncle Mort. It looks better every time I open the oven door. Yeah. Splendid. Now, who's that? A man can't even bake a cake around here. All right, all right, I'm coming. Now, see here, you... See what, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, oh, hello, Judge Hooker. <laughs> Come in. This is quite a surprise. That's what it was meant to be. What are you doing in the apron? Playing house? It... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. No, I'm not playing house. Hey, Uncle Mort, I just took the cake out of the oven. Oh, uh... Oh, boy, does it look swell. Oh, hello, Judge Hooker. What are you doing here? Hello, Leroy, my boy. What have you and your uncle been up to now? Why, we... Yeah, been... uh, nothing at all, Your Honor. Uh, Leroy, time to get cleaned up. And my, look at me, I'm a mess. Yes. I'll go with you, Leroy. Uh, make yourself at home, Judgey. But I came early just to ask you two a few questions. We'll be back, Your Honor. Something funny going on around here. It smells like a cake I'm smelling. 
I better see what they've been doing in the kitchen. Mmm, mmm. A layer cake. Looks like it would taste good, too. I wish I wasn't on that darn diet. I'd take a piece. <laughs> Not that one piece would hurt me. I, George, I believe I will. <laughs> Good cake. I think I'll have another piece. Ah, oh, there you are, Your Honor. <coughs> uh, oh, that's a bad cough you got there. Here, let me get you a glass of water. Oh, you've been eating our nice new cake. And after I worked my fingers to the bone... Oh, my goodness, I'm getting sick. By George, you are white around the gills. That cake, that cake, I ate some. Uh, no good, eh? Uh, now, uh, my pills, pills, I left them home. You better take me there now. Oh, why did I ever take up baking? Uh, Leroy, Leroy! I better throw this cake out of the window. There. Farewell, Lady Baltimore. Oh. You want me, Uncle Morris? Yes, call me a cab, quickly. Gee, what's wrong with the judge? I've got to take him home. He's suffering from a bad attack of uh, Lady Baltimore. <laughs> ah, what can I do for you, sir? I happen to see that big cake in your shop window. I'd like to buy it. Uh, but that's a wedding cake. Yeah, I know, but it could pass for a party cake if we knock off the bride and groom. Uh, how much do you want for it? Well, I'm sorry. I couldn't sell it to you. Oh, baked it for a wedding, eh? But they'll just have to get married tomorrow. Oh, but really, mister, I couldn't let you... You couldn't, huh? Here's a $10 bill. Now do I get that cake? Well, if you insist... Never mind wrapping it. I've got a taxi outside. Just hand it here. Yeah, thanks. Now open the door, will you? Yeah. Goodbye. Oh, Mama! Yes? I just made a big sale. A man bought that wedding cake we've had in the window for the last two years. <laughs> Uh, Leroy, anybody in the kitchen with you? No, come on in. Uh, Did you find a cake? Did I? Take a look. Oh, boy, that's a dilly. Not bad, eh? Who says you can't eat your cake and have it, too? <laughs> uh, Mr. Gilsley. Oh, that's Miss Dinwiddie again. Uh, Leroy, put this cake in the pantry while I answer the door. I'll strangle that old seagull. Oh, uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you must think I'm terrible running in and out all the live long day. Yes. <laughs> and borrowing things all the time. Well, uh, it's because the road to a man's heart is through his stomach. And if that's the case, why, your road, uh, it's uh, so wide, it's... Uh, well, I mean, I... Well, no, uh, what do you want yeah. this time? Oh, it's nothing, really. I Well, I just brought you something I baked for you with my own little hands. A cake. Well, thank you just the same, Miss Dinwiddie. But I have a cake. A great, big, beautiful $10 cake. And furthermore, I'm fed up on cake. Goodbye. That takes care of that. Oh, Uncle Moore. Uh, I'm looking all over for you. Come in the living room and meet everyone. I'm about to serve the cake I baked this afternoon. The uh, cake. Oh, yes. Uh, Marjorie... There's something deep down inside of me that's weighing heavily on my conscience. What is it? It's your cake. I ate it. But, Uncle Mort, how could you? Uh, Leroy, help me. Oh, Uncle... Oh, Uncle Throckmorton, what'll I do now? Uh, don't worry, honey. I went out and got the biggest and best-looking cake money could buy. Oh, but I couldn't deceive you. It, it's all right. What they don't know won't hurt them. Now, let's go in and meet the folks, huh? Oh, there you is, Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah, I got them for you. Uh, got what for me, Bertie? Them Punchinella Panatellas. Uh, the man, he didn't have none in stock, but he rolled them while I waited, and it cost $8 a box. Oh, my. <laughs> More expense. Well, never mind that now. Uh, Bertie, get that big cake out of the pantry and you serve it. And remember, no matter how different it looks, that's the one Miss Marjorie baked. Who? Huh? Yeah, come on, Marjorie. Oh, yeah. Here comes Mrs. Wills. Uh, Will. Oh, Mrs. Wills, I want you to meet my uncle, Mr. Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, charmed, Mrs. Wills. <laughs> Excuse me for being tardy, but I had to take home a friend who was suffering from a sick cake. I mean, a sick headache. <laughs> no, I see. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cakes, Marjorie, Ted has told me about the angel food cake you've baked. Uh, angel food? But I thought it was more of a Lady Baltimore cake, like they serve at weddings. Oh, really, Mr. Gildersleeve? They don't serve Baltimore cakes at weddings. Not even in Maryland? <laughs> Well, no matter what kind of a cake Marjorie bakes, it's always delicious. Oh, now, Uncle Moore. Uh, just wait, Mrs. Wills, till you sink your teeth into this one. 
Ah, Bertie's bringing it in now. Well, 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 that's oh, my. It, it looks quite professional, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't believe a pastry chef could do any better. <laughs> hey, go ahead, Marjorie. You cut it. Oh, you cut the first slice, Uncle Mort. Huh? After all, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be eating this cake. I see what you mean. Uh, <laughs> hey, give me the knife, Bertie. Uh, oh. Uh, well. Uh, frosting's a little thick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dull knife. Uh, Bertie, haven't we got a sharper knife? No, Mr. Gillsleeve, but we've got an axe. <laughs> Never mind, I'll manage with this. Uh, so, uh, oh, careful, Uncle Mort, I'll slip off the table. What? Oh, my goodness, it's made out of plaster of Paris. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you something that should make every quality-wise and economy-minded housewife want to try parquet margarine first thing tomorrow. Here it is. Now you can have a high-quality product made by Kraft that's so downright good as a spread for bread, toast, or rolls that you'll want to use it lavishly as a seasoning for hot vegetables, a shortening for baking, and for pan frying, too. Yes, that quality Kraft product is parquet margarine. It tastes so good that you'll want to use lots of it at the table and for cooking. And it costs so little, you can use all you want without being extravagant at all. Yes, use all you want for baking. Remember, parquet is a real flavor shortening that makes better tasting cakes and cookies. Here's what one user says about parquet margarine. I'll read you a few lines from a letter from Mrs. Emma Hartman of Cave Town, Maryland. Now, we didn't ask Mrs. Hartman for this letter. She was so enthusiastic about parquet, she just had to tell us about it. Quote, I would like to tell you how well I like parquet. I use it for everything I want to be especially nice because of fine flavor, unquote. You see, the secret of parquet's popularity is its delicious flavor. And housewives with an eye to food value like it because it's such a nourishing energy food that contains plenty of vitamin A. Yes, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. So you know it's not only good tasting, but good for you, too. Miss Dinwiddie? Yes? Oh, you're angry. You took me seriously when, you, when I was just kidding. Well, really, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, that cake you baked for me. Uh, some people just dropped in at our place, and that cake would just about save the day for me, Angel, a uh, cake. <laughs> oh. oh, it would? Yes. Oh, well, then, take it by, by all means. Oh, Miss Dinwiddie, you're an angel. I'm so happy I could kiss you. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, that is, I, I didn't quite mean. Uh, it was so nice of you. Say, where are you going? In to bake you another cake. Oh, my. Oh. Good night. <laughs> Original music was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, Kraft presents from Hollywood, California, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. 
But first, I want to remind you that these are challenging days for every one of us. It's our duty to produce more to help meet our country's increasing needs. And that takes plenty of good food, as you wise homemakers know. Wholesome, nutritious food that provides the energy and nourishment your hard-working, hard-playing family needs. That's why you should know about parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Parquet margarine is a delicious food that's packed full of wholesome nourishment. It's one of the best sources of food energy you can serve. And important to you housewives who know how essential vitamins are, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A, making it a reliable year-round source for your whole family. What's more, parquet is the margarine with the delicious flavor whether you use it at the table for baking or for pan frying. So why not give your family the benefit of this grand-tasting, nourishing food? Tomorrow, ask your dealer for a pound or two of economical parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Just ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve. Come on, wake up, Judge Hooker. Pay attention to your checkers. It's your move. I know it, Gildersleeve. I was merely studying the board. What, with your eyes closed? (laughs) Let's speed this up. We haven't got all night here. All right. There, there. There and there. <laughs> now crown me. I'd love to, but I haven't got anything to do it with. Hooker, I don't see how you keep beating me, honestly. In fact, I don't think you do, honestly. Gildersleeve, you're a pushover. You couldn't win a game from a backward baboon with a dozen checkers up your sleeve. I could, too. Um, I mean, I wouldn't need a dozen checkers. I'll show you, Hooker. Set them up again and pull in your belt. Because this time I'm going to beat the hell of oh, Leroy. How are you tonight? <laughs> Judge Hooker. Leroy. Sam, can I? Uh, can you what, Leroy? Well, I hate to keep pestering you, Bonnet, but can I see the circus tomorrow afternoon? Not unless they happen to pitch the tent in the front yard of the Peter B. Flugelhammer Junior High School. Is that where you go, Leroy? Yeah, Flugie Junior High. Say, I grew up with Peter B. Flugelhammer Sr. That's who the junior high school was named after. If, well, I thought the school was named after Peter B. Flugelhammer Jr. No, Junior was the son of Sr. after whom the junior high school was named. Poor Junior. He never could finish senior high. Yo. But, gee, Uncle Mort, could you call up school and ask if I could skip tomorrow? I did, Leroy. I even went so far as to predict that you wouldn't be feeling very well tomorrow. What did they say? They told me that an excuse for illness while the circus is in town must be accompanied by a note from your doctor. Shucks, that's a heck of a note. Yes, yes. (laughs) Well, there's no use grousing, young man. Remember, school must come first. Now, sit down and get started with your homework. Yes, Leroy, your homework, that's the thing that's going to count in later life, not going to the circus. I don't think so, Judge, because in my later life, I expect to be a lion tamer. Oh? You don't need any education for that. All you need is a kitchen chair and the right kind of breakfast food. (laughs) Well, yes. This lion taming is new, though. Last week, you were going to become a pitcher with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Oh, that was last week. Oh. Gee, I wouldn't mind missing the circus so much, Uncle Mort, but I hate to see those passes go to waste. Oh, did you get passes, Gildersleeve? Did I get passes? Yes, sir. I've got certain connections. Yeah, Uncle Mort gets the right number of beans in that jar in the drugstore window. Oh. Yes, I connected that time. <laughs> Gee, Uncle Mort, are you sure you can't take me? Uh, I'm sorry, Leroy, but you'd better make up your mind to skip the circus. Oh, gee, a guy can't get any fun out of life. Uh, you know, Gildersleeve, sometimes I think our school system has become too scientific, too streamlined. You're right, Judge. These days, everything is streamlined. Uh, except me. <laughs> Yes. Things were a lot different in the days when I went to school. <laughs> what a memory. I sat, I sat next to Petey Flugelhammer. Huh? That was long before he was elected lieutenant governor and then named the school after himself. Oh. We had none of this modern stuff like getting a doctor's prescription to go to the circus. Yes, it was the same in my school days too, Judge. Of course, I'm not as old as you are. What do you mean, Gildersleeve? You were shaving when I was a little shaver. I was not. You were too. All right, all right. I was always taught not to contradict my elders. <laughs> it, come to think of it, Judge, we kids used to have a lot more fun than modern children have. 
I can still remember some of the tricks we pulled at school. So do I. Shenanigans, they were called. Yes. I'll never forget the time I dropped a paper bag full of water on the Spanish teacher. Only it turned out to be the new athletic coach. And when he caught me, boy, was he athletic. <laughs> That's nothing. I once sneaked up behind Miss Pettibone's desk and tacked her dress to the floor. <laughs> Kids don't do a thing like that these days. Yeah, kids can't do a thing like that these days. <laughs> Say, a Judge, did you ever put eggs in the principal's umbrella? No, did you? Uh-huh. I had my own hen and I saved eggs for a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> I can still see him lifting that umbrella over his head. <laughs> well, I put alum in the water pitcher at our graduation exercises. Oh, that's a peachy stunt. <laughs> what happened? I didn't graduate. <laughs> Oh, yes, youth. Sometimes I wish I were a kid again, just so I could pull a few more of those cute little innocent juvenile pranks. Well, they're a thing of the past. Yeah. I never hear of kids doing those things these days. Not enough imagination, I guess. That's right. You know, I remember when a dog and pony show came to our town and all us kids made up our minds to go. You know how we got the afternoon off? No, how? Well, I climbed up on the schoolhouse roof and stuffed my coat into the chimney. <laughs> Boy, I wish you could have seen that smoke pour in and those kids pour out. <laughs> Gildy, I'll bet you were car. Oh, that wasn't anything. Did I ever tell you about the time we smuggled the horse up in the bell tower at college? No. <laughs> Gee, no, Uncle Mort, tell us about it. Well, I borrowed this. Leroy, I didn't know that you were still here. Sure, you told me to do my homework. Say, did you ever do any homework, Uncle Mort? Uh, stacks of it. Gee, when did you find the time? Didn't it interfere with your jokes? Now see what you've done, Gildersleeve, giving the boy a wrong impression of our childhood. Me? You started it, tacking teacher's skirts to the floor. And you, a superior court judge. Why aren't you ashamed? Well, how about you, egging the principal on and trying to brain everybody with bags of water? What do you mean, everybody? Just our Spanish teacher, Miss Olson, that's all. <laughs> now, Leroy, don't get us wrong. Judge Hooker and I were merely reminiscing about an era that doesn't exist anymore. I'll say it doesn't. You couldn't get away with those corny gags today. Those gags weren't corny, Leroy. They were mighty clever. Uh, <coughs> huh? Oh, oh, yes, yes. They were terrible. Uh, the big kids made me do them. I'm ashamed of myself. Aren't you, Judge Hooker? Yes. I was a bad boy. <laughs> yes. You see, Leroy? Gee, you two treat me as if I was 12 years old. You are 12 years old, Leroy. Sure, I know, but I don't like to be treated that way. You'll have to hurry, Marjorie, if you're going to the circus with me. I'm almost ready. What's the rush, Uncle Mort? Well, I'd like to get there on time for once. No matter when I start, it seems I always arrive in time to get caught in the opening procession. One year, a hippopotamus chased me around the ring twice. I never did find my seat. <laughs> it's too bad Leroy couldn't get off from school to come with us. Yes, the poor boy. Well, we'll bring him back a red balloon and a little whip it, with a tassel. <laughs> hey, anybody home? Hi. Leroy. Gee, I'm glad I caught you before you left for the circus. Well, Leroy, what are you doing home at this hour? School was dismissed just now. Come on, let's go to the circus. By the way, Leroy... Why were classes dismissed? Well, uh, you might call it an accident. Accident? What was the accident? Oh, nothing serious. Then what was it? Oh, it seems they had to get all the students out quick on account of all the rooms had to be aired out. Aired out? They did? Why? Well, nobody knows for sure exactly, but the general opinion is that uh, somehow or other, a stunt got into the air conditioning system. Oh! I've ever seen. How did you like the fellow who did the swan dive into the tank of burning gasoline, Uncle Mort? I liked him, but I don't think Secretary Ickes would. <laughs> Leroy, there's something that's been troubling me. It's that skunk in your school. You mean Mr. Proctor, the principal? No, Leroy. <laughs> the one that got into the air conditioning system. Do you happen to know how it got in there? No, I don't. Say, remember the tiger that rode on the elephant's back? How did they train him to do that, Uncle Mort? Oh, with kindness, I suppose. Uh, Leroy, did you happen to have anything to do with it? With the tiger, Uncle Mort? No, the skunk. That wasn't a skunk, Uncle. It was a tiger. Tigers and skunks have different kinds of stripes. I know they have. I'm talking about school. But, you know, I've been thinking. 
Isn't it a strange coincidence that this accident occurred on the day the circus came to town? Yeah, funny, ain't it? Uh. Uh. Say, Uncle Mort, what do you think would happen if when the lion tamer had his head in the lion's mouth, the lion suddenly had a sneeze? Well, I don't think anyone would say tight. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leroy, I hope that nothing Judge Hooker and I said about our school day pranks caused you to try to imitate us. Oh, no, sir. You understand we were just talking about old times. Yes, sir, like Judge Hooker says. That's about all you old-timers have got left. Your memory. Yeah. What did you say? Uh, good afternoon, Bertie. Is Leroy home from school yet? Well, let me look in the refrigerator. Uh, no, sir. Did you expect to find him in there? <laughs> no, but I can tell if he's here by what ain't. <laughs> well, maybe he wasn't hungry this afternoon That boy, why, he's nothing but appetite held together by skin and bones Oh, what's the matter? Well, there's a lot of strange things going on at Leroy's school And I'm afraid that maybe I'm partly to blame How come you messing around the school? Is you one of them pants teachers? <laughs> no, it's just that Judge Hooker and I were talking about some little pranks we used to play when we were in school a little uh, harmless things, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, well, Leroy happened to overhear us, and now I'm afraid he's showing us the modern versions with the uh, chromium trimmings. Uh-huh. Uh, what makes you think little Leroy's doing pomodiddles? Well, uh, did you read the afternoon paper? No, sir. It never gets to me till the following morning. Oh, yes. Well, I've got it right here. Listen to this. Juvenile Joker startles school. Police were called early today to investigate a large, stout lady's body seen suspended from the window of Principal Poultney Proctor at Flugelhammer Junior High School. Oh, who was it, Miss Proctor? Yes. No, but listen. Closer inspection revealed that the body was a dummy, stuffed with old football pads, wearing a green and purple silk dress, size 48. Green and purple silk? Size 48? Yes. Yeah. Sounds like my Sunday go-to-meeting dress, the one that was kidnapped off the clothesline last night. Yes, doesn't it? Well, what's my dress doing in the newspaper? Uh, I don't know, Bertie. <laughs> Shh, hey, Bertie, here comes Leroy. Do you think he did it? Shh. Yeah. Good afternoon, Uncle Morse. Hiya, Bertie. Say, is this your old dress? That's my new dress, Leroy, and what you doing with it? Why, Piggy Banks just gave it to me. He says the wind must have blown it over into his yard. He found it under a window. Young man, isn't this the dress that was hanging out of Mr. Proctor's window this morning? You mean on the dummy that was suspended from school? If... Well, how could it be if it belongs to Bertie? What do you think, Bertie? I ain't saying nothing. I'm only too glad to get my dress back without paying ransom. I'm going to hide it this time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, look, Leroy, uh, don't think of me just as your uncle and your guardian. Uh, think of me as your pal, uh, your buddy. Now, if there's anything that's troubling your little mind, why don't you just come right out with it? Well... Okay, Unc, there is something that's been bothering me. I understand. Go right ahead, my boy. What is it? Well, how did you ever get that horse up into the bell tower at college? Oh! I asked you to come here tonight, Judge Hooker, is because you and I are turning Leroy's school topsy-turvy. Why, I haven't been near the place. We've been we... doing it by remote control. <laughs> Remember how we shot off our mouths in front of Leroy about our school day monkey shines? Yes, and say, I just remembered another one. Forget it. Leroy has been up to all our old tricks. Oh, his teachers have caught him, huh? No, that kid's smarter than we were. But we got to stop him from going on with him. Well, maybe if I gave him a little lecture... Hooker, you don't understand children. That wouldn't work at all. We've got to pretend we don't know what's going on. That shouldn't be hard for you to do. <laughs> when Leroy comes in, that'll be our cue to start casually chatting about the evils of practical joking. Yeah. Yeah, subtle propaganda, you know. How about it, Hooker? We can try it. Too bad this whole thing had to happen. You know, Gildersleeve, it would never have started if you hadn't opened your fat face. Me? Why, it was you that started it, you little travesty on justice. Is that so? Why, Gildersleeve, if you had the intelligence of a jackass... Uh, but no, why should I daydream? <laughs> There's no use arguing with you. Why not? Because I don't argue with blubberheads. Well, I do, you blubberhead. <laughs> Just because you're a judge, do you think? No, I can answer that myself. You don't think. <laughs> 
Don't you provoke me, you big water wind. Oh, that settles it. I'm going to lambaste you with... Oh, excuse me, I didn't think... Oh, uh, oh, come right in, Leroy. I was uh, I was just telling Judge Hooker how to uh, baste a lamb, wasn't I, Judge Hooker? <laughs> huh? Uh, oh, yes, yeah. yes. Don't let us disturb you, Leroy, my boy. Go right ahead and do your homework. Just pay no attention to us. I won't. Uh, uh, as we were saying, Judge, uh, don't you think that juvenile delinquency often starts with some innocent boyish prank? When were we saying that? Oh, uh, of course, Gildersleeve. Uh. Quite often, a young fella starts out for a lark and winds up in a cage. How's that? Oh, Judge. <laughs> then you think that the practical joking can lead to a serious consequences? Surely. Yeah. It starts out with a fella dipping girls' pigtails into ink wells, and then he becomes bored with that and puts firecrackers in the coal scuttle. Yes. Or water in the teacher's galoshes, and then setting them out to freeze. Never heard of that one before. Huh? That's only good in real cold weather. Well, in summertime, you can always put flypaper on all the chairs. Yes. Yeah. With the words, kick me, printed on the back. Yeah. Say, I did that when I was in fourth grade. You should have seen the fun at recess. You know, I used to hunt for frogs during recess and put them all in the lunchboxes. <laughs> Once I made a mistake and put one in my own lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you about the time that I snagged our principal's wig with a fish pole and then hoisted it to the top of the flagpole? Oh, boy. I wish I could have seen... Oh, my goodness. What have we been saying? Huh? Leroy, don't you pay any attention to this old... Uh, say, where is Leroy? I don't know. You said pretend he wasn't here, and by George, he isn't. Yes, and a lucky thing, too. How did we ever get started talking like that again? I remember distinctly. You began it, Gildersleeve. Me? Who are you, feeble little fuddle-headed fuddy-duddy? Smile when you say that, Gildersleeve. Smile? I'll laugh right out loud. <laughs> Marjorie. Hello, Pierpont. I came to see Meatball. Who? Meatball. You know, Leroy. Only you don't like us kids to call him Leroy anymore. Like I don't like to be called Pierpont. All right. Piggy. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, Leroy. Piggy, Banks is here to see you. Come on in the library, Piggy. It's right that way. Thanks. Well, come on in. Don't be bashful. But your uncle, that's him behind that newspaper, ain't it? What's the matter with him? Oh, nothing. He always does that after dinner. He's digesting his food. Oh. Ain't we going to disturb him? No, we had roast beef and potatoes for dinner. Nothing will bother him for another hour at least. Now, let's get going on that history stuff. Well, I know Miss Keller's going to ask us about the vice presidents tomorrow. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. She's going through the book exactly the way she did last year, the first time I took the course. <laughs> okay, I, I think I've got to memorize. But is she going to ask us the names of all the vice presidents? She did last year. I kept a diary. All right, but gee, what a question to ask. Well, you check the list and see if I get them right. Shoot. Uh, John Adams... Thomas Jefferson, Aaron Burr, uh, uh, Aaron Burr... You said that. Mm. Say, Meatball, what do you think of the stuff that's been pulled off at school lately? Oh, I don't know. What do you think of it? Oh, I don't know. Have any idea who's doing it? Gee, I don't know. You got any idea? Well, I don't know. Who do you think? I don't know. Let's get back to the vice president. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, John Adams, uh, Thomas Jefferson, Aaron Burr, uh... Say, I wonder who put the iron sulfide in Miss Keller's inkwell. How'd you know it was iron sulfide, Meatball? Shucks, anybody knows that's the stuff that puts the smell in inkwell. You know who pulled that one, Piggy? Let's get back to Vice President. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Aaron Burr. Uh, oh, gee, I don't know what good knowing the Vice President is going to do a guy who's going to be a stuntman in the movies. I thought you were going to be a lion tamer. Well, lion taming's just one of the stunts I'm going to do. Talking about stunts, did you hear about the one somebody just pulled tonight over in the schoolyard? Which one's that? Ah, I bet you know about it already. Well, maybe I do and maybe I don't. I ain't saying. 
What are you talking about? Oh, about what they did to old man Flugerheimer's statue. <laughs> Somebody dressed him up in a set of red flannel underwear and a corset. No kidding. Yeah. Boy, if they ever find out who did that, they'd be expelled from school prano, I bet. <laughs> Well, let's get on with the vice president's pig. All right. Say, could I borrow a glass of water? We had corned beef for dinner. Sure. Come on out in the kitchen. I'll get it for you. Boy, wait till Mr. Proctor sees the woolies on Flugie. Uh, did I hear right? Red flannels on the corset on Flugie? Or was I just dreaming? No. There's Piggy Banks' hat. It's true. Oh, let me think. Yes, that's what I'll have to do. Yes. Six. Hooker's just as much to blame as I am. I can't let Leroy be expelled. The... Hello, Judge. This is Gildersleeve. you got to help me with something. I can't explain now, but I'll pick you up in about ten minutes. we got a date with an old schoolmate of yours. This is the right part of the schoolyard? Why, of course. Not so loud, Gildersleeve. Oh. I'm a superior court judge. Can you picture what would happen if I'm caught? Yes, yeah, scandalous, isn't it? <laughs> oh, why do I let you get me into situations like this? Because you haven't got any more brains than I have. And where in the name of Goots and Borglum is that statue? <clears throat> Never mind, I found it. <laughs> yeah, that's Flugelhammer up there. Flannels, corsets and all. Let's not hang around here all night, Gildersleeve. Come on, I'll boost you up. Well, wait a minute, I'll take this top coat off. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's better. All right, get down now. <sighs> Upsy daisy. Oh! oh, my poor back. You'll cave it in. <laughs> Push my other foot up, Judge. I will if you take it out of my hip pocket. <laughs> yeah, there. Is that better? No. Ow! Now it's in my ear. Well, in one ear, not the other. If... Gildersleeve, get up there. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. What's wrong? Judge, do you notice a sudden cold wind? <laughs> no, can't say that I do. Which way is it coming? Up. <laughs> the judge, hold my feet so I won't fall. I got him, I got him. You're all right. Solid as a rock. No, no, you're holding Pete's feet. What? The flat-footed Fugelhammer. Yeah, that's better. Now I can get to work. I wonder where Leroy ever found this corset. Make it snappy, Gildersleeve. Who do you think you are, Gypsy Rose Lee? Yep. Okay, okay, I've got it now. Here, catch it, Judge. Hurry up before somebody catches us. All right. Hey, Leroy must have sewn this underwear on. I never knew the little rascal could sew. How's it coming, Gildy? Just another second, yeah. Cut out that whistling, Judge. I'm not whistling. That must be the night watchman. Oh. Come on, rip it off. Let's scram. Okay, head for the car, Judge. Hey, who's that? Uh, this way, Judge. Quit calling me Judge, Gildersleeve. Oh, where are you? Don't you believe him, Gildy? Oh! Scatter, Judge, scatter. I'll meet you at the drugstore. <laughs> the principal sent for us, Uncle Mort? Well, now, you let me handle the whole thing, Marjorie. Do you think that Leroy might be in some trouble? Well, I didn't want to tell you, Marjorie, but your brother has turned his school into a midget version of Hell's a Poppin. <gasps> Leroy? But he had such a fine record. He had, until he heard Judge Hooker and me brag about the foolish antics we performed as children. Oh, I hang my head when I think of it, and I'd like to hang the judges, too. Oh, now, Uncle Mort, it can't be that serious. No? Well, come on, you'll see. You know, after all, boys will be boys. Leroy is just a bit high-spirited. And what's wrong with that, sir? You were a boy once yourself, weren't you? Me? No. Uh, I was talking to the principal. <laughs> Rehearsing, I mean. <laughs> after you, my dear. Yes. Look at George Washington and the cherry tree. Just high spirits? Washington was a boy, too. We were all boys. Uncle, are you all right? Of course I am. No, no, I'm not. It's been a long, long time since I was called to the principal's office, but I still get that old feeling. Me too. Yeah. Well, brace up, Uncle Mort. Here we are. Okay. Let's go in. Hope he doesn't make us stay after school, Marjorie. Uh, 
Mr. Proctor? Yes? If I'm Leroy Forrester's uncle, and this is his sister, Marjorie. Well, I'm glad to see you two. <laughs> I want to talk to you about that young man. Yes, I know, Mr. Proctor. Really, he's a fine boy at heart. I realize that. There's something I want to tell you. Sure, about. but you were a boy once yourself, weren't you, Mr. Proctor? Well, of course I was. Uh, you see, Marjorie, didn't I tell you? <laughs> Mr. Proctor was a boy once himself. <laughs> Probably high-spirited, too. Surely. Now about your nephew. I hope you're not going to be harsh with him. But why should I be, Mr. Forrester? Uh, excuse me, my name's Gildersleeve. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Glad to meet you, Mr. G... Did you say Gildersleeve? Yes. Did I say something wrong? That happens to be my name. And does that happen to be your top coat hanging on that hook? Where? If... Yes. How did it happen to get here? Last night, that coat with your name in it was found by our night watchman. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. I just remembered a dental appointment. One moment. There's something else that belongs to you. Your red flannel underwear and your corset. Corset? Well, Uncle Mort, I don't understand. Neither does Mr. Proctor. I understand only too well. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? A grown man, a big, fat, grown man, going around at night putting union suits on statues. Yes. Uncle Mort, what is it? Now, can't you explain? Sure, if I can get a word in edgewise. Actions speak louder than words, Gildersleeve. It's a lucky thing for you that Leroy Forrester is your nephew. It is? Yes. I'd expose you in a minute, but I don't want to spoil Leroy's big day. Leroy's big day? Oh, what has he done now? That's why I sent for you. Today, he's going to be presented with the Chamber of Commerce Medal as the outstanding student in Flugelhammer Junior High School. What? Leroy? Well, I knew it all along. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, I want to ask you, what is the most welcome compliment a hostess can receive? Well, I'm told it's sincere appreciation of the dishes she serves, comments on the lightness of her cakes, the flakiness of her pie crust, exclamations on how downright good everything tastes. So here's a tip for you housewives. For baking that's sure to win compliments, use delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. You see, parquet margarine is a genuine flavor shortening, not a bland, tasteless fat. Yes, the same delicate, appetizing taste that makes parquet margarine so delicious for table use gives added flavor to baked foods, too. And parquet mixes so easily and creams so smoothly, it's really pleasant to use. Remember, too, that parquet margarine's flavor makes pan-fried foods taste better, and it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. And whether you serve delicious parquet margarine at the table or use it for cooking... You are giving your family a nutritious, wholesome, energy food. Remember, too, that parquet is an excellent source of vitamin A. So give your family the benefits of this delightful, nourishing food. Serve them economical parquet margarine tomorrow. Just ask your dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's made by Kraft. <laughs> That's a beautiful medal, Leroy, and I'm mighty proud of you. But uh, won't you answer just one question for me, my boy? What is it, Unc? Who was responsible for all those escapades around your school? Now, Uncle Mort, I, I positively don't know. What's more, I don't want to know. And, and even if I did know, you don't think I'd squeal on my pal Piggy, do you? Uh, you're a bright boy, Leroy. Good night. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, Kraft presents from Hollywood, California, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. 
But first, here's what a prominent government official said about nutrition not long ago. This official said that in times like these, proper nutrition is as important as fighting planes. Yes, we all need the right foods and plenty of them to keep up the pace our great defense effort demands. So you'll be glad to know that parquet margarine made by Kraft is one of the right foods and that it's so economical you can use all you need. You see, parquet margarine not only has delicious flavor that makes it grand for table use, baking, and pan frying, parquet contains lots of valuable food elements, too. Yes, wholesome parquet margarine is a highly nutritious food. In fact, one of the best energy foods you can serve. And what's more, every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. But just because parquet margarine is good for you, don't think it isn't good tasting. Why, parquet's delicate, appetizing flavor has made it a favorite with families all over the country, both for table use and for cooking. So try it. Buy a pound or two of delicious parquet margarine tomorrow. Yes, ask your dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve, and his niece and nephew, Marjorie and Leroy. They're trying to entertain a friend of Marjorie's, Oliver Honeywell, a chap who's taken so many pills that he's beginning to look like one. Today, Oliver is the man who came to lunch and stayed through tea and dinner. It's after nine now, and a quiz game is in progress. That's very good. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> now, the next question is for you, Uncle Mort. Okay. I love quizzes. Let's hear it, Leroy. Well, what's the difference between Niagara Falls and your friend Judge Hooker? There's no difference. They're both big drips. <laughs> no, no, that's wrong. Oh, is it? The difference between them is that Niagara is a mountain fountain and the judge is a legal eagle. Oh, oh yeah. Wrong. Well, I see. Now whose turn is it? It's your turn next, Oliver. Uh -huh. Boy, this one's a sin. Huh? Can you tell us who was the third assistant secretary of agriculture in President McKinley's administration? Oof. Oh, that wasn't fair, Leroy. No, that, that's too hard, Leroy. Oh, no, 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 it isn't. Uh, third Assistant Secretary of Agriculture McKinney's administration, uh, Lucius Ann Follinsby. Yep. That's right. I, <laughs> I remember. It is? Well, that's great, Oliver. <laughs> Oliver, that's wonderful. Oh, really, it's nothing. A fellow shouldn't get any credit for remembering his own grandfather's name. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you had me fooled for a minute. I thought you were smart. Yes, Leroy. Well, next is Marjorie's turn. Huh? huh? Sis, what does it mean if you say, throw up the sponge? Um, I give up. Absolutely correct. Oh, my God. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the scores so far are Oliver, 27, uh -huh. Marjorie, 19, and Uncle Mort, minus two. Uh, young man, <laughs> what do you mean, minus two? You answered one question wrong twice. It's twice? <laughs> now, here's your chance to make up, Uncle. Huh? It's an arithmetic. Arithmetic. If Jones buys 50 bales of hay and 100 bushels of barley for $300... Yes? ...and the barley costs four times as much as the hay... How much did each bale cost? Oh, my. Let me get paper and pencil. Uh, Fifty bales, a hundred bushels, three hundred dollars. Mr. Jones should have bought defense bonds. <laughs> the idea. Oh, what's that? Half past nine. Leroy, I've got a question for you this time. If 9.30 equals your bedtime and you haven't done your homework yet, how do you expect to know your lessons tomorrow if you have to go to sleep now? Gee, that's an easy one, Uncle Mort. All those questions I've been asking you people are my homework. Oh, well, it's all done. It is? <laughs> You're a bright boy, Leroy. Say, can we just finish this game, Uncle Mort? Yeah, <clears throat> I sort of lost interest in this Gee, game. I thought it was fun. So. You would. Oh. Now scamper off to bed, Leroy. Gee whiz, I'm not a bit sleepy. Why can't I stay up? It's the same thing every Sunday night. First Jack Benny, then Charlie McCarthy, and after that trying to get Leroy to go to bed. But, Uncle Mort, you stay up a lot later than this. Why can't I? Because you're growing, Leroy, and I'm not. No, maybe not in the same direction as I am. Never enough, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh. well, leave Uncle's waistline out of this. You leave it out. You brought it in. Yep. <laughs> children, children, let's drop my waistline. It's dropped too far already. Yeah. <laughs> 
Good night, young man. Oh, are you going to bed, Uncle Mort? Sweet dreams. No, you're the one who's going to bed. Yes, and let's not discuss it anymore. But, but... That's but... all, brother. <laughs> but it isn't fair. It's not democratical. I'd like to stay up as late as everybody else. Well, let me see. Can I, Uncle Mort? Uh, promise to go to bed the minute we do? Gee, of course I promise. Then you can remain up as late as Marjorie and I. Boy, that's keen. Well, I'm pretty sleepy right now. How about you, Marjorie? What? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I can hardly keep my eyes open. Yeah. Oh, I catch on. It's a trick to make me go to bed now. <laughs> You've made your bed, Leroy. Now get into it. <laughs> In that case, maybe I should... I'll get it. Well, if that's my mama, you tell her not to worry. Yeah. Leroy. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi, Pig. Pe- it's for me. It's Piggy Banks. Piggy mm-hmm. Banks. What do you say, Pig? What for? Oh, no, no, Uncle Mort wouldn't... Huh? No, I wouldn't even ask him. Oh, it's too bad, Peg, but that's the breaks of the game. Goodbye. Uh, I don't want to intrude in your private affairs, Leroy, but what is it Piggy Banks wanted to do? Oh, he wanted to come over here tonight to carve out his pumpkin for Halloween. Well, I'd have no objection to that. Yeah, but he wanted to use you for the model. You? <laughs> you go straight to bed, young man. We're all going to bed now. Oh. Uh, oh, in that case, maybe I should. Yes, you should, Oliver. Oh. Uh, good night. Uh, Marjorie, don't let Oliver forget his overcoat tonight. It's awfully chilly, and he might catch something he hasn't got already. <laughs> Mr. Gilsleeve, I didn't bring any overcoat. I didn't expect to be invited for tea and dinner, too. I... Invited? Uh, oh, oh, my. I hate to think you'd be going clear across town on the streetcar. Oh, Midgey, the streetcar doesn't bother me. It's the waiting and the walking. Yes, and in the dark, too. <laughs> Say, uh, why don't you stay here for the night, Oliver? Oh, that's a splendid idea. Where can we put him, Uncle Moore? Uh, on the sofa in the study. It's the kind that collapses into a bed. <laughs> oh, no, thanks, really. I don't think I should. Why not? I'll fix you up with a pair of my pajamas. Oh, I don't think I could sleep in a strange pair of pajamas. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, besides, uh? besides that, don't you think they'd be a trifle large? Oh, come, come, Oliver. It'll be fun. Like sleeping in a tent. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll bring out a couple of spare blankets and a pillow. Oh, yes. never mind the pillow, Midgey. I'm allergic to feathers. Uh, feathers? Is that so? Oh, yes. You know, I have it so bad I even break out with spots when I eat chicken broth. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you better telephone your parents and tell them you won't be home tonight, Oliver. Oh, yes, I better. Otherwise, Mom would have to send Pop out to look for me. Uh, then she'd have to go out to look for Papa. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll get the blank. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, hello, Mama. Mama, this is Oliver. Yeah. What's that? Papa's been out looking for me already. Well, it isn't ten yet, Mama. Oh, we want to get an early start. Uh, you better go find him, Mama. Uh, try the place on the corner. Oh, not the drugstore. The place in the other corner. I don't know why he always goes there. I never do. Well, you just push open the doors and call in. That's a... What? Oh, I'm still at Midgey's house. Yeah, Mama. They invited me to spend the night here on account I didn't bring an overcoat. I did? I must have left on a streetcar. Huh? Well, I got my pills. Uh, don't worry, I'll keep out of drafts. Good night, Mama. Poor Mama. You know, she doesn't seem to realize that I'm a big boy now. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's very hard to believe, Oliver. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Here. Uh, what's this nickel for? Oh, for the phone call. I never like to be under obligations to people. Yes, I can see that. Well, everything's ready for you, Oliver. Yeah, go right in and make yourself comfortable, Oliver. I'm going to lock up. Uh-huh. Oh, be sure all the downstairs windows are fastened, Uncle Mort. There have been some burglars in the neighborhood lately. Burglars? Oh, don't worry, Oliver. Go right in and get ready for bed. If a burglar ever saw you in my pajamas, he'd put back everything he took. <laughs> I wonder who built these windows. The Pullman Company? Oh, my bunion. Oh, uh, almost forgot to wind the kitchen clock. <laughs> Somebody already wound it. Oh, oh! excuse me, Aesop. <laughs> I didn't mean to step on your tail. <laughs> now, Scat Cat, scram. Go. Outside. Yeah. Everything locked up tight, Uncle Moore? Yes. A burglar would need three policemen to help him get in here. <laughs> uh, 
Excuse me. I guess it was the company we had for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, see you in the morning. Huh? Good night, Uncle Mort. Yeah, good night, my dear. Good night, Uncle Mort. What? You still up? Uh, good night, Leroy. Good night, Uncle Roy. Good night. What's that? Who? Oh, oh, good night, Oliver. <laughs> Somewhere near here. How about let's go on and see? You better ask your Uncle Mort first. Okay. Uh, Mom and Pop. Hey, Uncle Mort, can I go to a fire? Huh? Uh, what's that? There's a fire somewhere as close. Can I go see it? A fire? Oh, boy, I haven't done one for years. And I just love to go to blazes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I should have known. This way. Yeah, thanks. Now, let's hurry outside or the fire will be out before we are. See, this is fun. Huh? Hey, Marge, let's go. Here's Uncle Mort. Yeah, let's get Oliver. You think he'd be interested? Sure, it'll be a tonic for his nerves. Oh, Oliver. Yes, Mama, I'm getting off. You? <laughs> I'm not your mama. Come on outside with us. Hurry up. What's wrong? There's a fire, Oliver. Fire? Oh, oh my goodness. Come on, let's go. Oh. Right away. Oh, follow me. Wait a Wait for us, Oliver. Uh, Leroy, bring Oliver's shoes. Hey, come on, Marjorie. Hey, Oliver, come back here. Where's the fire? It's somewhere around the corner, Oliver. Is it coming this way? No, we're going that way. Come on. <laughs> Here's your shoes, Oliver. You better put them on before you wear out your socks. Oh, thanks, Leroy. Uh, all right, let's not spend all night here. The fire won't wait for us, you know. Oliver, you can tie your shoelaces afterwards. Oh, as you say, Mr. Gill. Oh, sick. Oh, on second thought, Oliver, you better tie them now. I might as well, now that I'm down. Gee, this is the latest I've been out since the night I went walking in my sleep. Yeah, well, let's take a quick look at the fire and scoot back to bed. I wonder whose house it is. Well, we'll soon see. I think the engine's right around the corner. They are? Oh, oh I yes, see a lot of people. Yes, there they yeah. are. Gee, look at all the neighbors. There's nothing like a good fire to bring out all the best people. <laughs> Everybody must have gotten up. Huh? Oh, look, there's Edie Quinn. Wearing the same kimono she wore to that fire last year. Yes. We can Well, here we are. I don't see any fire. I better find out what this is all about. Uh, let me through here, please. Uh, excuse me, lady. Oh, uh, pardon me, Chief, but could you direct me to the fire? Mister, I wish you could direct me. We can't find it. Oh, well, it may be a little unprofessional, but have you asked anybody? Say, that's an idea. Thanks. Oh, it's all right. Uh, quiet, please. Let's have quiet, everybody. Yes, quiet, uh... Now, did anyone here turn in a fire alarm? Oh, Excuse me. I was the one who called. Oh, hello, Mrs. Beasley. Well, where's the fire? Oh, there isn't any fire. My poor little cat is stranded on top of that telephone pole up there. What? Yes. Oh, good grief. Madam, do you mean you got us all out of bed and dragged the firemen away from their gin rummy game just to look at a cat? Oh, disappointed because someone's home isn't burning down. <laughs> huh? I know who you are. You're the man who does want to set the world on fire. <laughs> now, see here, Mrs. Uh... Oh, this is Mrs. Huh? Beasley, Uncle Mort. Mrs. Beasley, this is my uncle, Mr. Gildersleeve. How do you do? Uh, charmed, I'm sure. Now, see here, Mrs. Beasley. What do you mean by waking up the whole neighborhood? Now, take it easy, mister. I won't take it easy. Chief, are you going to waste the taxpayers' money climbing telephone poles for tomcats? Well, what's wrong with that? Well, give me a reason why you should go to all that trouble. Sure, I'll give you a reason. This lady happens to be the mayor's sister-in-law. Yeah, uh, just as I thought. Politics. Hey, boys, yeah. get out the 40-footer and bring down that cat. Right. Thank you, Chief. I'll see that my brother-in-law hears about this. Yes, and I'll see that the newspapers hear about it, too. I'll write letters to the editors. And I write a nasty letter, madam. <laughs> and as for you, Chief... You're paid to fight fires, not to go sky-hooting around town all night. Now, I've heard enough out of you, fatso. Yep. If you don't pipe down, I'll turn you over to the police, you big false alarm. I'm a false alarm, you little brass pole polisher. Take off that fireman's uniform and say that. Now, don't get so hot under the collar, beach crust, or I'll have the boys cool you up with a hose. 
I'm not afraid of you and all your little squirts. <laughs> you twitch a thumb at me, and I'll push that tin hat of yours so far down, you'll have to breathe through a straw. <laughs> well, now you have gone too far. Logan! Yes, Here, hold my coat. That suits me. Oliver! Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Keep off the grass, you'll get your feet wet. <laughs> Uncle Mort. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Where's the lady that owns the cat? Please. Right here, Kelsey. Now I've seen everything. The idea. Using thousands of dollars worth of fire equipment, waking up hundreds of people in the middle of the night just to snag a mangy cat off a telephone pole. Here it is, lady. Safe and sound. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh. Dear me, this isn't my cat at all. Well, now it isn't even her cat. Lady, if you aren't... Yes, Uncle Mort. Yes. What's wrong, Marjorie? I'll tell you what's wrong, Mr. Gildersleeve. This is your cat. Yes. <laughs> Our cat? Yes. Uh, Aesop? <laughs> is that a hot one? Oh, my goodness. Let's get home. Come on, children. Uh, come on, Aesop. Uh, goodbye, Chief. Thank you, boys, for doing a noble and humane deed. Ah, go back to bed, you big mattress. Oh. Come on, man. Let's go. I don't like the way he said that. <laughs> Too bad there wasn't a fire. We could have at least gotten warm. Oliver, but don't you dare catch a chill. I'll try my best not to, Minji. Wish I'd brought along my cold pills. Uh, let's hurry into the house, Oliver. We'll fix you up a nice hot cup of... Uh, well, what can you drink a nice hot cup of? Water, if it's distilled. Uh, well, it'll be nice to get back into a nice warm bed. Uh, open the door, Leroy. Okay. Oh, it's locked. Yep. Locked? Why didn't I go home on the same time? Uh, now, don't get excited. Don't be nervous. Uh, take it easy, everybody. I have the key right here. Right here in my pants pocket. Oh, no. No what? No pants. <laughs> I'm just wearing pajamas. Here, let me try that door. Ooh, no shoes either. <laughs> Maybe it's stuck. No, we're stuck, Oliver. The wind must have blown us shut. Well, I guess the joke's on us. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't get it. You keep asking questions like that, Oliver, and you'll get it all right. There must be a window around the side or in back that I could climb into. No, Leroy. Before we went to bed, I made sure that everything was locked as tight as a drum in a bagpipe band. Oh, wait a minute. We forgot something. Huh? I know how we can get in. You do? Well, what is it? Birdie. A clever girl, Marjorie. Birdie. Yeah, come on, everybody. Where are we going now, Midget? We're going to see if we can wake Birdie, our mate. Yes. Oh, Birdie. Oh, Birdie. Oh, Birdie. Yes. Too many Birdies. Let me do it. <laughs> uh, oh, Birdie. Yes, Mr. Gerald, please. Uh, uh, Birdie, uh, will you please come downstairs and open the front door? Yes, I'm locked out. And so is Marjorie and Leroy and Oliver. What an unfortunate coincidence. Yes, Bertie, quit stalling and hurry down here. I would if I could, Mr. Gilsey, but I just can't. Why can't you? Because I'm locked out, too. What? If... <laughs> Bertie, aren't you upstairs? No, sir, I'm right here on the back post. Oh, this is a pretty pickle of fish. How did you get locked out? Well, I just got home from a lodge meeting. Yeah. You know, the mysterious and bewildering orders of the daughters of Cleopatra. Yeah. <laughs> I the head Sphinx. Yeah. Uh, Sphinx? Uh, you are? Yes, sir. And I found the back door bolted. You know, that's contrary to the customary procedure. Yes, well, I wonder if the people next door have got a pass key. Oh, they went away on their weekend. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting terribly cold. Maybe I'd better go home after all. Uh, no, Oliver. We'll get inside in two shakes of a jiffy. Oh. Uh, the only trouble is all the downstairs windows are locked. If we could only reach the second floor. I can do it. If you boost me up, I can climb this tree and then crawl out on that branch and drop down on the roof of the porch there. Who do you think you is, Leroy? A Superman man? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I won't let you risk your neck, my boy. You're too young. I do it myself, only why ruin a tree that never did me any harm? Oh, dear. Now, isn't it too bad that we don't have anyone big enough and thin enough to come to our rescue? <clears throat> it's getting colder, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I can't help thinking what King Arthur or one of his knights would do on a case like this. Yes, it, <laughs> I believe it is getting cold. <laughs> Why, he'd leap off his horse, spring to the tree, and just just warm up to his lady love's window. 
If I'd only brought along some of my vitality tablets. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Oliver, why don't you go climb a tree? Who, me? Midgey, you know I get dizzy spells from high places. <laughs> Oliver, it's really very easy. You can do it with your eyes shut. Oh, I don't like this. Give him a boost up, huh? Can't you see he's raring to go? Uh-huh, raring to go home. Yeah. <laughs> Come, Oliver, you've got to be brave. Pull up my pajamas. Mm. No, I mean the ones you're wearing. <laughs> yeah, now tighten your belt. I didn't say yes. You shook your head. Well, can I help it if I shiver in the affirmative? <laughs> <laughs> well... Now, you take his other leg, Leroy. Okay. Yeah. Careful now. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Grab hold of the branch, Oliver, right above you. Well, yeah. don't drop me. I bruise easily. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. I'm right below you. Mm-hmm. Now, just pull yourself up. Uh, no, no, Oliver. Go the other way. Uh, You're getting out on the wrong limb. Gee, if I only had my slingshot here, I'd head him in the right direction quick enough. Leroy. <laughs> Uh, keep going, Oliver. You're doing fine. Right. Oh, what are you stopping for now? The spring on my pajamas, bro. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, 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 I made it. <laughs> oh, I made it. I landed on the roof. Yeah, well, congratulations, Oliver. Uh, I never thought you'd make it. How about it, Missy Witchy? Am I as good as any night? Oh, yes, Oliver, you're wonderful. Yes. By George, for a week night, he finished strong on Sunday. <laughs> yes. All right, Oliver. Now, just climb in one of the windows and all our troubles will be over. Mr. Gildersleeve? Huh? I've got bad news for you. What? There aren't any windows over the porch. <laughs> what? A porch without windows? I never heard of such a thing. Let me look. Well, that's one for Ripley. <laughs> you better come on down, Oliver. Oh, I can't reach that limb again. Uh, Jeepers, we've stranded Oliver. Is that bad? Now what are we going to do, Unc? Well, there's only one thing to do. I've got to get a ladder someplace. And a piece of string. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Oliver. Oh, hurry, Mr. Gillespie. It's terribly cold up here. Yeah. <laughs> The people in the back got a nice big ladder. Yeah? Why don't you just pussyfoot over and throw the bar? Well, thanks, Bertie. I suppose that's all I can do. Uh, children, you just stay where you are. And Oliver, uh, don't go away. Very funny. <laughs> I'll be back just as soon as I can, Oliver. Fine state of affairs when a man can't break into his own home. Well, that's what you get for chasing fires in the middle of the wood. Uh, oh, it's you, Aesop. Out of my way, you Siamese snake in the grass. Now, uh, let me see. There's a loose board somewhere along this fence. Ah, uh, there it is. Tight squeeze, Rock Morton. You should really cut out the starches. <laughs> I wonder where that ladder is. It's as dark here as the back of a coal miner's neck. Who's there? Huh? Speak up or I'll shoot. Oh, oh, hello. Don't shoot, Mrs. Beasley. <laughs> it's only me, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what are you doing in my backyard at this time of night? Uh, what am I doing here? Oh, oh, yes, we were locked out of our house, Mrs. Beasley. Do you happen to have a ladder I could borrow? It's in the shed. In the shed's locked. Well, then, if you could find the key and kind of throw it down to me, oh, I... Nerve. Waking me up, scaring me half to death, and then having that call. Uh, what did you say, Mrs. Beasley? Wait where you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll be right there. Yeah, lovely woman. A break at last. This time we're all set, T.P. Where are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, right underneath your window, Mrs. Beasley. Directly underneath? Yes, directly underneath. Well, then, cat. Oh! <laughs> on the grass. I hope Uncle Mort doesn't get his feet damp. Hey, sis, I did it all right, all right. Boy, that was a thrill. Well, it's only a matter of minutes now. Well, Oliver, it's only a matter of minutes now. Uh, only minutes before I freeze. I wish I brought a parachute. Who that there? It's me, your Uncle Throckmorton. <laughs> if I ever lay hands on that B- B- Beasley woman, I'll kill that old cow. <laughs> Why, Uncle, you're soaked. What happened? Uh, she lured me underneath her window and then threw a bucket of water on me. I'm going to tell the mayor about this. Oh, that's a shame. But don't you worry. Huh? We'll have you in the house and dry inside of five minutes. Oh, you g- g- got the door open? No, not yet, but soon. Poor Oliver's been freezing on that roof. He's freezing. Yes, so I sent Leroy down to the corner to ring the fire alarm. Oh, fine. Oh, my goodness. What'll the chief say when he sees me this time? Uh, can't you stop him, Leroy? I don't think so. Oh, in fact, I'm sure I can. Oh, my, here we go again. Stop right here, men. 
Okay. Okay, where is it? Oh, hello, Chief. Well, you're just in time. Look. Where? Oh, say, what is this? First a cat on a pole and now a guy on the roof. Who's responsible for this call? Well, it was like this, Chief. Well, if it isn't the taxpayer's best friend in the fire department, severest critic. Huh? Hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, hi. Been writing any letters to the newspapers? No. Now, stop teasing, Uncle Moore, Chief. He's just soaked to the skin. Yeah, and that takes in an awful lot of territory. Yeah. How about saving those cracks for the fireman's minstrel show and getting our front door open? Oh, is that what you want? Well, why didn't you say so? Hey, Max, bring an axe. We've got a door to chop down. No, no, no. Can't you just send up a man and a ladder to one of the windows on the second floor? Oh, never mind the axe, Max. Bring a ladder. Okay. Say, Chief, there's a cellar door open around on the other side. The cellar door's been open all this time? Oh, I could kick myself. We could help you with that, too. Yep. <laughs> Thank you just the same, no. Say, boys, I'm awfully sorry about this whole thing. Let me make some amends, huh? How about you all coming in for coffee and sandwiches? Huh? Won't you? Hey, come on. Just for good old Gildersleeve. Huh? Okay, sure. Yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> Uh, have another cup of coffee, Chief? No, no, thanks. I've had two already. You've had four, but have another anyhow. Oh. Sandwich, Mr. Grogan? No, no, no. I'm full clear up to here. Incidentally, I made sure that cellar door was locked tight this time. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Grogan. Well, this has been swell, Mr. Gildersleeve, but now we'd better be getting back, boys. Hey, hey, you guys in the kitchen, let's get wheeling. Okay, well, uh, goodbye, boys. Thanks for everything. And if I ever have a fire, you'll be the first people I'll call in. <laughs> yeah. I like firemen. Say, Uncle Mort, can I go out and watch them leave? Sure, we'll all go out and wave goodbye to them. Come on, Marjorie. Hey, you too, Bertie. Okay, Uncle Mort. Yeah. Well, thanks for the hospitality. Yeah, so long, boys. Don't take any wooden fire plugs. <laughs> yeah, nice fellas. <laughs> Well, let's get back in. There they go. It's colder out. Catch the door, Bertie. It's good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Gee, we're all locked out again. Yes. This is where we didn't come in. Hey, isn't anybody ever going to get me down off this road? Oh, Oliver. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, let me remind you that next Friday is Halloween. And a few mothers are the kind that worry about the children being out and getting into mischief. Here's a worthwhile suggestion for you. Keep the kids at home with a well-stocked pantry. Yes, if you have plenty of popcorn and cookies and cakes on hand, you can be sure the kids won't go very far away. Now, to make popcorn extra good, drench it with plenty of melted parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, that delicate, tempting flavor that makes parquet a favorite for table use makes it delicious on popcorn, too. And remember, use parquet margarine in the cookies and cakes you bake. It makes them tastier because it's a real flavor shortening, not just a bland, tasteless fat. And not just at Halloween, but the year round, parquet margarine provides your family with wholesome, nourishing food values. Yes, parquet margarine is a highly nutritious energy food that contains important vitamin A. So use parquet margarine made by Kraft all three ways. At the table, for baking, and for pan frying. It's delicious, it's nourishing, it's economical. Tomorrow, ask your dealer for a pound or two of parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, our time's up. Good night. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. Each week at this time, Kraft presents from Hollywood, California, Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson.
We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. In the meantime, November is here again. Yes, and crisp, frosty November weather is going to make the whole family feel like working harder and playing harder, too. So now the right kind of energy food becomes more important than ever. Yes, right now it's very important that your family gets plenty of wholesome, nourishing food. Food that provides energy and vitamins that gives you and the children the kind of nourishment everyone needs. Now, parquet margarine, made by Kraft, is just such a food. Yes, parquet margarine is a wholesome, highly nutritious food made from selected American farm products. Parquet is one of the best sources of food energy you can serve. What's more, parquet margarine is a reliable source of vitamin A. Every pound contains 9,000 units of this important vitamin. Now, all this wouldn't do much good if your family didn't like parquet margarine. Well, we're sure they will. Yes, they're bound to like parquet's delicious flavor, whether you serve it at the table or use it for baking and pan frying. So order delicious, economical parquet margarine tomorrow. Just ask for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve. Uh, Leroy? Yes, Uncle Mort? Uh, come in here a minute, will you? I want to... Say, how did you get that scratch on your nose? And by George, your shirt's all torn, too. What's happened to you? Oh, I had a slight argument with a friend of mine. A yeah, slight argument with a friend, eh? I'd hate to see you after a big fight with a stranger. But where did you two argue? Inside a cement mixer? Nope. All the way from our backyard to Georgie Beasley's front steps. Oh. It was a sort of a running argument. Yes. Now, Leroy, I disapprove of you holding knuckle debates with your little chums. But, gee, Uncle Mort, you should have heard what Georgie said. No matter what he said, it wasn't the friendly thing to do. Well, if you'd have heard, you'd understand why I had to bop him on the smeller. You bop him on the smeller? <laughs> Leroy, where do you pick up that kind of language? From you. Uh. <laughs> Remember Wednesday when you almost ran into that truck? That truck almost ran into me, young man. And besides, I don't recall using those words. It was just after the truck driver told you to go. Leroy, and... never mind. <laughs> Let's get back to you. Young man, you must realize that you can't keep friendships by indulging in pugilistic altercations. What's that? Poking people in the puss. <laughs> yeah. Well, who wants to be friends with old Georgie Beasley anyhow? Now, now, Leroy, friends are more precious than gold or diamonds. What would a man have if he didn't have any friends? Gold or diamonds? That's right. No! <laughs> Leroy, I want you to go over to Georgie Beasley's house and apologize. Well, not right now. His big brother is home. Oh. And besides, I'm not going to shake hands with him after what he said about you. Come, come. Remember, sticks and stones may break. About me? What did he say? Well, I, I don't like to repeat it. But I want to know. No, Uncle Mort, you'd only get angry. Mm -hmm. and besides, your head isn't any fatter than anybody else's. Oh! <laughs> so he called me a fathead, did he? Yeah. How'd you find out? You... Wait till I tell his mother about this. Oh, you won't have to do that, Uncle Mort. He was just repeating what she said. Oh. <laughs> Let's drop the subject, Leroy. Only remember one thing. Friends are wonderful things to have. Because when you're over your head in debt, a friend won't let you down. And when you're up to your ears in trouble, a friend won't let you down. And when you find out you're on a limb... A friend won't let you down then either. <laughs> yes. Say, that reminds me... I've been meaning to look up an old friend from back home ever since I came to Summerfield. Does he live here? Yes, fellow named Charlie Dapple. I'll get in touch with him right now. Hand me the phone book, will you please? Sure. Uh, thanks. Uh, great chap, Charlie. I remember when I was first struggling to get into the girdle business. It was Charlie who helped me. To get into girdles? No, young man. Uh, yes, yes, he owned Dapple's department store at the time. He snapped up the first ten dozen I made. <laughs> Yes, he had a stretcher point to do it, too. Did that help you? Yes, sir. It pulled me out of a mighty tight squeeze. Uh, let me see. Uh, Daniels, Danner, Dante. Here we are. Dapple, Charles. 147 Olive Street. Pimento, 4733. That'll be good to see good old Charlie Dapple again after all these years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. Hello. Hello. Uh, could I speak to Charlie Dapple, please? Well, he isn't home now. This is Mrs. Dapple. Uh, Mrs. Dapple? Well, don't tell me that good old Charlie's married after all these years. 
Congratulations, Mrs. Dapple. You're a mighty lucky woman. Thank you. That's what Charlie keeps saying. Yeah. Uh, who is this? Uh, what was that? Who is this? Uh, well, when did the big event take place? Three years ago, Labor Day. Who is this? Well, well, good old Charlie married on Labor Day. <laughs> Say, I'll bet you're a redhead. No, I'm a brunette. What made you think I was a redhead? Well, you know how Charlie always went... No, I guess you don't. <laughs> Maybe not, but I will. Yeah. Who is this? Oh, it's an old friend from back home, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Uh, doesn't that name mean anything to you? No. Oh, but surely he's told you about the times we used to have together. Didn't he ever talk about Atlantic City? No. What about Atlantic City? Well, it's uh, it's in New Jersey. <laughs> well, uh, he'll be home any minute and I'll ask him all about it. Oh, no, no. Let's uh, make it a surprise. Make like what a surprise? Well, I'm going to drop over for a visit. Oh, but really, Mr. Now, come, come, Mrs. Dapple. I haven't seen your husband for five years. Let's see, you live at four, uh, 147 Olive, eh? Yes, it's an apartment house. The Venus de Milo Arms. If. <laughs> well, uh, I think I can find it. I'll drop in in half an hour. Oh, but I, I don't know if you should come today, Mr. Silvercoat. Uh, Gildersleeve's the name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, don't fix anything special for me. Uh, just think of me as one of the family. Goodbye. Uh, this is going to be fun surprising Charlie. He loves surprises. I'll never forget the night he sneaked a lot of his wax dummies into my office to scare me the next morning. And did it? It would have if our night watchman hadn't shot six of them. <laughs> he claimed they pulled a knife on him. <laughs> Mr. Dapple sounds like a keen guy. He is, Leroy. Good old Charlie. Hey, come along and meet him. Oh, but I wanted to go to a movie. We can go afterwards. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Yes? Uh, Mrs. Dapple? Yes? Well, well. Charlie certainly picked himself a lovely little bride. What? Oh, oh, you must be the man who phoned Mr. Silversleeve. Uh, Gildersleeve. Uh, by the way, is my old sidekick home yet? Well, no, and I've been expecting him for an hour. All right, Uncle, let's go to that movie. Uh, come back here, young man. Uh, Mrs. Dapple, this is my nephew, Leroy. Oh, how do you do? How do you well, do? come right in. Uh, thank you. Oh, now, don't look at this room. It's a mess. Oh, no, it just has that lived-in look. <laughs> yeah. Well, Charlie should be home any minute now. Mm -hmm. On Saturday afternoons, he usually stops at several places on the way home uh, uh, to get the football scores, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know how it is. No, not a baby. Uh, mind if we look? Oh, no. Come on, Leroy, don't you want to see the baby? No, I just want to see the movie. Okay, young man, no baby, no movie. Let's see the baby. Yeah, that better. Well, well, Mrs. Dapple, what a handsome husky child. Uh, what's his name, Charlie? No, Gertrude. Oh, pardon me, Gertrude. <laughs> Ooh, zitty bitty babums a zoo. <laughs> oh, dear, you frightened her. Maybe it's her face, Uncle Mort. Uh, nonsense, Leroy, babies just love my face. <laughs> Now, now, Mother's little angel cake. Shush. Yeah. Shush. I know it'll quiet her, Mrs. Dapple. It's one trick that always works. I got it right here in my pocket. Gee, Unc, are you carrying around a bottle of milk? No. It's my watch, Leroy. Yeah. Now, listen, little cupcake. You hear the tick tick? Oh, isn't that cute? She's holding it to her ear. Yes. There's nothing like a piece of jewelry to stop a girl from crying. <laughs> Dear me, it's a phone again. Uh, now, phone? let go of the gentleman's watch, darling, so I can put you down. No, now, Mother's Lamb, let go. Uh, uh, oh, dear, she won't let go. Well, you'll just have to hold him, Mr. Gildersleeve, while I take that call. Uh, but, but, but it's been years since I held a baby that young. Oh, no, no. Don't you be afraid. Huh? Once you've learned, you never forget. It's like swimming. Uh, swimming, I'll bet it is. Yeah. Oh. Here. Hold, Gertrude, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, well, all right. Take it easy, Gertrude. Oh, well, jiggly, isn't she? <laughs> Whoa, now. I'll be back in just a minute. Uh, you better come back now. She's getting restless. Now, see here, Gertrude. <laughs> oh, I was just kidding. Uh, relax. <laughs> kitchy, kitchy, goo. Kitchy, kitchy, goo. Uh, oh. <laughs> Gee, Uncle Mort, I never knew you could take care of babies. I can't. Uh, Leroy, would you like to hold little Gertie a while? Huh? Not me. Come on, let's ditch her and go see Hopalong Cassidy. Yep, wait a minute. I can't get my watch and chain away from her. 
And now, Gertrude, you've had your little fun, so let loose. <laughs> Oh. Uh, no use trying to force her, Unc. Huh? She'll get tired of it pretty soon and just drop the whole thing. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> I see. If she drops the watch, you get the works. <laughs> Leroy, don't poke fun. Now, now, Gertie. Let go of Uncle Throckmorton's 21 jewel nasty gold watch. <laughs> yeah, that's a good girl. You see, Leroy, I got it back. Oh, now she's got a hold of my hair. Let go, Mother's Little Devil's Food Cake. Say, she certainly is a cute kid. Leroy, don't stand there. Do something. Well, if I could find a pair of scissors, I could cut off that hunk of hair she's holding. No! Ouch! Gertrude, unhand my hair. <laughs> Say, she likes you. Yeah, she's practically drooling over me. Well, really, Mr. Gildersleeve, what are you doing to that baby? Adam, you better ask the baby what she's doing to me. Oh, oh, now, now, let go of the man's hair, darling. There. Uh, thanks. Oh, my scalp. Feels like I just lost a decision to Sitting Bull. <laughs> Now you just lie in your blanket like a good little girl while Mama runs down to the gas company. Yes. Now? Yes, or else I don't know what we'll ever do over the weekend. Charlie was supposed to attend to it. But, but you're not going to leave us alone here with, with Gertrude. Oh, she won't give you any trouble, will you, sweetheart? <laughs> See? Yes. Well, Charlie will probably be here before I return. Oh, and in case he isn't, uh, just heat the baby's bottle in ten minutes. Uh, ten minutes? Uh, take the roast out of the oven in a quarter of an hour. Yeah, take the roast. Then uh, light a fire under the soup. Fire the soup? And if a COD package comes, it's all right to pay for it. But, but I... And if it gets any cooler, phone down to the janitor for more heat. Huh? Bye. Light a fire under the janitor. <laughs> Put the COD in the oven. Phone down for the baby's bottle. Oh, my... Yeah. Uh, Leroy, I know which way it folds. After all, I used to be a baby myself. Yeah, now don't get fidgety, Gertie. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. Careful with that safety pin, Uncle Mort. Oh, my. Why don't these things come with zippers? Yes, yes, Mother's little leg of lamb. You better hurry up, Uncle Mort. Gertrude's getting restless. And cold, too. That's well. It's her own fault. She keeps kicking it off. Well, if you can't pin it, why don't you just leave it off altogether? No, Leroy. We've got to pin Gertrude down some way with this blanket. Ah. There we are. I wonder what makes her do that. Maybe she's just bored with everything. When she isn't yelling, she's yawning. Well, that's because she should be sleeping, Leroy. Possibly if I told her some little anecdote, that might put her to sleep. It always works at the Rotary Club. <laughs> singing or to sleep. That's a fine idea. Friends have told me my voice reminds them of a meadowlark singing bass. <laughs> okay, Uncle, make with the lullabies. All right. Uh, what would you think of a sleep in the deep? You know. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep. <laughs> Too deep. Yeah. <laughs> How about Rockabye Baby? That's it. Go ahead, Uncle Mort. All right, let me see. I think it goes, uh, Rockabye Baby in the treetop. <laughs> yes. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. <laughs> I can't remember how the rest goes. Now we'll come, baby, cradle and all. Yeah, that's it. Rockabye Gertrude on the treetop. She's going to sleep, so you better not stop. <laughs> when the bow breaks, the cradle goes lower. You're doing swell, Unc. Sing it once more. <laughs> Rockabye baby, let's go, Leroy. She's closing her eyes, so let's tiptoe into the other room, my boy. <laughs> Let's wait here till both eyes she shuts. Look out for that pen! Oh, nuts! Rock 
goodbye, baby. Oh, what's the use? I have been singing till my tonsils are loose. You better give up, Unc. Whatever it is that kid wants, it ain't a meadowlark that sings bass. Yeah. I'm afraid you're right, Leroy. Gee, if this takes much longer, we won't see those two pictures before dinner. Leroy, if this takes much longer, we won't even see dinner. I better call home and tell your sister we'll be late. Hand me that telephone. Yeah, I dear. Me playing nursemaid to a baby. Fine thing. Hello? Oh, hello, Marjorie. Uh, looks like Leroy and I will be a little late for dinner tonight, my dear. We stopped in to see an old friend. <laughs> Who's that? Your old friend? Uh, no, it's Gertrude. Uh, she's just a baby. <laughs> yes. Leroy and I are taking care of her. Uh, for Mrs. Dapple. She's out taking care of the gas. Yes, and we're even taking care of the cookie. Oh, you, Uncle Moore, taking care of the cookie? Yes. I was supposed to take the roast out of the oven and put the soup on the fire. But I had to put the soup in the oven because the roast was on fire. <laughs> oh, poor Uncle Moore. Yeah. Have you been having much trouble with the baby? Well, I've been singing Rockabye Baby to her, but something tells me she'd prefer there'll be some changes made. <laughs> You. That's a marvelous idea. And bring Bertie, Marjorie. And maybe she can patch up the dinner I've ruined. <laughs> All right. Oh, I think I know what's wrong with that baby. It's probably hungry. Yeah, hungry? Say, I never thought of that. Uh, let me have a look. Oh, my goodness. That's what it must be. Marjorie, hurry over quickly. What's wrong? Gertrude's so hungry, she's trying to swallow her foot. <laughs> Have you got that all straight now? I think so, Mrs. Dapple. We're to shut off the gas at 147 hour this afternoon mm -hmm. and turn it on at 3214 Winslow. Is that right? Correct. We're moving away from the Olive Street apartment tonight, and I don't want any slip-up. Oh, there won't be. Oh, now, uh, can I change my light and water here, too? No, the light and water company's down at 10th and Spring Street. Oh, dear. Well, that'll take me an hour. I left someone with my baby, and I promised to be right back. Oh, well, they'll just have to wait. Really, Marjorie, the way you handle that baby is a revelation to me. <laughs> yeah, you're certainly tidy with a dighty. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you ever learn all that, my dear? Oh, I took child psychology in school. Yes, but Gertrude didn't. How did you ever two get together? Oh, it was easy. <laughs> In dealing with hysteria and psychoneurosis in the field of speculative philosophy relating to the young, the prime factor was a thorough understanding of the mental and nervous processes of the infant mind. Simple, isn't it? Uh, either it is or I am. <laughs> uh, say, Leroy, how's Bertie doing? Oh, Bertie, how's everything? I'm doing as well as a kid, considering. Uh, considering what, Bertie? The cupboard. Well, what's wrong with the cupboards here, Bertie? Well, from the looks of them, these folks seem to have a mighty fine assortment of nothing. Uh, nothing? What do you mean? Make yourself plain. Okay, I'll speak plain, but it's going to sound ugly. Uh, these folks have got just about enough food in their kitchen for one meal. Uh, do you mean that Mrs. Dapple's cupboard is empty? <laughs> Man, that cupboard couldn't be any better than if that lady's name was Hubbard. Oh, <laughs> Oh, this is terrible. I, I never dreamed for a moment they were destitute. Well, what are we going to do, Uncle Moore? Don't worry. I'll fix things up, Marjorie. Uh, Bertie, take this $10 bill down to the nearest store and buy a lot of groceries. Yes, sir. Better make out a list. Yes. Some canned goods. Oh, Uncle Moore. That's terribly sweet of you. And some sugar. Oh, it's nothing, my dear. I get a lump in my throat. Lump sugar? It... <laughs> and a sinking feeling in my heart. Bacon soda? <laughs> When I think of what's ahead. A head of cabbage? Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. It brings the tears to my eyes. And onions. I suppose they just gradually got into debt and couldn't... Catch up. That's it. They couldn't catch up. <laughs> uh, Bertie, are you still here? You better get going. Take Leroy along to help you carry the bundle. Okay, right. yeah. Hurry out the back way. I'll bet that's my old pal now. And will I clap hands if here comes Charlie. Now, see here, Dapple. We've exhausted our patience with you. Why do you ignore our letters? Why do you hang up when we telephone? Why don't you be a man and make your payments on that piano like you promised? No, see here, mister. I'm not dappled. But by George, if I was and you used that tone, I'd cuff you around till you'd crawl back into the woodwork. Oh, yeah? 
Well, if you're not dapper, what do you care how I talk to him, you, you big blimp? <laughs> He's my friend, and you can't abuse an absent friend in my presence. Especially if he isn't here. Uncle not so loud. Huh? Oh, that's right. Not so loud, mister. If you want to fight, just step inside. Okay. At this time when I leave, I'm taking that piano with me. Over my dead body. That makes it even more attractive. Oh. <laughs> One more crack like that, and I'll shove that swollen zither down your noisy throat. Now, you take your hat off and state your business before I forget my manners and bop you on the smeller. Now, take it easy, Chubsy. Whoop! My name is Baxter of the Summerfield Washing Machine and Piano Company. Now, this fellow Dapple has been buying this piano from us on the installment plan, only he ain't kept up his payments. Well, I happen to know that Mr. Dapple has been up against it pretty badly lately. Uh, couldn't you just uh, kind of forget the payments this month? Forget it? How can I? I've got a memory like an elephant. Yeah, and a hide like one, too. <laughs> All right, then. How much is the payment? I'll give it to you myself. No, oh, no, you won't. According to our contract, once a payment is defaulted, the entire remaining balance becomes automatically due. Oh, my goodness. How much does he still owe on it? Now, let's see. I've got it right here. It's uh, $74. $74 more? Why, that mahogany monstrosity over there was never worth that in the first place. Either I get the money or else the piano. Yes. I think you mean it. Well, Charlie Dapple helped me up when I was getting started, so I can't let him down when he's just about finished. I'll write you a check for the $74. Let's see... That'll leave me with a balance of the 28 cents. Yeah, now there's somebody at the back door. i better go see. I'm coming, you blasted woodpecker. Excuse me, I'm the gas man. Don't want any, I've got enough gas. I come to shut it off. Shut it off? Didn't Mrs. Dapple call at your office this afternoon, probably to pay the bill? Look, brother... I'm a guy who sticks strictly to his own job. Yeah. I got an order saying turn off gas at Dapple Apartment 147 Olive Street. And that's what I'm going to do, brother. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let's not be too hasty about this, uh, brother. Uh, suppose I pay the bill to you right now. No. No, I ain't allowed to take no money. Uh, you don't understand, brother. I'm just a guy who gets orders to turn gas on and to turn it off. Yeah. Then I go where it says and I turn gas on... Or else I turn it off. <laughs> That's all I do. Oh, sounds mighty monotonous. I like being monotonous. Yeah. Uh, look here, uh, brother. Uh, by the way, what's your name? Uh, uh, Herman Peebles. Uh, Herman Peebles. Uh, look here, Herbie. Uh, Peebles live here, too. Uh, simple Peebles. The kindly Peebles. The salt of the earth. Uh, things have been a little tough for him lately. Uh, and there's another mouth to feed, too. You mean... Yes, that's what I mean. A tiny baby named uh, Little Gertrude. Yeah, think what it would mean to poor Little Gertrude if she didn't have any gas. <laughs> no hot milk. Uh, no hot water. No hot air. That's tough. Yes. Winter is approaching, too, Hermie. Need I say more? No, no. Don't worry, mister. I'm not going to shut off the gas here today. Uh, you're not? No, I... Just can't. Well, I'm certainly, certainly glad I convinced you. It wasn't you, mister. Just remembered I left my tools at the office. <laughs> Say, Uncle, when are we going to that movie? Just as soon as the dapple shows its nose through that door. I done cooked this rib roast so long it's done shrunk down to the size of a lamb chop. Yeah. Well, personally, I wouldn't mind staying all evening, only I've got a previous engagement. It's them. I'll get the door. We come for the furniture to take it away. This is the last straw. Don't let them do this to little Gertrude, Unc. You're right, Leroy. You men can't do this to a poor little helpless baby. We ain't doing nothing to no baby. Take the other end of this sofa, Terry. I got it. Now, get out of the way, mister. Why, George, they're not going to get away with this. Uncle, put down that vase. <laughs> I was just trying to help the men out, dear. Don't do us no favors. We'll help ourselves out. Careful coming out that door, Terry. Okay. Uh, quickly, Roy, lock the door. Now we've got to figure out some way to prevent them from stripping the apartment. Uh, Mr. Gillespie, huh? a lady just come in the back way and says she's Miss Dapple. Here she comes now. Oh, at last. <laughs> oh, thank you ever so much, Mr. Gildicoff. If... That's all right. Where's Charlie? Well, I can't imagine. Unless he's... 
Oh, of course. Huh? This was his Saturday to work late at the office. But he'll be here any minute now. Uh, that is, if he comes straight home. He better come straight home. There are a couple of men roaming around trying to repossess your furniture. Repossess our furniture? Well, I can't imagine... Oh, why, you must mean the moving men. Yeah, they're moving men. They're trying to move everything you got right out of here. Well, of course. We're moving over to Winslow Avenue today. Oh, my goodness. How can Charlie do this to me? And what about the piano? The collector tried to take it away, but I stopped him. Well, you should have let him have it. Huh? We just played it to break our lease here. It's your lease in my pocketbook, madam. Well, we better hurry up and get ready to leave. Oh, uh, did the men come to turn off the gas? Yeah, and you should have seen them turn on the tears. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, there's my husband now. Yeah? There's something about the way he knocks that I can always recognize. Oh, at last. Hey, Mrs. Dapple, I've been waiting for this moment all afternoon. Do you mind if I hide in the dining room and then when good old Charlie comes in, I'll jump out and yell surprise? Please, that's all I have left. Well, that'll be cute. Uh, all right, come right ahead. Uh, Leroy, Marjorie, hmm? uh, Bertie, I want you to get in on this. All right. Come on, let's hide. Yeah. Hello, Charlie, darling. Oh, how are you, sweetheart? What's the idea of keeping the door locked? Well, I don't know. In fact, I don't know half of what's been going on around here. Oh, but come into the living room, dear. There's a little surprise for you. Surprise? What do you mean? Where's the surprise? Oh, boy! Surprise, Charlie! Surprise! Yeah, where's Charlie? I'm Charlie. Who in thunder are you? Oh, my goodness. Gee, Uncle, what's the matter? It's that man. I never saw him before. He's the wrong Charlie Dapple. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But first, I wonder why I always talk to the ladies in our audience, because after all, some of us men aren't such bad cooks. Why, I can fry a wonderful egg. I can even make pretty good biscuits. So really, we men should know about delicious parquet margarine, too. So this is for men only. Next time you men feel like whipping up a batch of biscuits, use parquet margarine, made by Kraft. You see, parquet margarine is a real flavor shortening. It adds flavor to all baked foods. So no wonder the wife's cookies and cakes taste better when made with parquet. And if you like pan-fried foods, you'll find they're tastier, too, when you use parquet margarine. And you don't have to worry about parquet spattering or sticking to the pan. Of course, you'll want to use parquet margarine at the table, for you'll like its delicate appetizing flavor. Now, maybe you men aren't as interested in nutrition as the women are, but you should know that parquet margarine is a nourishing energy food that contains vitamin A. So, men, if you can't find parquet margarine at home, buy a pound or two tomorrow. You'll be pleased to learn that it's mighty economical, too. Just ask the dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. <laughs> Just a second till I find my key, children. Oh, I'm tired. Yes. Hey, somebody put a note under the door. It's for you, Uncle Moore. Well, no, eh? Hey? I wonder who it's from. Uh, dear pal Throcky, George Fitty just told me you were in town, so I dropped over to see you. Sorry I missed you. Your old pal and sidekick, Charlie Dapple. Uh, good night. <laughs> music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs>
Each week at this time from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Terry as the Great Gildersleeve. Written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, even though winter doesn't officially begin till December 22nd, it's here right now for most of us. Yes, and on cold, blustery days, plenty of good, nourishing food is all important. I mean food that supplies energy, food that produces body warmth, food that keeps us going despite the weather. Now, parquet margarine, the delicious vegetable margarine made by Kraft, is just such a food. Parquet margarine is one of the best sources of food energy you can serve. And that means it's tops in producing body warmth, too. And equally important in wintertime, parquet is rich in vitamin A. Yes, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. But parquet margarine isn't just good for you. It's mighty good tasting, too, whether you serve it at the table or use it for baking and pan frying. So for all these reasons, wholesome, economical parquet margarine deserves a place on your shopping list. Why not order a pound or two tomorrow? Just ask your food dealer for Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's the margarine that's made by Kraft. And now let's visit our friend, the Great Gildersleeve. Those certainly were two swell movies. Yes, thanks for taking us. Did you enjoy them? Well, Marjorie, I'll have to confess I fell asleep in the middle of the first feature and woke up toward the end of the second one. You did? Yes, Leroy. Those 65 cent seats are too darn comfortable. Uh, tell me, did Betty Davis finally marry Hopalong Cassidy? <laughs> Uncle, they weren't even in the same picture. Oh, they weren't? Well, then he must have been singing to a blonde horse. <laughs> now I'm all confused. Uh, who was it that defeated Notre Dame in the newsreel? Tarzan or Popeye? <laughs> it was Charlie's aunt. Yes. And he wasn't in the newsreel. He's in the picture coming next week. Oh. <laughs> That's the trouble with the movies. You can't sleep there in peace. What they need are more actresses like Betty Grable. Yes. Now, there's a girl with beautiful possibility. Potential. Uh, she'll get somewhere, that young lady. <laughs> well, it's almost midnight, so we'd all better get... Well, look at that. A bird cage. Yeah, where did that come from? It, there's a canary inside. Well, I don't understand that this wasn't here when we left. Maybe Bertie brought it in. Yes, let's find out. Oh, Bertie. Yes, Mr. Gilsleeve. It's Bertie. Whose canary is this? It's yours, Mr. Gilsleeve. It, it is? Yes, yeah, so you just won Napoleon in a raffle. It's Napoleon? <laughs> I did? When did it happen? While well, I was asleep at the movies? No, sir, at my lodge. This is the night the mysterious and bewildering order of the Daughters of Cleopatra hold their weekly business meeting and shag contest. Yes, sir. But I couldn't have been there. He was with us. Yes. Well, your uncle bought a ticket on our big raffle. Oh, yes. Now, I remember. But I thought you said the drawing was for a beautiful big set of dishes. No, sir. The lodge is raising money to buy itself a set of dishes, but the prize they're giving away is a canary bird. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is mighty nice to win on a 50-cent chance. First time I've won a prize since I wore my woolen underwear to that rumba contest. <laughs> Uncle. Yes. I'd like to thank whoever it was that drew out the lucky number, Bertie. <laughs> well, it just so happens that the drawing was done by the grand exhausted ruler of the pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> and it also just so happens that that happens to be me. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Bertie. Of course, it was just a coincidence, but did anybody say anything? No, ma'am, but the show was a lot of black looks. <laughs> yes, I guess they were. Yes. Hey, this Napoleon's a pretty feisty little bird. Will he sing? Of course he will. Only the man we brought him from says that in two, three days, he's got to get customized to his new surroundings. And after that, he'll sing just like this yeah, Eddie Nelson. Uh, Eddie Nelson. Oh, I see, yes. Well, it's time for all of us to get to bed. You better find a cloth someplace, Bertie, and drape Napoleon for the night. Oh, we don't have to do that, Mr. Gillsleeve. This is a special newfangled kind of cage. Look. Yes, yes. Well, imagine that. A bird cage with Venetian blinds. Uh-huh. <laughs> when the daughters of Cleopatra do something, they don't mess around by half. Uh, that reminds me of something I kind of hate to bring up. Uh, what's that, Bertie? 
Well, speaking of hairs, you never did pay me them four bits you owed me for that raffle ticket. Oh, yes. <laughs> Now, see here, Napoleon, you've been a free boarder around here for a week now, and you haven't sung once. Not one single solitary... Stop eating a moment, Napoleon, and listen to me. <laughs> oh, now I've frightened you. Hey, what's the trouble, old man? Haven't I tried to be a pal to you? Haven't I? By George, look me in the eye when I'm talking to you. <laughs> you've got to do something around here to earn your keep. <laughs> you think bird seed grows on trees? You better find your voice, little chum, or you'll find yourself directing, decorating somebody's hat. Hello, Mr. Gillespie. Yeah, hello. Is Napoleon worked yourself into a vocalizing mood yet? Yeah, not yet. You know, Bertie, I'm not one to look a gift bird in the bill. <laughs> but I'm afraid the cat's got this canary's tongue. No, sir, the cat was after this morning, but I chased him away. Oh, well, I don't know much about birds, but if, I, if, if ever I saw a moody mudlark... It's this jaundiced little jaybird. You know, I can't understand it, Mr. Gillsleeve. This canary bird was not only guaranteed to sing, but the man said positively. If, well, maybe we better take Napoleon back to the store and get the Duke of Wellington. <laughs> well, there was no store. No? You know, we bought that dicky bird off of a man that was selling them off the back of a truck. Well, but if he guaranteed them, he, he must have some permanent address. Well, he said something about if everything wasn't completely satisfactory to write him in care of the Canary Islands. Yeah. <laughs> Only he didn't say which island. Oh, uh, well, I suspect he was selling hot canaries. Only this one is not so hot. Good evening, Uncle Moore. Oh, good evening. Oh, was Napoleon still sulking? Well, I can't tell from the expression on his face. The only expression he's got. So what do you think, Bertie? I don't know nothing about canary birds. The only birds I've ever associated with is chickens. Yep. And even then, only to the extent of southern frying them, you know. Yeah. Well, we, we may turn Napoleon into chicken a la king yet. Hiya, <laughs> folks. Huh? Is that dumb bird still dumb? Yes, Leroy. We better get some advice from an expert. I think I'll go to a pet store or an aviary. Oh, you better try a pet store, Uncle Mort. Those aviaries are too busy these days with defense work. Oh, you... Oh, Leroy, an aviary isn't a place where they work on aviation. Well, I know. It's a place where birds of a lot of different feathers all flock together. <laughs> Say, Uncle, why don't you come down to the library with me? i got to take a book back, and you can find out a lot of things about canaries there. That's an excellent idea. Yeah, the bird stores are probably all closed, and this way I can get the information I want tonight. Okay, but I can tell you one thing about that bird right now. What's that? He's no stool pigeon. What do you mean, Leroy? He won't sing. Yeah. Here's the 88 cents for your fine, Leroy. The next time you want to use a dictionary, we'll buy one. Uh, turn it in while I find where the canary literature is, will you? Here's the information desk. I'll be right back. Yeah, okay. Uh, 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 excuse me, young lady. Shh, not so loud, please. Won't you step closer? Uh, closer? Oh. Hmm, uh, I must come to the library oftener. <laughs> what can I do for you? If my canary refuses to sing. What? My canary, my canary won't sing. And I wonder if you could help me. I'd be glad to, only I don't sing either. <laughs> you don't, eh? I'll bet you... Uh, have you got any books for a canary in that condition? Well, the music department has some volumes with bird calls. Oh, I don't think that would do. You see, my canary can't read music. Well, uh, how about a book that you could read? Oh, that'd be splendid. Something that would tell me the cause and cureness of curtness or coyness in canaries. You'll find that under C over there in the reference room. Uh, You'll have to hurry now. We're closing in just a few minutes. Yeah, thanks. I will. Oh, Le uh, Leroy, come along with me. I'm coming. Well, you better make it snappy, Unc. It's almost 9 o'clock. Oh, it won't take me long. Is this the reference room? Yeah. So let's see. Somewhere along here. The canopies. The canaries. The canaries. Oh, canaries. Ah, here's what we're looking for. Almost missed it. <laughs> it Native birds of the Bronx and how to get the most out of them. <laughs> Uh, what to do till the bird doctor comes? You're getting warm, Unc. Yes, I know I am. Here, hold my overcoat, will you? <laughs> uh, 44 famous formulas for feeding our fine feathered friends by F. McGee. Oh, <laughs> that sounds like it. I don't think you'll have time to read much, Unc. Uh, here's what we're after. A list of different feeds to food. I mean, uh, foods to feed Napoleon. You want to read them off, Unc, while I take them down? Oh, a splendid idea, young man. Ready? Sure, go ahead. Shoot the junk to me, Unc. Yes. Uh. <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, watercress. Watercress. Uh, nasturtiums. Nasturtiums. Uh, dandelions. Dandelions. Uh, marigolds. Marigolds. Uh, what's happened to the lights? Gee, they put them out. It must be nine o'clock. Come on, Leroy. Let's get out of here before they lock us in. Okay, but I'm sort of mixed up. Which way is out? Uh, I think it's right over here. Oh. Uh, not that way, Leroy. Here, take my hand. Oh! Ooh, an avalanche! Oh, oh my goodness! Oh! Oh! Leroy, where are you? Right here, under the book. Oh, are you hurt? Gee, my, my head feels funny. Say, hey, your head does feel funny. I can feel it going around and around. That's not me, Uncle Mort. I'm over here. But what am I touching, then? Oh, it must be that globe of the world. <laughs> if... Let's see if we can grope our way out into the other room. All right, take my hand. Oh, 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 oh to think of it. Trapped in a public library at my age. Gee, Uncle Mort, everybody must be gone. How are we going to get out of here? Uh, we'll find some door we can open, Leroy, or else I'll locate a window big enough to crawl out of. Yeah, a bay window. Yes. <laughs> Never mind, young man. I'll stay close to me so we won't get... Oh, 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 oh. Where are we now, Leroy? We're in the juvenile department now, Uncle. <laughs> Juvenile department? How do you know? The book's falling down and getting lighter. Good morning, Uncle Mort. Good morning, Leroy. Uh, Good morning. My, but you two look pale and tired. You shouldn't stay out so late nights. What kept you up so long? Well, it was like this, You better eat your breakfast, Leroy. Oh, oh, yes. Say, did you see the morning paper? There's the most mysterious story. Listen. Prowlers turn library (laughs) topsy-turvy. Excuse me, my coffee went down the wrong way. (laughs) Oh, gee, Uncle, we're sunk. Be quiet, Leroy. Let your sister read the morning paper. What else does it say, Marjorie? Oh, um, finding the door of the Summerfield Public Library open at 2 a.m. this morning, Patrolman Elmo Dunkel entered and discovered a scene of unparalleled confusion. Well, I wonder what that could have been. Gee, don't you know? (laughs) Thousands of books have been pushed from shelves, and the floor was, in some places, four feet deep in volume. That's an awful lie. I mean, awfully high, isn't it? It was estimated by city librarian Helen Hunt Schultz... Oh, yes, Miss Schultz, yeah. ...that the sorting and restacking of the books will require at least a week, during which the library will be closed. Boy, it's a good thing we got out our books last night. Yeah. Shall I go on? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Very interesting, yes. very interesting, yes. Members of the detective squad who are investigating believe it to be the work of a gang known as the, the Laurel and Hardy mob. Um, led by a large, fat man and his skinny little lieutenant. Why, isn't it warm in here? <laughs> the detectives discovered a clue in the form of a slip of paper reading, Watercress. Watercress. Nasturtium. That's so. Uh, dandelions. Eat your dandelions, Leroy. Um, uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm really not terribly hungry. Yeah. But incidentally, weren't you two at the library last night? Why, uh, yes. Come to think of it, we were, yeah. Oh, I suppose you missed the fun. There was no fun while we were there. <laughs> we were looking for information about canaries. Did you find anything? Oh, we stumbled across a few books. <laughs> uh, say, maybe we should give Napoleon a bath, huh? Uh, canaries are like people. They like to sing in the bathtub. <laughs> Shall we put the cage under the shower? He's... No, Leroy. Uh, Bertie, uh, you fill a soup plate with some tepid water, eh? Yes, sir. And if it'll help, I'll put some of my personal bath salts in it. Uh, they got the loveliest fragrance huh? called the last time I saw Harlem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, thanks, Bertie. We can't take any chances in Napoleon singing Boogie Woogie. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Maybe all he needs is a good wash job. Yeah. Now, here he is. I hope that canary bird can swim better than he can sing. Yes, thanks, Bertie. And now, you folks just go on with your breakfast. I'll handle this thing all by myself. Yeah, the last time I saw Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, good morning, Napoleon. Uh, have a good night's nice rest? Yeah. Now, I've got a nice bath all fixed up for you. 
That better make you sing, brother. Gee, Uncle Mark, what are we going to do now? Uh, give this bird a ducky. No, no, I mean about the police and the library and stuff. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry, Leroy. They're not looking for us. They're after a couple of fellows who look like Laurel and Hardy. Oh, my goodness. They are looking for us. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yes. Oh, let's not borrow trouble, Leroy. Let's forget the whole matter, huh? <laughs> Hey, I'm afraid this plate is too big to get into your cage, nappy old chappy. Can I get a smaller dish? No, we'll leave it here, just outside the cage, and open the door. Yeah. There you are. Well, come on out, Napoleon. Nobody's going to bite you. Yeah, don't be bashful. Maybe you should prod him with your finger. Oh, that's an idea. Oh! He pecked me, the darn little dive bomber. <laughs> I was afraid that had happened. Hey, now he's going out. Yes, come on, Napoleon. Make a snappy. We haven't got all... No, 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 Napoleon. Stop flying around the room. Hey, there's your nice bath. Here. Look out. He's heading for a window. Window? Keep away, up and watch. Shut the window. Uh, go back, you ding-dong devil. Oh, my goodness. He's gone. Yeah, he sure flew the coop. Oh, come on, Leroy. Bring the cage. we got to catch Napoleon before he heads for Florida. <laughs> I see him. Look, there he is on the branch of that tree. No, no, that's a yellow leaf. Oh, yes, I forgot it's November. I could have sworn it was Napoleon. <laughs> Say, don't look now, but what's that moving in the bushes? Where? Over there. Why, George, I think it's the bird, all right. Come on. Now, you head him off in the back, Leroy, and I'll sneak up on him from this side. Okay. Let me know if you catch him. Yes. Uh-oh. There he goes into that shrub. <laughs> now, where did he disappear to? He must be somewhere in here. Uh, Napoleon. Uh, nice Napoleon. Be a good boy and come back to Uncle Frockmorton, Napoleon. Hello there. Yeah, hello. Oh, oh, hello, officer. Excuse me, but what are you doing down there on your hands and knees, mister? Now, don't be stubborn, Napoleon. Uh, oh, say, you're a new man on the beat, aren't you? Yeah, what are you looking for in them bushes? Yeah, here, Napoleon. Come out of there. It, what's that, officer? Oh, I'm, I'm just looking for Napoleon. He's escaped. <laughs> I see. Aren't you a little late to look for Napoleon? Late? I hurried as fast as I could. He just flew out the window. Oh, he flew out the window, huh? <laughs> Naturally. And did you fly out after him? Why, of course not. What do you think I've got, wings? I don't know. Have you? Uh, you can see that I haven't. Napoleon has, though. Oh, Napoleon has wings, has he? Yes. Yeah. I was just trying to make him take his bath, but I guess he didn't want to, so he zoomed right out of the house. <laughs> well, didn't he wait to put on his clothes? Uh, why should he? Napoleon never wears clothes. Yeah. Here's Napoleon. Here, Napoleon. He uh, doesn't, huh? No. I'm afraid he'll catch cold in nothing but his feathers. <laughs> this is getting better by the minute. Say, are you sure you aren't Napoleon? No. See here, officer. Don't you stand there making jokes. If you want to be useful, come down here and help me find Napoleon. Here, Nappy. Here, Nappy. Here, Nappy. Oh, fine. Huh? Hey, look, how small is this Napoleon you're looking for? Oh, he can't be over four inches high. Four inches high? Uh, okay, then, three inches. I thought I just saw him. Oh. Hey, look, uh, about how long have you been seeing this Napoleon? Oh, ever since I won him on a raffle. Uh, <laughs> you won him on a raffle? Yeah. Well, well I have a report to fill out. Uh, Napoleon! You see, all this happened because Napoleon refuses to sing. You think it's on account of being in a strange house? I don't know. Do you live there? Yes. Then it's a strange house. Now, look, mister, let's walk over to the station where it's nice and warm and quiet instead of squatting in these bushes waiting for Napoleon to come marching out. Say, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Now, look here, mister. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Napoleon's been dead already for close to 120 years. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean that, Napoleon. Huh? The Napoleon I'm looking for is a bird. Yeah, well, he must be a cuckoo. Yeah. Now, look, are you coming along quietly, or do I have to... Sh Not a sound. There he is. You see him? Uh, here, Napoleon. Well, what do you know? It is a bird. Of course. Uh, Leroy, head him off. I am. Uh, Leroy, use your hat. Be careful you don't crush him. Hi, Bertie. Hop into your cage. There he goes in, Uncle Mort. I got him. Uh, you better take him in the house. Well, officer, uh, you satisfied? Yeah. Just listen to that, children. Oui. Uh, beautiful, isn't it? He's sure on the groove, all right, all right. Oh, it's certainly worth a lot of trouble to get a bird to sing like that. You're right, Marjorie. Let's ask the clerk what kind of bird seed he feeds this canary and then buy some just like it for our Napoleon. Oh, miss, will you please come here? Uh, what can I do for you? Pleased to meet you. Uh, 
We have a canary, and he refuses to sing, lady. Yeah, he won't give out with a jive. Leroy, he's not supposed to be a jitter bird. Yeah. And uh, possibly the boy needs a change from diet. Uh, what have you been feeding him? This time, not too inquisitive. Oh, well, you're not. Uh, we tried everything the books recommended. Uh, Cuttlebone, watercress, bacon, vegetables, apples. Have you tried Boyd seed? It, uh, boys, uh, of course. <laughs> he's gotten so fat on seeds, he keeps falling off his perch. Well, for falling off the perch, we carry a special padded bottom. Yeah. What have you got for birds who won't sing? Well, we have a number of remedies. Uh, he is Marble's Bobble Goggle, guaranteed to make the saddest canary a Pollyanna. Yeah. That sounds good already. And uh, you also might try our Melody Restorer and Whistle Food. Yeah. <laughs> it's revived more songs than Bing Crosby. Yeah. And this is a positive sure cure. A bottle from Philharmonic Symphonic Tonic for chronic lack of harmonics. Yeah. Which one would you care to try? Well, lady, we're in this thing so deep, we might as well go the whole hog. Please, not in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we'll take all of them. Are you sure they'll work? Oh, any one of them would work. But if you put them all together, the boy will simply whistle you out of house and home. Oh, well, that's all we need to do then, eh? Oh, yes. Uh, but just to be on the safe side, you might try singing to him. Oh. But the idea is to get him to sing to us. That I understand. However, if you sing to him, it is only natural for him to show you how much better he can do. Oh, well, then we're all set. Three different kinds of medicine and also singing. <laughs> now we can't fail, can we? Oh, no, not a chance under the sun. Uh, but you might take along this card just to be on the safe side. A card? Uh, what's this? Oh, uh, Dr. D.J. Roller, bird physician. If everything else fails, let me put your birds in the Twitter. Let's all sing like the birdies sing. Tweet, 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 tweet. Come on, Napoleon, sing like Bing. Tweet, 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 tweet. If we warble, then so can you. Eight bars to the beat. Now, Napoleon, do. Or you'll meet Waterloo. Tweet, 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 tweet. tweet. Well, come on, Napoleon, sing. Oh, I guess it's no use, Uncle. Yeah. Shall we try another song, Uncle? Uh, what other song, Leroy? Uh, how about that old one, uh, Just a Bird in a Gilder Sleeve Cage? Yeah. Oh, oh brother. Yes. Say, Uncle, are you sure none of those remedies we bought at the pet store will work? How can they? Napoleon keeps kicking him out of the cage. Oh, all except the gargle, he sits in that. <laughs> what about that bird doctor? Why don't you try him? Say, I'd forgotten all about him. Dr. Ruler. Yes, I'll take Napoleon there. And if I won't bring him back singing, I won't bring him back, period. Uh, oh, oh, excuse me. Is Dr. Roller in? Yes, uh, we are waiting for him, too. <laughs> uh, we? Yes, me and Butch. Yeah, but... See? Oh. Uh, Butch is a little Yorkshire cinnamon buff copy. Uh, what kind of you? Oh, uh, just a plain sawed-off yellow sulker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think a doctor will be long? <laughs> well, I don't think so. He's doing a plastic surgery operation. Is that so? A plastic surgery, eh? Uh, yes, it's a nose-straightening job on a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think I'll say that'll take all week. I... Oh, no. Huh? You may have our place. We're in no hurry. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm just about ready to give up canaries altogether. But... Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. No. Perhaps you don't realize all the joys and fun of owning a lovely little feathered companion. Do you have fun out of Butch? Udo. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll be very sorry to part with him tomorrow, too. Oh, uh, is something coming between you? Oh, yes. My mother-in-law yeah. is coming back, you'll say. A butcher's really hers, you'll say. Only she doesn't call him butch. She calls him a fluffy raffle. Uh, well, that's too bad. Uh, about her coming back. Oh, yes. And just when I heard him trying so nicely. Uh, trying? Yes. A butch, you'll say, is a fighting canary. Oh, yeah. Now, don't say a word of this to my mother-in-law, but Butch has kicked the living daylights out of half the canaries on the north side of town. Oh, well, I never knew people matched canaries in battles. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Especially a lonesome men that people leave canaries with when they go away someplace. Yeah. 
It's a love fair. It'll just sitting at home and listening to the darn thing singing, you know. <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, but why are you bringing him in here? Uh, well, sir, uh, before my mother-in-law gets home, I'm having the doctor do a little work on him. You see, likely he's developed something of a cauliflower beak. It, oh, I, I think I understand. Uh, yeah. Patient, please. Uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, here we are, Doctor. Just bring the cage in here. Yeah, uh, thank, you. thank you. Oh, that's a nice bird you have there. Huh? What seems to be the trouble? Well, Doctor, it's something like this. Oh, excuse me. There's a $5 consultation fee in advance. Oh, well, isn't that a lot for such a little bird? Mister, the smaller the patient, the more difficult to treat. Yes. Hummingbirds are $15 and ostriches are a dollar and a quarter. Oh. <laughs> I see your point. Uh, harder to hold. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here you are. Thanks. Uh, now, once again, what seems to be the trouble? Well, it's very simple. This bird, our Napoleon, doesn't sing. Well, that's a common affliction. Hmm, especially in this particular species of bird. Mm-hmm, yeah. yes, of course. Uh, turn the cage around. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm, uh, no question about it. That's it, all right. Mm-hmm, knew it the minute I saw it. Well, for goodness sakes, tell me, what is it? Uh, mister, as you should know, and apparently don't, there are two separate and distinct kinds of canaries. Uh, there are? Yes, the one kind, happy, gay, carefree, singing practically all the time. Yes. Yeah. Then the other kind, sad, always worrying, busy and distracted, hardly ever letting out a peep. Well, this is all news to me. What are the names of these two different kinds of canaries? The kind that sings is called the male. The kind that doesn't sing is known as the female. Is that so? Yes. <laughs> and this Napoleon you have here isn't a Napoleon at all. He's a Josephine. Oh! <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, let me ask you housewives a question. What is it that makes the difference between the meals prepared by a good cook and just an ordinary one? Well, in this man's opinion, it's flavor. Yes, it's that appetite-satisfying extra flavor that good cooks give to the dishes they serve. That's why so many good cooks are using delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. They've discovered, you see, this important point. That because parquet is so delicious for table use... It adds flavor in cooking, too. The extra flavor that makes the difference between a good and an ordinary cook. Yes, parquet margarine is a genuine flavor shortening for baking, not a bland, tasteless fat. Parquet is a delicious seasoning for hot vegetables, too. And because parquet tastes so good itself, it makes pan-fried foods taste better. And it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. Now, just because you'll be proud to serve parquet margarine at the table, don't think it's extravagant to use all you want in cooking. It isn't. Even though parquet is wholesome, nourishing, and perfectly delicious, it's so economical you'll be pleasantly surprised. So join the good cooks using parquet margarine and buy a pound or two tomorrow. Remember, it's parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. <laughs> Christmas list is getting me down. Cigars for Judge Hooker, a necktie for the mailman, and then for Bertie. Let's see. Oh, Uncle Mort. Uh, what is it, Marjorie? Have you thought of anything to give Bertie for Christmas? Oh, yes, you bet I have. Good. What is it? Josephine. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. 
We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, I wonder what you mean when you use the word progress. Because here's what I mean. Progress means making the old things better and inventing new things that are better than the old. Well, that applies to foods as well as to other things. And modern margarine is an outstanding example. Yes, modern margarine, like parquet margarine made by Kraft, is certainly a lot different from the margarines of even just a few years ago. Yes, all you have to do is to try parquet margarine once to know it's different and better because it tastes so deliciously good. That's why parquet margarine is a favorite everywhere, both for table use and for cooking, too. Now, you all know that proper nutrition is necessary to national defense. Well, parquet margarine is a wholesome, highly nutritious food. In fact, it's one of the best sources of food energy you could serve. And every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So get acquainted with this nourishing modern margarine. Delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. Remember, it's parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the Great Gildersleeve. Uh, uh, let me have some more of that green paper, Rilleroy. Uh, uh, thanks. Hey, who are you sending that necktie to? It's for Cousin Clinton in Iowa. Leroy, you can't do that. He's the one who sent you that tie last year. Oh. Well, in that case, I'll mail it to Uncle Stanley. Oh, no. Uncle Stanley gave it to Cousin Clinton the year before. Well, Uncle Mort, how do you know? Because I gave it to Uncle Stanley four years ago. <laughs> oh, are you sure it's the same tie? Oh, positively, Marjorie. I'd know those purple stripes and those orange dots anyplace. But, gee, what'll I give Cousin Clinton? Oh, I think we can skip him this year if we send him a Christmas card. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Llewellyn? Yes, Miss Marjorie. Be sure to address a card to our Cousin Clinton, will you please? Yes, ma'am. Right away. Yes, yeah, say. How are you coming along with the addressing in the ceiling, Llewellyn? Well, I'm a widow Gwoggy. Yeah? I feel as if I'd whipped my weight in Christmas seals. <laughs> I wish they'd get some different flavored glue, like strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. <laughs> They'll come to that, Llewellyn. You're just a little ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. Here, Leroy, what are you doing? Me? Oh, I just thought I'd see what's in this package Piggy Banks gave me. But, Leroy, if Mark don't open until Christmas. Yes. Haven't you any self-control or willpower, young man? Don't you realize that if you opened all your gifts ahead of time, when Christmas morning came around, you wouldn't have a single toy left to uh, a break? But, gee, I caught Marjorie sniffing around the present you gave her, Uncle Mort. I was not, Leroy. Or two. I just happened to drop it, and I was afraid it might be perfume. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, it's not perfume. It's a whoops. I almost told you then. Now, both of you children stop acting childish. Let me alone while I wrap this present. It's for Fibber McGee. I've already sent Molly McGee a big bottle of perfume, so I... Better get Fibber McGee's present in the mail for Wistful Vista tonight. Oh, what did you get for him, Uncle Mort? Something he needs badly. An electrical pants presser. <laughs> it's a neat little gadget, isn't it? Although I doubt if it'll make much of an impression on those gunny sacks McGee wears. <laughs> you think that's enough of a gift for Mr. McGee? Why not? Cost me 39 cents at the cut-rate drugstore. 39 cents? Yeah. But I thought Mr. McGee was a close friend of yours. He is, Leroy. He's the closest friend I've got. <laughs> And I'm not speaking geographically or intimately. I'm speaking financially. Well, I never knew that. Well, he isn't exactly tight. He's more of the borrow a tool today and return when rusty type. <laughs> the more I think about the things McGee has borrowed, the less I think of him. Who does he imagine he is? The doorbell? I mean the doorbell. It's ringing. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it. Uh, yes? Is this your domicile at Trot Morton P. Gillisleeve? It, it is. This is it, shorty. Okay, look. Hey, this is plenty heavy. Hey, where do you want this box, mister? Uh, put it right down here for now. Uh, what's in it, uh, mister? Just keep your shirt on, will you, buddy? Oh, yeah. All right, ready, Spike? Yeah, let's get this over with. All right. A one, a two, a three. Oh, oh build a slave, oh, build a slave. A oh, a Merry Christmas to you. you. Oh, build a slave, oh. Please sign here on the dotted line. 
A singing expressman, eh? Yeah, yeah. We are something in the nature of an experiment. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're doing it for the company to see if it's satisfactory, yeah? Uh-huh. Oh, no, we're doing it for the men to see if it's remunerative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I get it. Well, here you are, boys. A dime for each of you. A dime. Why, Spike, this guy ain't got no respect for music. Yeah, but he sure got a lot of respect for money. <laughs> saw a box so hard to get open. Oh. Must have taken me an hour. Yeah. Now to see what Fibber McGee has sent me. What is it, Uncle Moore? Huh? Yeah. Uh... Gee, another box. Yeah? And all done up with Christmas wrappings and stuff. Oh, my goodness. Hand me the hatchet again, Leroy. Oh, no, no, Uncle. Can't you see what it says? Where? Who? Oh. Uh, don't open till Christmas. And this means you'll kill the old snoop. <laughs> 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 McGee never means what he says. Uh, the hatchet, please, Leroy. But Uncle Moore, where's your willpower? Yes, and how about your self-control? Oh, they're fine. It's my curiosity has got the best of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, let me take one little peek, will you, huh? Now who's acting childish, Uncle Moore? Uh, you're right, Marjorie. I wasn't setting you a good example. Uh, hand me some of that ribbon and I'll get this pants presser off to my old chum. Oh, what am I saying? I can't send McGee this dinky little present now. Why not? Because that box probably contains a large, valuable gift for me. Alongside of it, my cheap little crease iron will look like, uh, well, 39 cents. What do you think you should do, Uncle? i better go right downtown and get him something better. Oh, I think that's very nice of you, Uncle Moore. It sure is. I think so, too. Uh, now, in order to get an idea of how much McGee spent so I won't spend any more, uh, don't you think I should take one quick little look as to what he sent me? No! All right, I'll just suggest it. Say, if you're going downtown, you better hurry up. It's getting late and the stores are awfully overcrowded. Oh, I won't have any trouble. Get your cap and coat, Leroy. I'll be right with you. Are you taking Leroy through those mobs with you? Yes, Marjorie. He and I have worked out a wonderful system for Christmas shopping. Haven't we, Leroy? I'll say. What kind of a system? Uh, it's called the angle worm formation. Leroy goes ahead and figures out an angle, and I worm my way through. <laughs> <laughs> A ritzy store. Yes. Haven't I always said that the best is none too good for Fibber McGee? Well, how do you do, sir? What will it be? Uh, I'm looking for a present for a friend. Do you think he might like a half dozen imported cravats? Say, uh, what's a cravat? A cravat is a necktie that sells for five dollars, Leroy. No, I, I'd like to get him a more substantial gift. Oh, here's something. Maybe he'd like a dressing gown or a robe, huh? Why, yes, we have some lovely ones. Say, in the neighborhood of a hundred dollars. Have you got anything in a cheaper neighborhood? <laughs> well, here are a few in the vicinity of $60. Oh, yes, yes. This brown silk one would be exactly the right thing. If you have it in a smaller size and some other color and a different material and a little less expensive. <laughs> well, then I'll have to go back in the stock room and see what we have there. If you'll just wait a moment. Uh, uh, don't worry. Uh, quit trying on those garbage, Leroy. You can never tell who wore them before you did. But I only wanted to see how I looked in one, Uncle. How can you see when they come to, down to your nose on you? Now, just stand still. Oh, please. just the sort of person I'm looking for. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir, but there's a little favor I'd like to ask of you. Uh, certainly, madam. What can I do for you? Well, if you see that man standing over there at the sweater counter. Oh, you mean the funny-looking gent with the bat wing ears and the dirty look? Has he been annoying you? No, he's my husband. Oh, he is? Oh, well, I didn't mean that nice-looking chap. I, I was talking about the one in the checkered overcoat standing next to him. Uh, the fat guy that looks like a cross between a scow and a barge. <laughs> That's the one who's my husband, sir. Oh. You see, I want to surprise him with this pretty blue robe for Christmas. Oh. But I don't know if it's the right size for him, so I thought that being that you two are of the same build... What? Do you think I'm as chubby as that chubby? No. Oh, now, please. Please, I don't want him to suspect a thing. Why don't you help the lady out, Uncle Moore? Huh? Yes, why not? Here, let me have it, madam. Uh, hold it up, Leroy. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, oh, this is so nice of you, really. Not at all. Uh, would you care to have me parade up and down like one of those models? Oh, no. No, thank you. Now, uh, just tie the belt. Yeah. Oh, there. Now, turn around, please. Yeah? Oh, dear. What's wrong? Is my slip showing? <laughs> well, 
either I picked the wrong size or else you're stouter than my husband. Now, see here, lady. Well, we can soon see. I have a tape measure here in my bag somewhere. Tape measure? I know Leo's size. Oh. Let me see. Oh, yes, here it is. Now, if you'll just put your arms up, I'll flip this tape around your waist and find out what size. Hey, what are you doing with your arms around that man? Oh, Oh, my goodness. Huh? He mustn't find out about the surprise. What? Uh, pretend that you're my, uh, my cousin George. I said, why are you hugging this fellow, Fanny? Oh, uh, why, uh, Leo, it, it's cousin George. I haven't seen him for years. You don't blame me for being glad to see my own cousin, do you? No, not at all. Glad to meet you, George. The pleasure's, the pleasure's, the pleasure's all mine. Voice still changing, huh? Yeah. Well, George, Fanny's told me all about you, but I always picked you as a different man. Well, I was a different man up till quite recently. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's just too bad that Cousin George is just passing through town and can't stop over for a visit. Huh? Aren't you, Cousin George? Who? Oh, me? Oh, yes, Cousin George. I just happen to be driving Driving? Through. I thought you hated automobiles. Uh, do I? Yeah, didn't the automobile ruin your horse collar business? Oh. I don't know, did it? Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> but I'm not one to hold a grudge. You're not? Well, not more than 20 years, anyway. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. What's happened to Francis these days? Uh, Francis? Oh, he's all right. He? Since when is Francis a he? I mean, she's just dandy. I talked to her long distance only last night. Talk to her? How can you talk long distance to a horse? Well, you pick... <laughs> Oh, oh, that Francis. <laughs> yes. I thought you meant the other Francis. You know, the one I mean, don't you, Cousin Fanny? Of course. Your wife. Yeah, my what? I never knew you were married, George, old boy. Oh, well, it's uh, all sort of a secret. We eloped. It's in Niagara Falls. Niagara... Ha, 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 Niagara Falls. Yeah. <laughs> boy, that's a hot one. <laughs> What's so hot about Niagara Falls? Well, uh, Leo just thinks it's funny that you'd elope to Niagara Falls when you lived right there all your life. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't stand around here, folks. I've got to catch a train. What about your automobile? I hate him again. Come on, Leroy. I'm coming, Pappy. So yes. that was your cousin George, Where's Fanny. Jesus? And you got the nerve to criticize my hair. Oh, dear. Wait a minute, Uncle Mark. Where are we going? Out. Let's get away from there before that gorilla gets hep. But if you'll just... He'll wait. ring my neck. How do I manage to get into such affairs? It was Cousin Fanny that did it. Where are you taking me, Uncle Mark? As far away as our chubby little legs will carry us. Now, don't be a dally-dally, Leroy. But, Dio, you can't scram like this. I can't, huh? Why not? Why, George, it was a lucky thing I kept calm and cool all through that encounter. But, Uncle Mort. What have you been but Uncle Morning about, Leroy? Come out with it. I've been trying to tell you all along. We've got to go back to the store. Why? You're still wearing that baby blue bathrobe. Oh! <laughs> Now, Mr. Llewellyn. Oh, yeah. Hello, Uncle Mort. Hello, Leroy. Uh, hello. Oh. Did you get something nice for Mr. McGee? No, we had a terrible time. I haven't been pushed around so much since my baby carriage days. Gosh, you never saw so many places out of so much stuff that so many people wanted so bad. Uh, what sort of present were you working for? Well, well, something unusual and expensive that he doesn't have already. Yeah. Uncle Mort almost got a dandy baby blue bathrobe, but after he took it outside to see how it looked in the daylight, he took it back. Yeah. Well, we'll go down and try it again tomorrow. Maybe you'll come along, Marjorie, to help me. Say, there's something missing in this room. I was wondering how long it would be before you noticed the difference. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what is it? Come, come, Llewellyn, don't be coy. What have you done? I took Mr. McGee's present, whacked it out of here, and walked it in a wampus womb closet. Uh, <laughs> you did, eh? And why did you do that? Oh, just so you could resist opening it before Christmas. Well, that took a lot of nerve. Oh, no, it just took a lot of strength. <laughs> Believe me, before I was fool, I bitterly regretted starting the whole proposition. Uh, Willie, I was a wreck. Yes, Mr. Llewellyn worked quite hard. Llewellyn, the next time you poke your probing proboscis into my personal affairs, I'm going to take a swing at it. What was that, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> if you fool around with something that's no skin off your nose, why, by George, it will be. Oh, please, Mr. Gildersleeve, don't lose your temper. Uh, who's losing their temper? But you're raising your voice. Who's raising their voice? You, you're just angry because I hit your present. Oh, is that so? I suppose you know everything that's going on in my mind. <laughs> yep, I can weed you like a dictionary. Yes. 
If you can read me like a dictionary, why don't you turn to the letter D and under discharge? You'll find that's where you are. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve, what do you mean? I mean that you're fired. Dismissed. Finished. Sacked. Now, do you understand? Well, all right. That's the way you feel. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Marjorie. Goodbye. Goodbye, wee boy. Goodbye, Mr. Llewellyn. What's he getting so huffy about? I never saw such an excitable fellow in all my life. But the man has got no Christmas spirit. Making me fire him right before the holidays. He didn't get his pay, did he, Uncle Moore? By Joe, that's right. You better run after him, Leroy, and tell him to come back for his money. Okay, Uncle Moore. Uh, and Leroy. Yes, Uncle? Uh, tell him if he uh, behaves himself, he can come back to work. Sure. Uh, he had no right getting me all worked up after a hard day shopping. I'm not an unreasonable man, am I, Marjorie? Of course not, Uncle Moore. Yeah. Uh, I'm just as nice as the next man. Sometimes nicer, too. I couldn't see him anywhere, Uncle Mort. You mean he's gone? Well, it was snowing rather hard. Oh, jumping jeeps. I've turned him out into the cold with only a thin Macintosh. Oh, now, don't you worry, Uncle Mort. Let's call him at his hotel tomorrow after you've both cooled off. Yes, of course. Oh, I can't do that. I don't know where he lives. Uh, do either of you? No, I don't think so. Not me. Oh, my goodness. I'm a cad. I'm a bounder. No, not a bounder. Just a cad. <laughs> I won't be able to look myself in the face the next time I shave. What'll I do? Say, maybe Bertie knows where he lives. Oh, yes, Bertie. Maybe she does. I'll go find out. Uh, Bertie? Yes, sir? Do you know where... Llewellyn, what are you doing here? Oh, just eating my supper, Mr. Gillisweave. Oh! <laughs> Going down? Hey, wait a minute! Uh, no use, Leroy. They're booking passage on those elevators a couple of days in advance. Uh, let's wander into the furniture department. Well, we've looked every place else for a present. Maybe we'll find something there. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about Fibber McGee's present, Marjorie. I only wanted to rest. My feet ache clear up to my shoulder blades. Oh, poor Uncle Mort. Yeah. So here's a nice big leather chair. Huh? Try it, why don't you? Oh, thank you. I will. Ah, uh, very comfortable. Now, if I could only take my shoes off, but there I go, daydreaming again. Hey, look at the buttons on the arm of this chair. Huh? I wonder what this one does. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh. Help me, the chair is now a bed. Oh, Leroy, now look what you've done. Gee, the back goes down and the bottom comes up. Here, I'll give you a hand, Uncle. You know, on second thought, this is so nice, I think I'll take 40 winks. <laughs> Wake me up in 1942, will you? Uncle, you can't sleep there. Oh, yes, I can. Watch me. Say, this is certainly a great invention. Now, I wonder what this button does. Oh, 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 oh. you spoiled everything. It's a chair again. How do, folks? Interested in the Snorwell reclining chair? Oh, is that what it is? Well, <laughs> Mighty cozy little one-man couch. And an ideal Christmas present for father, husband, friend, or boss. Uncle McGee, how about it? Yes, Uncle McGee, how about it? Yes. <laughs> See, that's not a bad idea. In fact, it's the best one I've had so far. Let me tell you about some of the Snorwell features. Oh. Three comfy, cuddly positions. Yes. Sitting, snoozing, and sleeping. Made of the toughest bull leather. Overstuffed, underslung. Why, you couldn't be more tickled if you bought a feather bed. Huh? Buy one for the rest of your life. Catch up? Yes. Oh, brother. Now, there's a salesman. What do you think, Uncle Moore? Well, how much is it? Thirty-nine ninety-five. That's without any of the accessories and attachments, of course. Oh, yeah. You mean it's got attachments like a vacuum cleaner? Yes, sir. The Snorwell is a first fully mechanized chair. Well, I'm interested now. This is for a friend of mine who is rather mechanically minded. Yes? Yes, he invented an illuminated sundial once. <laughs> for cloudy days, you know. <laughs> yeah. Huh? No, you wouldn't know. <laughs> Let me show you these features. Uh, Here's the overhead reading lamp, yes. also dandy for shaving. Yes. Then we have a combination ashtray and cigar lighter that appears and disappears at the touch of a button. Uh, what does it do with the ashes? Dump them under the rug? Uh, uh, we also have an electric clock and a compartment for sandwiches with a tank for ice water. Yeah. Gee, it does everything but sing you to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> It'll do that, too. What? For $24 more, we'll put a little radio inside the headrest. My goodness, if you tack a mailbox on the side of this chair, you could live in it. <laughs> oh, this one seems a little damaged. Look at this crack in it. Crack? Yeah. That is no crack. What? It's a slot for old razor plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
you know, Uncle, the more I hear about it, the more I'm convinced that this is just the present for Mr. McGee. So am I. A young man, how much did one cost with all the accessories? Well, the Super Deluxe Shoot the Works model sells for $119.95. Oh, my dear. But what do you think, children? Oh, yes, take it. What do you got to lose? $119.95. <laughs> well, I guess I'll do it just the same. Gee, I knew I'd sell one of these someday. What? Uh, uh, where is it to be delivered, sir? It goes to Flipper McGee, 79 Whistle Vista, Whistle Vista. Yeah. Can you have it delivered there before Christmas? Yes, sir. We can send it out by express this afternoon. Yeah, good. Uh, charge it to Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Uh, here's my card. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, and season's greetings. Yeah. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, come on, you two. We can go home now. Certainly is a load off my... Well, hello, Judge Hooker. Uh, Christmas shopping, I see. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. How are you, Marjorie? Just fine, Judge Hooker. Season's greetings, Judge. Thank you. You all look so happy there can only be one reason. Yeah? You've just finished buying the last of your holiday gifts. Yes, that's it. And it certainly was a humdinger. Yes, sir. It was for... Leroy, let's keep it a secret. It was for a certain very good friend of mine, Judge. Oh, yeah? Yes, yeah, a real pal, you know. <laughs> well, we'll be seeing you. Come on, children. Let's make another try for the elevator. Uh -huh. Say, could that present be for me? After all, I have been a pal to him. I'd just like to know. <clears throat> Young man. Yes, sir? What, uh, I was, uh, my friend who was just here, he mm. told me what he bought, but it slipped my mind. What was it again? Oh, it was a present. A Snorwell reclining chair with $80 worth of accessories. Well, well, that must be for me. Gildersleeve broke the springs in my best lounge chair, and now he's making up for it. Say, now I'll have to get him something better than that flashlight I bought him for Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, young man. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Gee whiz. So that's Fibber McGee. <laughs> <laughs> Like something going on in this house. Mm -mm. Sounds like somebody's raising a rumpus in the rumpus room. I'm going to investigate. Mm. I don't know why I'm so brave. In fact, I don't know if I'm so brave. I better stop here in the kitchen first. <laughs> now I feel better. Peculiar how much confidence a couple of carving knives gives a lady. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. I got you surrounded. I mean, I got you covered. Uh, Bernie, what are you doing here at this time of the night? Oh, Mr. Gilsley. Oh, my goodness. I thought it was a burglar. Yep. Oh, my stars in the firmament. That was a burglar. Huh? What's that all chopped up, Mr. Gillsleeve? Oh, chopped up? Oh, well, that's uh, the present Mr. McGee sent me. Uh... Oh, then that means there wasn't no burglar no how. Huh? Honest or truly, Mr. Gillsley, you ought to be ashamed of yourself what? scaring folks at 3 a.m. in the morning and sneaking around in your pajamas, <sighs> snooping at your Christmas presents ahead of time. Lucky I caught you before you got it open. Now, you go on back to bed. Yeah, but Bertie... Go on, now, get... You understand what that is? No. You what? know what you is? No, what? You is a problem, Uncle. That's what. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> Judge Hooker, yes. Come right in, Judge. I'm still a few days early, but I couldn't wait. Uh, Merry Christmas, Gildersleeve. Well, well, and what's this? Oh, just a little present I picked out for you, Gildy old pal. Uh, for me? Oh, <laughs> well, what is it, Judge? A set of matched golf clubs in the leather bag. Oh, Judge, you shouldn't have done it. By the way, I've got something for you. Oh, no. Well, I didn't expect anything. Well, it isn't very much. Oh, I bet it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> I had it right here in the hall. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Here it is. This little box. Huh? Uh. This little box? Huh? Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, thank you very much, Gilda. Oh, uh, won't you come in and look at our tree, Judge? No, no, I've got to be getting along now. I uh, feel a, a headache coming on. Oh. <laughs> goodbye. Uh, goodbye, and thanks for the wonderful present, old pal. Welcome, and goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Marjorie, look at the dandy golf outfit Judge Hooker gave me for Christmas. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Uh, what did you give him, Uncle Moore? The pants presser. I almost sent him a gee. <laughs> Oh, sure. Come on, Marjorie. Uh, what is it, Leroy? Look at this. Somebody tried to get into the box filled with Maggie and Uncle Moore. Oh, why, yes. Uh, Chips and slinders all around and holes in the box. Uh, why, who could have done it, Uncle? Uh, a mice. Uh, <laughs> hey, we better take a look inside and see if it's uh, damaged any. But it's still four days till Christmas, Uncle. Huh? Well, but who knows what's happened to it. We better act quickly. Uh, let me have that hatchet. Uh, thank you. Uh, of course, you know, I'd never open it under ordinary circumstances. <laughs> yeah. Ah, there. Yeah, put the lid someplace, Leroy. Yeah. Well, everything's all right so far. Uh, at last. I'm so excited I can hardly tear off the wrapping. <laughs> now, now we can see what we can see. What's this? Oh, a card. Uh, Dear Chum Gildy. Oh, good old favorite. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And here's your old lawnmower back. Signed, Fibber McGee. Oh. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. You know, people who won't try new things certainly miss a lot. Yes, you just can't know whether you really like something or not until you actually try it yourself. That's why I urge everyone to try delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. Because you're really missing something if you haven't tried this truly modern margarine. First of all, you're missing the delicate appetizing flavor that makes parquet margarine outstanding. Why, Americans from coast to coast have found they prefer parquet margarine because it tastes so good, both for table use and for cooking, too. Secondly, parquet margarine is an economical source of food values your family needs. Now, that's very important these days. Proper nutrition is essential to national defense. You see, parquet margarine is wholesome and nutritious. It's one of the best energy foods you could serve. And especially important in the wintertime, Kraft adds 9,000 units of vitamin A to every pound of parquet, making it a dependable source of this vitamin the year round. Now, with food prices rising, you owe it to yourself to find out how delicious and nourishing economical parquet margarine is. So don't put it off. Ask your food dealer tomorrow for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Uh, well, hand me those pajamas, Leroy. Here you are. Yeah, thanks. And to think that now that extra shirt, Marjorie. It's in the bag already, Uncle. Oh, well, I'll show him a thing or two. Excuse me, Uncle Moore, but where are you going? The Wistful Vista, my dear. I'm going to try and get back my $119 chair before it's delivered to Pepper McGee's house. You aren't going to be way over Christmas, are you? Oh, no. I'm just going to be there Tuesday night. And remind me on the way to the station. I've got to stop at the cut-rate drugstore. What for? To get McGee another pants presser. Merry Christmas, everybody, and good night. heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. week at this time from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about a conversation I had the other day. A lady I know asked me, why do you speak of parquet margarine as a modern margarine? Well, here's what I said. 
Parquet is a modern margarine because it's so different from the margarine of a few years back. You see, Parquet margarine is made by Kraft. And Kraft is famous for its fine quality, delicious tasting foods. Yes, delicate appetizing flavor is the big reason why Parquet margarine is different. It's grand both for table use and for cooking because it tastes so good. Another reason Parquet margarine is different is that it's a reliable, economical source of important vitamin A. Summer and winter, every pound of Parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. And that's something every mother and housewife should be glad to know. Besides, Parquet margarine is wonderfully wholesome and nutritious. Why, it's one of the best energy foods you can serve. But why not find out how deliciously good this modern margarine is yourself? Tomorrow, ask your dealer for Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve. Good morning. Oh, is that one of your Christmas shirts you're wearing? Oh, uh, no, Marjorie. And that reminds me. Next year, I hope you're more careful about giving my sizes to Aunt Sylvia. She sent me a 13 shirt and a pair of 17 and a half socks. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, I'm sorry. Huh? But you know Aunt Sylvia. Yeah. Why, she still thinks I'm a baby. Yeah? She sent me a pound of gumdrops and a Mickey Mouse wristwatch. <laughs> oh, Bertie, are you busy? Uh, no, Miss Marge. What can I do? See if you can sweep up some of the pine needles under the tree. <gasps> it's shedding like a $19 fur coat. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the kind of coat I got from a gentleman of Queens last Christmas. Oh, well, that's too bad, Bertie. Oh, I don't mind so much. The friendship only lasts until the 4th of July, but the bunny coat didn't start to give out until long by Labor Day. <laughs> Well, I hope you have better luck with your uh, current boyfriend. Oh, yes, Mr. Gillsley. Current is right. That boy's a real live wire. <laughs> he done treated me to a course in ten lessons in rumba dancing. Oh, well. Bertie, are you going to learn to rumba? Oh, yes, ma'am. I've been rumbing for years, Miss Marge. <laughs> I'm just going to improve my technique. Yes. Yeah. Professor Guadalupe, that's my rumba teacher's name, Stonewall Jackson Guadalupe. <laughs> He says I'll be a fine rumba dancer just as soon as I learn to put about twice as much energy into half as much work. Yeah. I can see what he means. Uh, what else did you get for Christmas, Bertie, besides this uh, course in the Cuban can-can? Besides which? Uh, in addition to your rumba coaching. Oh. Well, I received a bottle of the loveliest smelling lavender cologne yeah. and a box of the loveliest looking lavender face powder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, indeed. I- I'm at my stunningness in lavender. Yeah. <laughs> Do they match that perfume you had? <laughs> the last time you saw Harlem? Yeah. No, ma'am. <laughs> this is a new kind called Chattanooga Woo Woo. Yes. <laughs> or, uh, or Tuxedo Unction. Yeah, Tuxedo Unction. <laughs> well, I guess I better get up these pine leaves with the back. Yeah. I just came from Piggy Bank's house, and you know what? No, what? He just gave me a, that is, he wants to give me a, a swell Christmas present. Uh, but Leroy, Piggy gave you a pair of roller skates for Christmas. Well, he feels it wasn't enough, so he wants to give me a swell puppy, and boy, is it a cute one. Uh, well, if it's so cute and swell, Leroy, why is he giving him away? Because Piggy's father won't let him keep it. He won't? What's the matter with him? Oh, well, nothing's wrong with him. It's Piggy's father. He's got allergics. Yes. Sam, well, it's all right for me to have him, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Is it a very big dog? Oh, tiny? Hey, he's just the right size for this house. Oh, a uh, two-story dog, eh? Yeah. What kind is he, Leroy? Oh, a brown with white spots. What do you say, Uncle Morris? No, I mean, what kind of a dog? A boy dog. A boy. How about a dog? <laughs> well, I've always thought that a dog is a wonderful companion for a young man of your age, Leroy. Mm-hmm. Gee, so do I. Yeah. Uh-oh, here comes more work for me. <laughs> No, Bertie, this dog is going to be Leroy's responsibility. You're to take care of him yourself, young man, understand? You bet. Yeah. You better, because I know from experience when a dog comes snooping around the kitchen for a bite, it ain't particular what it takes that bite out of. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Bertie. A dog is good for a boy. Yes, I recall the dog I owned when I was Leroy's age. Good old Hector. I can remember when he was a pup. <laughs> what kind of a dog was he, Uncle Moore? Uh, Hector was a pug dog. 
Yes. You know, the kind that looks as if it's always standing with its nose against the butcher shop window? Yes. Oh, we had great times together, Hector and I. Almost broke my heart when I lost him. Was he run over, Uncle? No, Marjorie. He got too big to ride, and I traded him for a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing like a little canine pal. Oh! Oh, oh. oh goodness to mercy! What's going on in the cellar? Yes! Yeah. What can it be? Well, uh, that? Well, it might be my new dog, Tiny. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I left him in the cellar till I sold you on the idea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think we better investigate this idea of yours, Leroy. Come on. Sure, and when you see him, he's the cutest pup you ever saw. Oh, uh, really? Uh, uh, turn on the lights, Leroy. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my goodness. He's chewing up all my old clothes. Here, Tiny, come on away from there. You want to get sick? What? Here, Tiny, here, Tiny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get off of me with those dirty paws. Ye gods, look at the size of Tiny. <laughs> he must be a great day. Uh, oh, no, Uncle, he's only half great day. What? The other half is St. Bernard. St. Bernard. Oh, boy, look at that dog eat. Yeah. His idea of heaven is a back porch full of pork chops. <laughs> yeah, look at it. The way he goes at it, you think meat grows on trees. Can we get another ten pounds, Uncle? It's not until I arrange for a wholesale raid at the butcher shop, Leroy. It down, Tiny, down. Every time he hears me mention butcher shop, the rope quit licking my face, Tiny. And grab his tail, Leroy, before he knocks me over. Get down, doggy. Come on. Yeah. Thanks. Say, he's a smart dog. Every time he hears me say B-U-T-C-H-E-R, he wants to go chop shopping. <laughs> you should have seen us down at the M-E-A-T market. What happened? I tried to train him to carry the package home in his mouth. Didn't it work? No. Tiny thought it'd be easier to carry it home in his tummy. <laughs> well, I guess you can't teach a new dog old tricks. <laughs> say, it's getting cold out here. Let's go inside. Yes, all right. Hey, come on, Tiny. You can sit beside the fireplace if you promise not to chew the rug for dessert. <laughs> yeah. Don't keep that door open so long, please, Mr. Gilsleeve. This cold well is hot on us tropical folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right, Bertie. Yeah, yeah, come on, Tiny, come on. Uh, quit sniffing around that icebox, dog. Ah, uh, Tiny, this way. No, no, keep away from the stove. I guess he's admiring your cooking, Bertie. Well, he can admire till he's blue in the face, Leroy, but he ain't gonna get none of that there roast. I'm not cooking myself to a shadow over a hot stove for no truck horse of a great Bernard. <laughs> yes, look at there, Bertie. He loves you. Uh, get away from me, dog, before I smack you with your skillet. <laughs> but he, he's just playing. Well, if he takes one step closer, he's gonna be playing a dog hop. <laughs> Come on, Tiny. Let's go into the living room. The living room? You gonna turn that into a kennel? Oh, no, Bertie. We'll be careful. Careful, he says. What does a 150 pounds of giddy puppy know about being careful? I don't get excited, Bertie. You just take care of the kitchen department. This dog is Leroy's responsibility, and I've got a feeling in my bones. Oh! I shouldn't have mentioned bones. <laughs> get him off of me, Leroy. And grab his collar. Come on, Tiny, this way. Come on, Bertie. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to have to start training this pup not to jump up and lick you every time you mention F-O-O-D. How do you do that, Unc? Well, you make him understand you're the master, Leroy. Just look him straight in the eye and say, look out for that ashtray. <laughs> oh, his tail brushed off the end table. Sweep it in the fireplace, Leroy, before Bertie sees it. Okay. Yeah. Gee, be careful, Tiny. Yes, be careful, Tiny. Your tail will wag the room into a shambles. <laughs> Gee, maybe we can teach him to wag his tail up and down instead of from side to side. <laughs> I, I don't think it would work, Leroy. Why not? Well, I'm afraid that would go against the grain. <laughs> <laughs> he's not only smart, he's a mimic <laughs> Now come on, Tiny, lay down like a nice little doggy <laughs> hey, Oh, not over there, keep, keep away from that Christmas tree Look out! Yeah. <laughs> of all the clumsy, fumble-footed hounds Get him out of here quickly before he does any more damage Yes, right? Uncle Morse, yeah. come on, Tiny, you gotta go out 
Sorry, old man. It will take him a little while to get accustomed to our furniture, Uncle Mort. Yes. Yeah. Well, the furniture will hold out that long. <laughs> Help me get this tree back on its feet. Oh, now what? Well, and I bet I know what it is. But do something. Oh, quick, please. Gee, Bernie, what you doing standing in the sink? It's that dog of yours, Leroy. Look. Uh-oh. Uh, what did he do? He just chewed up the roast I had ready for dinner, and now he's drooling at me. Why not, Leroy? I know I'd welcome a nice, big, comfy, warm piano box if I happen to be a dog. On a night like this, thank goodness I'm not. But don't you think you'll get lonesome? <laughs> lonesome? Not if he keeps howling like that, he won't. But, uh, but suppose somebody complains. Let him complain. I've had a hard day trying to cope with that baby buffalo, and now I'm ready for bed. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I'll probably have a nightmare in which Tiny takes me for a walk, drag me along at the end of a leash. Oh, that'd be awful. I know it. That's what he did earlier this evening. <laughs> well, uh, good night, Leroy. Gee, I wonder what that can be about at this hour of night. You guess. Uh, hello? Uh, who? Uh, yes, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. He's one of the neighbors. Uh, what dog are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, that dog, yeah. No, it's my nephew's. No, it isn't my nephew, it's his dog. What? No, I won't take him in the house. I'm training him. Oh, yeah? I'd like to see you. Is that so? Well, you can go there yourself. Where did he want you to go, Uncle Morse? It's neither here nor there, Leroy. Oh, oh I know where it is. Be quiet. Let's go to bed now. Yeah, oh, why did Alexander Graham Bell have to do this to me? Yeah, hello. Uh, look, mister, I've had enough out of you. If you don't bo stop bothering me, I'm going to call the police. Oh, this is the police. Uh, well, hello, Sergeant. <laughs> uh, what can I do for you? Oh, sure, I'll be glad to. Right away, Sergeant. Goodbye. Leroy, I've changed my mind about Tiny. You run along outside and bring him in. That'll keep him quiet. Oh, boy, can I keep him in my room, Uncle Morse? You didn't think I'd let him sleep with me, did you? <laughs> Oh, hello, Marjorie. Hello, Uncle Mort. Look what I found under the rug in my room. Three bones and an old corset. Oh, more of Tiny's work. Yes, he also ate all the flowers I received for Christmas. Two pairs of silk stockings and almost a pound of my bath soap. Yes, that dog did that? Oh, he isn't a dog. He's an ostrich. Yes. <laughs> now, now, my dear, we must have patience. Oh. Is that you, Leroy? Yeah, me and Tiny. I'm going to take him upstairs to my room. You're fine. Good night, Leroy. Wait, Tyler. Good night, Mark. Good night. Good night, my dear. I'm going to bed myself. Oh, my, I feel as tired as last month's lettuce. Uh, what's that? Uh, uh, who, uh, who's there? Who's that under the bed? Is that you, Tiny? Oh, my, we always seem to meet. Oh, stop licking my face. Get out from under that bed, Tiny. Get up from there. No, no, don't stand up, you moose. Crawl out. <laughs> Down, Tiny, down. Uh, this is the last straw. I'll be doggone if this dog isn't gone tomorrow. Uncle Moore, are you up? Of course I'm up. I didn't sleep a wink all night. How are you feeling, Uncle? Terrible. That dog curled up under my bed, and then the bed curled up. <laughs> he didn't give me a chance to shut an eye. Did you try counting sheep? I did, but Tiny kept chasing him around the room. <laughs> Gee, that's too bad. It's all right. We're going to take this poison pup back to Piggy Bank's house today. But Uncle Moore... I won't hear a word, Leroy. Uh, I've got a splitting headache from lack of sleep. What time is it, anyway? Gee, Uncle Mort, it's half past 11 already. What? Out of my way, Leroy. I've got a 9 o'clock appointment. Uh, again? Yes. No wonder Piggy gave him to you. Tiny's appetite is enough to break the banks. In fact, we've got to find someone to palm him off on before he eats us out of house. 
Let's see who it is, Leroy. Sure, Unc. Say we are, Tiny. Yeah, he will. That's Judge Hooker. Come on in, Judge. Well, uh, good afternoon, folks. Well, look at the beautiful dog. Christmas present, Leroy? Yeah, is we a humdinger? Hello there, old boy. <laughs> How you tell, huh? Good old dog, you sweet old pup. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? Oh, don't you pay any attention to him, old boy. My, I wish I had a little puppy like you. Huh? Oh, you do, eh? Well. Why, <laughs> uh, yes. Did I say something wrong? Uh, better be careful, Judge. We'll let him take you home. <laughs> Why, well, I'd be tickled to death to have him. How about it, old man? Want to come home with me and bite into a nice, big, juicy steak? <laughs> Get this oven off of me. Get that out, you. Stop, stop licking my face. Oh, take your feet off the nice man's shoulders. Stop, Get me up from here. Yeah. Call off your dog, Leroy. Help. Help me pull him off the judge. Yeah. Yeah. Now let me give you a hand up, hooker old chap. Don't you hooker old chap me, Gildersleeve. That's a dangerous dog you got there. You're telling me. He attacked me entirely without provocation. He had plenty of provocation, Judge. You mentioned S-T-E-A-K. Yes, Judge. This is a smart dog. You've got to spell out F-O-O-D. If you can't pronounce what you're talking about. Gee whiz, I guess the judge won't take him now, Unc. Oh, so that was your game. Trying to stick me with his hamburger hound. <laughs> Get away from me, Tiny. I'm glad I caught on in time. What do you mean you caught on? Why, you couldn't catch on to a hippopotamus with a plunger in each hand. Oh, I couldn't, huh? Look who's talking. Talk Morton P. Gildersleeve, the Summerfield version of Dumbo. Oop. One more ill-bred remark, Judge Hooker, and the governor will be up all night trying to pick your successor. Go on, go on. I'm not afraid of you, you big gas bag. Oop. Just about 97% hot air. Is that so? Why, you little prehistoric dodo? Say, what's the other 3%? <laughs> Pure, unmitigated gall. Yeah, thanks very much. Why, you little prehistoric dodo, I'm going to pin your ear so far back you'll even look like a jackass. That's enough. That's enough. I'm leaving. Goodbye, Leroy. Uh, Are you sure you won't take Tiny Judge? I wouldn't have him if you gave me the Mississippi River and threw in your uncle besides. <laughs> goodbye, Tiny. And if Gildersleeve doesn't feed you right, bite him. Yes. Goodbye, Judge. And the next time we meet... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, down, Tiny. Wrong Tiny. <laughs> Oh, well, I bet he wouldn't have given the dog a good home anyway. Oh, Mr. Gillsby, the Eggman wants his money. Eggman? Oh, yeah, send him in, Bertie. Now, hold on to tiny Leroy. He probably likes eggs, too. <laughs> Come right in, sir. How much is the bill this week? Two dollars and fifty-three. That includes the chicken. What's the matter, Tiny? Don't you like chicken? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's mighty fine-looking dog you got there, Sonny. Well, I'm beginning to have my doubts. Oh, yes, yes. Isn't he a fine-looking dog, sir? Yes. I suppose you have a nice farm where a dog can romp to its heart's content. Uh, lots to eat, no trouble with the fussy neighbors. No, ain't had to fall out with the neighbors since, uh, let me see, guess must have been the April of 1912. Yes. And I remember it as clear as today, because Brian was running for the first third time. Uh, later, Lum, later. Uh, Did I hear you express admiration for this imposing canine of yours? No, but Our... I certainly like that dog. Yes, pardon me. Yes. <laughs> Reminds me of a hound friend of mine gave me in 1906. Or was it 1907? Yes. No, 1907 was the year of the panic. Uh, I got married that year, too. <laughs> hey, what a year. Yeah. Oh, yes, twerk. We're old seven. Got the dog for a wedding present. Yes, a dog makes a wonderful wedding present. Oh. I bet you'd like to have one like this to guard your uh, chickens at night. No, I don't need a dog for that. Huh? No, I ain't had a hen roost robbery since the summer of 19 and 22. Or was it 19 come, come, and... Come, 22 is good enough for me. <laughs> Do you think you could use this, uh, nice dog? Why, well, I certainly could. I need companionship. Huh? Uh, it gets kind of lonesome for me up at my place. Uh, All the children have grown, married, and got kids of their own. And scattered to the four winds, I suppose. No, they're all sleeping and eating and fighting up at my place. <laughs> See, that's why I need companionship. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we find that city life is a little too uh, confining for Tiny here. Yeah. We're looking for a good home out in the country for him. You'll take good care of him, won't you, Mr. Eggman? Of course I will. Yes, well, here's your money for the eggs. Now, let me get Tiny into your car. Hey, come on, nice doggy. <laughs> hey, Uncle wants to stay with you. He does? Uh, let me see. Oh, I know how we can get him to like you, Mr. Eggman. <laughs> Suppose you tell me how you dispose of the livestock you raise on your farm. Well, with the pigs, I smoke ham, skewer bacon, grind sausage. Yeah. That's right. Now, you start toward the door. 
Uh, how about the cows? Oh, make chip beef, <coughs> smoke tongue, <coughs> and liver sausage. <coughs> hey, man, don't you down off me. I'm an old fellow. Here, now. Hey, man, you've made a friend for life. Leroy, open the door. Come on, come on. Don't oh, stop. Head for the car. Go on. <coughs> Certainly peaceful mm. around here since we became dogless. Hand me the newspaper, will you, Marjorie? Here you are, Uncle. Uh, thanks. Uh, mm. Local beauty to give kisses with each defense bond purchase. <laughs> Think I'll go downtown tomorrow and might buy a few bonds for investment purposes, of course. <laughs> What's this? Uh, Marjorie, here's a picture of that dog, Tiny. Tiny? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. There can't be two dogs that look that hungry. <laughs> Listen to this. Has anyone seen this dog? Lost, strayed, or stolen from the home of Cecil P. Upshaw, president of the Summerfield National Bank. A valuable young Saskatchewan moose hound. <laughs> Reward offered for return. Oh, my goodness. Leroy! What is it, Mr. Ward? Look at this paper. That dog is tiny. We've got to get him back to Mr. Upshaw. Well, gee, yes, that reward. Forget the reward. You realize that a lot of people know he had that dog? We've got to return that reindeer spaniel before we're arrested for, for dog napping. Yeah? And we better go right out to the Eggman's farm and get him back. That's right. Get your cap and coat. Where does he live? I don't know. Do you, Marge? The Eggman? No, no. He's been coming here every Thursday for the past ten years, but he never said where he lived. Uh, does anybody know his name? No, I don't. Neither do I. Well, come on anyway, Leroy. Okay, but where are we going? We'll just have to drag all the chicken coops in the countryside for that bird. <laughs> the bird? That reminds me. Uh, Bertie? Yes, Mr. Gilsey? Uh, do you know where the Eggman lives? Yes, sir. Oh, fine. Where? On a chicken farm. It... <laughs> I know that, but where? Do you happen to know his name? Oh, just a second. I think I have it right. Well, here. that'll be a little help. Hey, don't forget your overcoat, Leroy. Oh, I found it, Mr. Gillsleeve. I just looked on the side of the carton of eggs he brought today. Oh, uh, that was using the old bean. Uh, what is his name? His name is Grade A Select. You... <laughs> I never saw such a narrow road in my life. Oh, look, Uncle Mort. Here comes a load of hay. Make a whip. Okay. I wish there was room for us to pass it. Yeah. All right, bossy. Uh, let us through the pasture, please, bossy. Look out, Unc. That ain't no bossy. That's a bull. It is? Whoa! Gee, let's give up, Unc. Just this one barn, Leroy, then I'm willing to call it quits. Uh, hello in there. Needn't shout, mister. I'm right here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, well, what is it? Uh, we're looking for a man who... Why, it's you. Yeah, hello, Mr. Eggman. Do you remember that dog we gave you this afternoon? That big dog named Tiny? <laughs> sure, sure. Well, we've got to have it back. That's right. There's been some mistake. And uh, now we must return it. I'm sorry, folks, but I can't do that. You can't? Why not? Because that there dog of urine picked up and ran away. That's why. Oh. <laughs> Quiet, Leroy. It's after midnight. Try not to wake anybody, including me. What do you mean, Unc? I'm practically walking in my sleep. Oh, my tired. I certainly was one wild goose chase, Uncle Moore. Yeah, I know it, Leroy. And your poor, tired, weary old uncle apologizes. Skip it, Uncle. It was partly my fault. Leroy, if we wanted to stand here and blame ourselves, we'd never get to bed. Good night. Good night. Yeah. I don't think I'll bother to take my clothes off. Just my overcoat and hat and shoes. Well, I haven't the strength to get the coat off. Just the shoes and the hat. Won't hurt me to sleep in my hat for once. <laughs> or my shoes. <laughs> it, what's that? Great jumping jeeps. Tiny's come home to roost. Leroy. Uh, uh, come on, Tiny. Gee, Uncle Mort, Mr. Upshaw has a big place, hasn't he? Yes, very beautiful grounds, too. In uh, just a second, I'll ask this gardener. Uh, I say, my good man, where can I find Mr. Cecil P. Upshaw? Hi, Mr. Upshaw. What can I do for you? Oh, excuse me. My name is Gildersleeve. Mm -hmm. I brought a dog that I think is yours. Uh, Leroy, uh, bring Tiny here. Oh, there, Tiny. Take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> Why, uh, it is my dog. Uh, good. Oh, thank you very much. Where's he been? That's too big a subject to go into now, brother. Someday I'm going to write a book about it. Why, you oh, shame on you. Yeah. What do you mean by running away from a <gasps> yeah. I'm greatly indebted to you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Please accept my sincerest thanks. 
Gee, Unc, no reward. Uh, uh, quiet, Leroy. I didn't come here for any reward. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the reward in the newspapers, sir. Yeah. If you'll wait where you are, I'll be right back. Uh-huh. Come on, boys. Yeah. Goodbye, Tiny. Yes, goodbye, Tiny. Hey, Uncle, I wonder what the reward will be. Huh? I bet he'll give us a lot of money out of his bank. Oh, no, Leroy. The most you can ever expect from a bank is a new calendar. <laughs> I won't be surprised if we get one left over from 1941. I'm sorry I took so long, Mr. Gildersleeve, but here's your reward. Uh, what? Here, you come here, boy. Tell... Yeah. What? Did you mean that after all the trouble we had to bring oh. your blasted big beagle back, you're returning him to us? Oh, no, this isn't Tiny. This is his sister, Tootsie. Oh! <laughs> Get down, Tootsie. Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, here's a timely New Year's resolution that's not hard to keep. And that's to cut down your food budget and do it in a very pleasant way. Here's how. Start using tomorrow. Delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, using parquet margarine is one sure way to economize on food without sacrificing flavor or food value. You see, parquet margarine is no ordinary margarine. It's a delicious-tasting modern margarine that's rich in food elements your whole family needs. Yes, you'll like Parquet's delicate, satisfying flavor, whether you use it at the table for pan frying or as a flavor shortening for baking. And you'll appreciate the fact that Parquet margarine is such a nourishing, wholesome energy food and a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. That's why economizing with Parquet margarine is no hardship but a mighty pleasant way to cut down your food budget. So, in 1942, resolve to try wholesome, nourishing parquet margarine. The modern margarine that tastes so good, yet costs so little. But remember, don't just ask for margarine. Ask for parquet margarine. Spelled P-A-R-K-A-Y. So, Marjorie, when we told Mr. Upshaw that we didn't want another dog, he gave us this. Oh, isn't that a beautiful basket of fruit? Yeah, it's got just about every kind you ever heard of. Yes, aren't those grapes luscious? Oh, and that pineapple, so ripe and ready to eat. Personally, I like the bananas the best. Yes. All in all, it's the most beautiful calendar the Summerfield National Bank has ever put out. (laughs) Happy New Year, folks. Good night. Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, times like these call for real thrift. Yes, we must save money to buy defense bonds, to help in any way we can. But we must be careful to economize wisely, especially when we economize on food, because the health and well-being that comes from nourishing food are vitally important, too. That's why delicious parquet margarine, 
The modern margarine made by Kraft is a good thing to know about these days. First, parquet is so good tasting, your family will want to spread it thick on toast, hot rolls, and bread. And parquet margarine is an economical source of food values important to a balanced diet. Parquet is a wholesome, nourishing food, one of the best sources of food energy there is. What's more, serving your family parquet margarine is a dependable way to give them vitamin A, because every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of this important vitamin. So why not start serving parquet margarine tomorrow? It's perfectly delicious for table use and for baking and pan frying, too. Yes, you can economize wisely without sacrificing nourishment or flavor if you use parquet, spelled P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve. Here you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. I cut you an extra large portion of roast on account of you must be extra hungry. Well, why should I be extra hungry, uh, Bertie? Because you didn't touch your soup or your salad. Uh-huh. I know you. You saving up your appetite for the serious bills, the meat and the potatoes. <laughs> yes, uh, serious, the meat and potatoes. <laughs> well, to tell the truth, Bertie, I don't think I'll have any. Uh... Uh, you didn't fill up on hot dogs while you was out now, did you? Why, what a question. As if I would. Oh, you didn't, did you, Uncle Moore? Marjorie, do I look like a man who stuffed himself with a lot of sandwiches and soft drinks between meals? Well, Uncle Moore... Uh, I... Leroy, I was asking your sister Marjorie. <laughs> well... I can tell soon enough. Huh? If you eat your dinner properly, then the suspicions I, I am positive of now will prove to be completely erroneous to my total surprise and everlasting amazement. <laughs> now, Bertie, you're a wonderful cook. You've got a right to be proud of your work, but uh, did it ever occur to you that there might be some other reason why I'm not eating my dinner? Such as, for instance, what? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's like this, uh, Yes, I've got it. Funny how I almost forgot. <laughs> Funny how you just remembered. Uh, what is it, Mr. Gill, please? Well, I suppose I should have told you about this before, but I've gone on a diet. A diet? A diet for heaven's sake. It was kind of sudden, wasn't it, Unc? Yes. No. It was one of my New Year resolutions. But this is the first you've mentioned it, Uncle Morton. New Year's was on Thursday. Oh, was it? Oh, yes, of course it was. <laughs> It always comes on Thursday, doesn't it? Oh, no, that's Thanksgiving. Yeah. Well, I've been thinking it over ever since I made this resolution, and I think I'll try it out for, uh, say, a day or so. Oh, you should try it out longer than that, Uncle Throckmorton. But suppose he gets hungry. Well, of course he'll get hungry. That's the purpose of a diet. Not this one. You see, the real reason uh, I'm... Leroy, remember the old Chinese saying, small boy who talk big seldom get invited to basketball games second time. <laughs> Excuse me for standing here with this here plate of food in my hand, but is you on this diet or is you isn't? I is, Bertie. I mean, I am. I'm sorry. It's a delicious-looking dinner, but... Oh, you uh... better take it away, Bertie. We must do all we can to help Uncle Mort keep his resolution. Yes, but I wish I knew more about this diet business ahead of time. It wouldn't have been necessary to practically ruin a perfectly lovely cow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think it's just grand of you to go on this diet, Uncle. Huh? And I'm going to do everything I can to help you stay on it. Oh, well, isn't that nice of you? <laughs> now, if you can't eat, at least you can smoke. You smoke? Hey, by George, you're right. And you haven't even started that box of cigars I got you for Christmas. Oh, yes, them. <laughs> well, where are you going, Marjorie? I'll bring you those cigars. Oh, my goodness, Leroy. I received some horrible Christmas cigars in my day, but these are a new low. <laughs> It's the first time I've seen cigars made out of cigar coupons. Oh, gee, if you don't smoke them, she'll feel bad. If I do, I'll feel a lot worse. <laughs> I'm telling you, Leroy, a single whiff from one of those punk perfectos... Nah, back already, my dear? <laughs> Here they are, Uncle Mort. Uh? Oh, I just can't wait to see your eyes light up when you light up one of these cigars. Uh, it looks like you got a glow, Unc. <laughs> well, to tell the truth, Margie, my dear, I... Uh, I also made a New Year's resolution to curtail my smoking. Oh, well, in that case, you can cut these in two. Uh, what? That way they'll last twice as long. Oh, uh, I, I better save them, Marjorie. I think I'll give up smoking altogether for the time being. That was a smart move, Uncle Mort. Yes. Well, in that case, I'll just hide the box so you won't be tempted to take any. Oh, you needn't do that, my dear. I feel sure that they're strong enough to keep me at a safe distance. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm strong enough to keep them at a safe distance, uh, 
It's saved by the bell. <laughs> oh, Betty's busy in the kitchen. I'll get it. Yeah. Gee, Uncle, aren't you getting pretty deep with those New Year's resolutions? Well, Leroy, you talk as if I were insincere. Oh, are you? Young man, that's neither here nor there. Well, look who's here, Judge Hooker. Oh, that old Judge. buffalo. Yeah. Just... yeah, I hope I haven't come butting into the middle of your dinner, Gildersleeve. Oh, no. In fact, Uncle Mort isn't having any dinner. You aren't, Gildy? What's the matter? Sick? No, I'm not sick. <laughs> going on a diet, Judge. Isn't that wonderful? I'd say it is. Why, do you realize that with Gildersleeve here on a diet, this country won't have to worry about a food shortage? (laughs) (laughs) Very funny. I'll bet you put on ladies' hats at parties, too. (laughs) And not only that, Unc's given up smoking. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't you know, old man, that if you don't smoke, you're bound to eat more? And if you go on a diet, you'll naturally smoke a lot? You just can't do both of them at once. Hey, I hadn't thought of that. Oh, the ordinary person might not be able to, but Uncle Mort is really a man of iron. Uh, Who, me? Yes, you're just a little rusty, that's all. (laughs) Oh, go on. Gildy couldn't keep a resolution like that any longer than Hitler can keep a promise. (laughs) Is that so? Don't judge everybody by the way you judge yourself, Judge. Why, if I wanted to, I could stay on a vegetable diet and keep away from tobacco for uh, for a whole week. Yes. And lose ten pounds, too. Gildy, it's a good thing for you I'm on the Superior Court bench. Otherwise, I'd make some money betting you you couldn't. Oh, hiding behind your legal gown, eh? Well, it's lucky for you you're not betting. Why, how much would you put up? Uh, any amount of money. Fifty dollars? A hundred dollars. Uh, too bad you're afraid to bet, Judge. Who's afraid? I'll take you up. Yeah, but, but you can't do that. How would it look if anyone found out that a Superior Court judge was gambling? But this isn't gambling, Gildy. It's not? No, this is a sure thing. <laughs> That's what you think, Judge. But here's what I, I'm going to take you to the cleaners. And it's a bet, huh? Yes, sir. No meats, no sweets and cigars, and ten pounds off in a week. Is that right? Right. Shake. Shake. Well, this is going to be the easiest hundred dollars I've ever picked up. Don't you think so, Leroy? Uh, don't you think so, Marjorie? Oh, my goodness, I should have got nods on this bed. <laughs> Good morning, Leroy. Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Bertie Lee Coggins. Better fix a great big breakfast for me. What'd you just say, Miss Gilsley? A uh, lovely day, isn't it? I've got an enormous appetite this morning. You better bring me three or four scrambled eggs and some bacon. Oh, no. I'm in more of a ham mood this morning. Whoa, damn, Mr. Gilsley. Haven't you forgotten something? Oh, yes, of course, some waffles. No, Uncle Mort. You've forgotten all about your diet. What? Oh, oh, yes. Well, I've changed my mind about that. But you can't, Unc. You bet Judge Hooker $100 you'd lose 10 pounds inside a week. Oh, yes, yeah, so I did. Well, I fixed a real non-fattening breakfast for you, Mr. Gilsley. Uh, non-fattening you have? What is it? A nice big glass of hot water and lemon juice. Yeah. <laughs> what a sour way to start the day. How did I ever get into this? Well, don't you remember I... Be quiet, Leroy. <laughs> it, it, never mind breakfast, Bertie. I'm going to drive downtown and get to work. But I intend using the car this morning, Uncle Moore. You? Well, what am I supposed to do, walk? Well, of course. The exercise is going to help you lose that ten pounds. It's exercise? But but I can't walk all the way downtown, especially on an empty stomach. Oh, yes, you can, Mr. Gilsley. You just keep your coat buttoned and nobody will notice it. That walk down here sure made me hungry. Uh, Oh, miss? Uh, Miss? Do you wish for some breakfast? Yes, I want a lot of breakfast. I want half a grapefruit, a baked apple, a breakfast steak, and not too small, and some potatoes. Uh, what kind? Hash brown, french fried, and mashed? Yes. Yes, which? Yes, all three. <laughs> I want some cooked cereal, hot cakes, a pair of eggs, sunny side up, toast and coffee. You got it? Uh, yes, sir. On the number two breakfast? Yes, on the number two breakfast. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but all that doesn't come down on the number two breakfast. Yes. You could have it on the number six breakfast, except it comes cheap a la carte. Oh, look, God. Well, all right, let me have it any way I can get it, just so it's quick. And, miss, yes. uh, bring me a glass of hot water and lemon juice. Put it down right here in front of me so I can sneer at it. Yes, sir. <laughs> hmm, some people. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I hope she hurries. My stomach feels like an Arizona rain barrel in July. I'm telling you, for the last time, Irwin, not another dollar until... Hello. What are you doing here, Gildersleeve? What? Uh, 
Oh, hello, Judge Hooker. Well, I never expected to see you here. I bet you didn't. What are you doing here? Well, I uh, just dropped in for, uh, uh, let me see. Oh, yes, uh, for a glass of hot water and lemon juice. Oh, well. Gildersleeve, I want you to meet my brother-in-law, Erwin Pidge. Who? Erwin, this is Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. The pleasure's all mine. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Well, uh, don't let me detain you. I'll see you soon, Judge. What are you so nervous about, Gildy, old pal? Who, me? Oh, I'm not nervous. Not a bit, not a bit, not a bit. Oh, yes, you are. Otherwise, why are you putting salt on your finger? If what? Oh, I thought it was celery. <laughs> oh, you're a case, Gildy. Isn't he, Irwin? Yeah, he acts as if he's got a guilty conscience. Yep. <laughs> you kid, John? Guilty conscience. It is what is known as a play on whites. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> we know, Erwin. Say, you are acting rather suspicious, Throckmorton. Uh, who, me? Yes, you. Uh, you're not trying to cover up something like going off that diet and losing the bet, are you? Why, Judge Hooker, how can you think of a thing like that? Uh, excuse me, mister. How do you have it? Rare, medium, or well done? Uh, oh, uh, bring me the lemon juice and water. Well done, please. Oh, but I didn't mean the lemon juice and water. I meant the... Oh, lemon... yes, the toast. Well, I'll have mine rare, yes. Now run along, girl, and tell the chef. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Gildersleeve, this looks mighty fishy. Now, Judge. I'd like to stick around a while and see just what you have ordered. And now, Judge. However, I'd be late for court, so I have to leave. Now, Judge? Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Gildersleeve. Uh, goodbye, Hooker. Come on, Erwin. Yeah. Oh, say, there's an idea. Oh, me? Yes, you. I got a job for you, Irwin. Stick around with Gildersleeve here for the next few days. Now, wait a minute. What's the big idea? I want Irwin here to see that you stick to the terms of our bet. But, but Judge, don't you trust me? Well... Then why waste Irwin's valuable time? Oh, he hasn't anything else to do, have you, Irwin? Not until a baseball season starts anyways. Oh, uh, are you a player? No, nah, but I'm a sort of celebrity in my own right. Oh. Hey, did you ever go out to the ballpark and hear the guy who sits over near third base and yells, throw that bum out? Oh, is that you? No. I'm the guy what sits in back of him and yells down, shut up, you louse. <laughs> You stay around Mr. Gildersleeve for the next few days, Erwin. And remember, if he smokes or goes off his vegetable diet, that means he loses his bet. Yes. Okay, Judge, I'll keep my eye on him. You can rest insured. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bye, Gildy. Watch your step now, or that hundred smackers is mine. Yes. Hey, he's a great guy to judge the salt of the earth. The very salt. Yes. Hey, what's so great about the salt of the earth, anyway? Uh, salt, salt. So, well, sit down, Irwin. I'll try to explain. Yeah. Salt of the earth. You see, oh. in ancient times. Uh, excuse me, please. Here you are. Oh, oh no, uh, that's not for me, lady. Uh, this is all for my friend here. All I want is this glass of hot water and lemon juice. Uh, don't I? <laughs> uh, pitch in, Irwin. For me? Say, I'm going to like this job. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I still don't get it. What's so extra special about the salt of the earth? Uh, look, Irwin, you followed me around for two days, haven't you? Yeah, two days and two nights. And during most of that time, I've tried to explain it to you, haven't I? Uh-huh. And you still don't understand, do you? Uh-uh. Yes. Well, let's skip it. It's a mere bagatelle. Oh, that's a good one. What's that? Well, it's French, and it means Irwin... Wouldn't you be happier in some cozy, warm pool room? Oh, no, I like being with you. It reminds me of the time I was a deputy sheriff. Yes. <laughs> oh, you were a deputy sheriff. Mm. The judge's influence, no doubt. Yeah, I used it to take prisoners up to the state pen until I had my accident. Oh, you had an accident. Mm. What happened? Well, one of the prisoners stole my badge and had me locked up. Yes. <laughs> hey, where are you going now, Mr. Gillisleep? I'm going right here to the YMCA. Mm. I'm thinking of taking some reducing exercise. You want to wait outside? No, I'll come along with you. I was afraid of that. Oh, look, they got a pool table. Yeah. Oh, maybe I can promote myself a game, huh? Yes, sir. And maybe you can. You stick around here while I go into the gymnasium. Hey, say, fellas, how about let me join you? All right, class, all right. All together now. A one, a two, a right, a left, a shut, the door. A what do you, you want? Seven, eight, uh, come on, speak up. I came to see about my weight. Uh, down, 
Uh, uh, straight. A stoop. Why don't you join our fat men's group? Uh, now, see here, mister. I'm not that fat, and I didn't come here to be insulted. Goodbye. A one, a two, huh? a three, a four. You're going out the wrong door. Uh, what do you mean? Now, now, fast. The boys, don't dilly, dally. Why, sir, that door is in the alley. It, it does? Well, splendid. Now I can dodge a pest that's been bothering me. A one, a two. Goodbye to you. Uh, free at last. Now for the nearest cigar store. Hey, Mr. Gillis, wait. Hey, wait for me. Oh, jumping jeeps, sir. <laughs> Say, this is just like being a dippity sheriff again. Uh, Irwin, weren't you playing pool? With them guys... They was playing for matches. Yes. <laughs> hey, n- now tell me, what's with the salt of the yoit? What makes it better like the salt of the sea, for instance? Yeah. Excuse me, Miss March, but I fixed Mr. Gill sleeves dinner. An imitation porterhouse steak made out of roasted peanuts and dandelion greens. You think he'll eat it? Oh, I don't know, Bertie. What does it taste like? Tastes like roasted peanuts and dandelion greens. <laughs> oh, poor Uncle Mort. I think he'd break down and cry if we could slip him a pork chop when that Irwin wasn't looking. Gee, I wish this whole business was over. Uncle Mort isn't any fun anymore. When he isn't groaning and complaining, he's mad at everybody or, or trying to tear the telephone book in two. Well, I tried to get Mr. Gillsleeve to give up that uh, diet he hid, but he's stubborner than a bulky mule caught in a tar pit on a hot afternoon. Why, that man, oh, there he is now. Everybody take to the cyclone cellar. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hello, Bertie. How are you, my boy? And Marjorie. You're even more beautiful than usual, my dear. Uh-oh, something's wrong. Yeah, huh? Jill, do you feel all right? Yes. yes. Maybe you'd like to rest a while, Uncle Moore. Nonsense. I never felt better. You know what happened? That Irwin, who's been shadowing me, had to go home. He's got a stomach ache. Yeah, now, maybe I can have a decent meal at last. Well, thank goodness. I've just been itching to fix you some nutriment that don't taste like sawdust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I can throw that imitation steak and fix you a real good one. Yeah, that's right. And some biscuits and jam. And a hunk of pie. And hurry up, Bertie. Yes, sir, I'm going. Yeah. I better catch the door on the way. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah, hurry up, Bertie. Uh, yes, Mr. Gill, please. I'm going to get you that roast peanut and dandelion green steak right now. Yeah, Bertie, what do you mean? We've got a visitor, and it's Judge Hooker. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, hello there, Gildersleeve. Yeah. Irwin phoned me. He was too sick to stay with you, so I came right over myself. Why, Judge? Because I have a sneaking suspicion that you're responsible for Irwin's stomachache. Whoa. Look out, Uncle Moore. Here comes another sled. Yeah, yeah. We... Uh... Better get over to the other side of the road, Leroy. Yeah. Gee, they got a horse to pull theirs. Yes, I wish we had. You getting tired, Unc? Oh, no, I... I can... <laughs> I can go on a while, Leroy. Oh, boy, I think this is fun. Yes, you would. <laughs> but tell the truth, I... I don't think I'm going to lose any weight this way unless I freeze it off. What's the matter, Aunt Cole? Not any longer, Leroy. I'm I'm numb. <laughs> I hope I'll be able to get my nose defrosted. Wait till we get to the top of this hill, Uncle Mort. It'll be keen sliding down. Well, I I don't know if we're going to get to the top, my boy. This sled is a pretty heavy load. Oh no, it isn't, Aunt. Oh yes, it is. How about us two changing places? But why? Well, I feel sort of funny sitting on this sled while you pull me all the way up the hill. <laughs> There you are, waitress. Have you brought everything I ordered? Uh, yes, sir. Here it is. Uh, Cream of mushroom soup. It's good. Lobster salad. Mm, um, Filet of sole. Yes, with marjorie sauce. Chicken a la king. My favorite fowl. Uh, baked potatoes. Yeah, big ones, too. Artichoke. Artichoke. And black bottom pie with whipped cream. Oh, boy. Say, how about the cream corn? Oh, right here, sir. Uh, at last. For the first time in days, I'll really be able to give my bicuspids a romp. And am I going to make up for all those meals I've been missing? Huh? What's that? Uh, who's there? Uncle Mort! Uncle Mort, wake up! What? Uh, where am I? You're still in bed and it's half past nine 
Get up, Uncle Mort. <laughs> oh, Leroy, why did you have to knock at that moment? I was just about to have a dream of a dinner. <laughs> the big box for, Uncle Mort? Oh, that's a steam cabinet, Marjorie. What you gonna steam, Unc? Me. <laughs> I'm gonna lose that ten pounds if I have to poach myself parboiled. Well, I'd, be, I'd be careful if I were you, Uncle. Oh, it's so simple, Leroy could operate it. Gee, can I? In a moment. Now run along, Marjorie, while we try it out. All right, but don't try to lose too much at once, Uncle. Yeah. How much weight have you lost so far, Uncle? Well, I don't know quite for sure, Leroy. These bathroom scales have such small figures, it's hard to read from where I stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard to read around a curve, too. What? <laughs> What do you mean, Leroy? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, my chest does get in the way a little. Bit. <laughs> Why don't you step on the scales now and I'll read the figures? Oh, a capital idea, Leroy. Yeah. <laughs> Careful. Stand still now. Yeah? There, it, it reads 213. Oh, my goodness. I've taken on weight, not off. Are you sure? If sure, I'm sure. Here, hold my robe, Leroy. I'm getting into this steam box right now. Yeah. Now, now, please turn that knob on the side, Leroy. Like this? Yeah. Uh, I can feel the weight dropping off already. Uh, turn it on some more, Leroy. Okay. <laughs> it's foggy, isn't it? What? <laughs> uh, don't, don't turn it on anymore. I can't hear you. What did you say? <laughs> uh, don't turn it on anymore. Oh, more. Oh. <laughs> now, stop, Leroy. It feels like I'm on fire. Fire? Okay. No, not higher. <laughs> stop it, stop it. Hey, what's the trouble, Unc? What's cooking? I am. <laughs> it's turned down the steam. I can't. It's so foggy, I can't find the knob. Uh, open the door and let me out. Where are they? I can't see anything. If you hurry up, Leroy, I'm roasting. Do something. Oh, gee, what do I do? Get a plumber? No, get a doctor. <laughs> I never heard of such foolishness in all my experience. Yes, Doctor. A man your size and shape, Gildersleeve, trying to boil himself down to skin and bones. I did? And you, Judge Hooker, trying to gamble your friend's health away. I'm sorry. I never thought it would come to this. Why, as a result of this foolish wager, Mr. Gildersleeve is not only suffering from malnutrition, nervous exhaustion, and anemia, but also from blisters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd never made that bet. Would it make you feel any better if I called it off, Gildy, old man? It would it. That's the nicest thing that's happened to me in a week. And it's mighty sporting of you, Judge Hooker. That's all right. And better rest now, Gildersleeve. I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. Come on, Judge. All right. Goodbye, Throckmorton. I'll phone to find out how you're getting along. Yeah, thanks, Judge. Goodbye, Doc. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Leroy. Yes, Uncle Mort? How are you feeling? Much better. The judge just canceled our bet. Gee, that means you saved a hundred dollars. Yes. But I still can't understand why I gained weight. I dieted and exercised. I didn't smoke. And yet I went up from 225 when I began to 230 now. Oh, no. No, you don't weigh 230. I said 213. What? You mean I lost 12 pounds? Where's that Judge Hooker? Wait till I get my hands on that little welcher. I'll kill him. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But first, these days it's more important than ever to know the facts about the foods you buy. So here are a few facts about parquet margarine, made by Kraft, so you can judge its goodness yourself. First, parquet margarine is a wholesome vegetable margarine, made of refined American vegetable oils that are highly nutritious and rich in energy value. These oils give parquet margarine its wholesome nourishment and make it one of the best energy foods you can serve. Another thing, parquet margarine is a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. Now, that's important. It means that summer and winter, there are always 9,000 units of vitamin A in every pound of parquet, and never less. As for parquet margarine's flavor, one taste will tell you how delicate and appetizing it is. Kraft, of course, is famous for fine-tasting foods, 
And parquet is no exception. Yes, thousands of housewives have found that parquet is the margarine with the delicious flavor, grand for table use and for cooking, because it tastes so downright good. Now, nourishing and good tasting as parquet margarine is, it's economical, too. So surely you should try it. Tomorrow, ask for parquet margarine. Just say parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. I'm so glad you've given up all those nasty old resolutions. Yes, yeah, so am I, Marjorie. Now, I've got a surprise for you. Oh, surprise? You have? Well, I love surprises. All right. Close your eyes. Yeah, like this? Yes. Now, open your mouth. Uh, like that? Yes. Now, close it again. Yeah. <clears throat> What's this? One of the cigars I gave you for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> now, you can smoke as many as you want. Isn't that dandy? Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, do you know what comes to my mind when I think of fresh bread, steaming hot baked potatoes, tasty pan-fried breakfast eggs, luscious cakes and cookies... Well, I think of that delicious modern margarine, parquet margarine made by Kraft, because parquet margarine makes all those good-tasting foods taste even better. Yes, parquet's smooth, delicate flavor makes it grand for table use, makes it a real flavor shortening for baking mouth-watering cookies, cakes, and pastries. Yes, and parquet margarine is a delicious seasoning for hot vegetables, makes pan-fried foods tastier, too. That's why I think of parquet when all sorts of good foods come to mind. And another thing, whether you serve parquet margarine at the table or use it for cooking, you can be sure it's good for your family. It's made from selected American farm products that are wholesome and nourishing. What's more, parquet is a highly nourishing energy food, and every single pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So try economical parquet margarine tomorrow. Just ask your dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, the delicious margarine made by Kraft. And now let's visit our friend, the Great Gildersleeve. More hot cocoa, Judge Hooker? No thanks, Bertie. I'm warm enough. My, but a nice fire feels good on a cold night, doesn't it, Gildersleeve? How should I know? You've been blocking the heat in front of this fire all evening. If you're not careful, you'll give yourself a high hot foot. <laughs> but, gee, Uncle Mort, don't you think the fire is good for Judge Hooker's ideas? Uh, I don't know what you mean, Leroy. Well, you said they were just half-baked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't recall. Young man, isn't it time for you to be in bed? Yeah, but you promised I could stay up as long as we had company. Well, that's right. Only I never thought the company... Uh... Uh, excuse me, Judge, I guess my foot's fallen asleep. Oh, you needn't hint, Gildersleeve, I'm going. Only it's been so cozy here, and the conversation's been so interesting. Conversation? Sounded more like a monologue to me. Don't they let you talk down in your courtroom, Judge? Poor oh, man, he's just lonely and blue, that's all. Who's lonely and blue? Why, just because I like the family atmosphere around here, in preference to sitting in that big, cold, empty house of mine... 
Does that mean I'm lonely and blue? Yes. Otherwise, you wouldn't come and stand in front of our fire and get all friendly and pink. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. You know what you need, Judge Hooker? Some good woman. No, no, I don't. I've tried a dozen housekeepers, but they all quit. Well, personally, I don't blame them, Judge. You're as crusty as a carload of peanut brittle. What do you mean, crusty? I'll have you know that I'm still considered one of Summerfield's most eligible bachelors. Yeah, eligible for what? Social Security? (laughs) 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 Leroy, aren't you in bed yet? Oh, another hint. Bertie, my coat and hat, please. Yes. Now, Judge, don't leave just because Leroy is going to bed. How about a game of old maid, a rummy? No, thanks, Gildy. You play a rummy like an old maid, an old maid like a rummy. <laughs> oh, a bad loser, eh? Here's your wraps, Judge. Now, be sure and bundle up well. Thank you. My, my, I don't blame the government for clamping down on the weather report. Uh, why, Bertie? Well, the less said about this weather, the better. I guess you're right. Well, good night, folks. Yeah. Good night, you little legal loophole. Now, don't be too harsh on him, Mr. Gilsley. Huh? The poor man is only hungering for companionship. Yes, and our food. Why, when he looks at you in this nice house with your nice niece and nephew and eating all the nice meals I fix, he gets so green it looks like spring is here again. Yeah. You know, deep down, Bertie, I really like the little duffer. And when I spoke about him needing a good woman, I didn't mean a housekeeper. I meant a good wife. There's some nice ladies that he might take two. It'd take two? That'd be big of me, Bertie. You really only allow one. <laughs> Sam, are you going to marry off the judge? Well, I don't want to count my chickens before they're hatched, but Leroy, I thought I told you to go to bed. You did, Uncle Mort, twice. Well, I'm not going to tell you again. Gee, that's swell, Uncle. It's getting sort of monotonous. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm going right now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, up at last, eh, Leroy? The only thing more difficult than getting you to bed at night is waking you in the morning. Ah, good morning, Unc. Say, remember what you said last night about finding somebody to marry Judge Hooker? Well, I I didn't mean for you to hear that, young man. Well, it's lucky I did, because I've got somebody all lined up. What do you mean? Who? One of my teachers at school, Miss Cagle. Huh? Boy, the whole class has been trying to figure out a way to get rid of her ever since September. (laughs) (laughs) If they have? Yeah, well, they'd be glad when I tell them the judge is going to marry her. If, whoa, here, here, wait a minute, Leroy. First, what sort of a lady is this, Miss uh, Cagle? Well, to give you an idea, the kids elected her Miss Poison Puss of 1942. (laughs) Unanimous. If... Why, she's so... But if she's anything at all like that, why nominate her for the title of Mrs. Hooker? Is that wrong? Well, after all, we're trying to make the judge's life brighter. Miss Cagle sounds like a drip of the first water. (laughs) Oh, gee, that's right. Uh, I was so anxious to get her off our hands, I didn't realize what a dirty trick it would be on the judge. Uh, Yeah. Well, we'll have to think of somebody else, I guess. Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Gillsley, but how about looking here in the morning paper? The morning paper? For what? For the bride. Maybe one of the persons in the personal will turn out to be the judge's dream girl. Well, thanks, Bertie. No harm in looking. Uh, Let me see. Uh, uh, Oh, yes. Here we are. Uh, Personals. Attractive young lady, a blonde, wishes to meet sympathetic gentleman of means. Object, Hollywood. No, I don't think... I don't think that's the judge's style. Read the next one. That sounded better. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, here it is. A well-to-do widow interested in meeting professional man over 50. Have refined tastes and grand piano. Also, private income, own car, and seven delightful children who will add life to any home. Oh. <laughs> Gee, for seven kids. Yes, wrong number. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bertie. I'm afraid our little justice wouldn't have any peace if we snagged him a helpmate out of the help wanted. Oh, jeepers, look at the time. i got to get over to Piggy Banks' house. Yeah? What for, Leroy? His Aunt Henrietta is knitting sweaters for the army, and I'm to bring her some wool Marjorie left for her. Well, run along by all means, then. So Henrietta Banks is in town. Say, Henrietta Banks. What's the matter with her? Nothing. She's perfect. Uh, for Judge Hooker, I mean. She has a nice social position. Her grandfather was the first white child born in this county. And <laughs> and she's really not bad looking. Gee, I didn't know you knew Piggy's aunt, Uncle Mort. Yes, I met her about ten years ago. I remembered I'd just ripped my trousers before she came over, and I didn't dare get up all the time she was here. <laughs> it really was very embarrassing. She sure sounds like the future Miss Judge Hooker. Yeah, well, I'm going to try anyway. Now, let me have that yarn, Leroy. I'll deliver it. 
While I'm there, I can sort of subtly get around to talking about the judge and matrimony and things like that. Well, I'll get your hat and coat up. Uh, but what about that appointment you had to get examined for insurance, Mr. Gilsley? Oh, yes, the insurance doctors do here in half an hour. Uh, you tell him I was called away on business, Bertie. Have him come in a day or so. If I'm going to press the judge's suit, I better strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> hey, Uncle Mort. Uh, thank you, Leroy. You know, I'm getting quite a kick out of this idea. <laughs> Won't the judge be surprised when he finds out all I'm doing for him? Well, here I go. Good luck, Mr. Gilsley. Happy hunting, Uncle. Uh, yes, well, thanks. Goodbye. Uh, he's a pretty squall guy, isn't he, Bertie? He sure is. Going to all that trouble just to make two lonely people happy. That's right. Look at him walking down the street. A regular Dan Cupid. Yes, sir. Ain't he got the figure for it? <laughs> Yes. Well, well, little Henrietta Banks. Why, you haven't changed a day since I saw you ten years ago. I haven't? Oh, you're just being nice. Huh? Oh, now, now, don't tell me. I, I know who you are. Uh, you're Mr., um... Oh, Mr. Gilder something. Yeah, that's right. Gilder Sleeve. Oh, yeah. yes. Fancy you remembering me all this time. Well, won't you come in, Mr. Gilder Sleeve? Well, I don't mind if I do. My nephew, Leroy Forrester, was bringing over this yarn for you, and... He happened to mention your name, and I said, uh, well, never mind, you'd be surprised what I said. <laughs> well, have a chair, won't you? Yeah, thank you. My, I, I can't imagine how you could remember me. Huh? After all, we only met once before, and you seemed so shy then. You're shy? Oh, yes, I remember. That was just a temporary bashfulness on my part. I suppose I was just afraid of making the wrong uh, impression. Oh, as if you could have. As if I couldn't have. <laughs> uh, but tell me, Miss Banks. Oh, or rather, uh, Henrietta. That is, if you don't mind. Oh, no, no. Not at all. Go right ahead. Well, when Leroy told me that you were here, I was greatly surprised to hear that you were still uh, Miss Banks. You were? Yes. My, but I'll bet you put up a gallant fight against all the men who must have wanted to change your name. Well, uh, some girls like a certain independence. Oh, uh, well, I knew that would be the trouble. That attitude of yours is hardly fair to us uh, poor men, Henrietta. Oh, do you think so, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Why, marriage is the most delightful of partnerships, uh, I'm told. And reminds me, uh, there's someone right here in this town who'd be just wonderful for you. Oh, really now? I don't know what on earth you're talking about. Now, Henrietta, you do too. I do not. Well, then I'll tell you. Oh, don't. So embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> who is it? it... <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to mention any names. But this fellow, well, he, uh, he's he been awfully lonesome. When I heard your name this morning, I... Uh, I mean, when he heard your oh, name. Oh, yes, morning, yes, yes, I understand. Well, uh, I, that is, he is, I mean, we... Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh? you haven't changed a bit. You're just as bashful and boyish as you were the first time I met you. Well, well I wasn't quite prepared. Uh, possibly I'd better come back another time. Yes, I think I should go now. Uh, you'll be hearing from me uh, later. I will. Oh, uh, goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, not goodbye. Au revoir, Henrietta. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello, Martha? Oh, Martha, you're acquainted with everyone in Summerfield. Well, tell me all you know about this Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, yeah. yes, that's the one. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. No. Well, what do you... No. 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 Oh, no. Well, lucky me. Of all the muddled up cases I've ever had to listen to in all my life... Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Hi. Glad you dropped in. How's everything? Coming along better than you'd ever suspect, Judge. 
Remember our conversation out at the house the other night? Of course I do. And as soon as I left, I thought of some dandy answers, too. Now, let me see if I can remember. No, don't bother. But there's one thing I've been thinking about, Gildy, old man. Yeah? What was that, Judge? You remember saying that what I needed was a good woman? Yeah? I didn't give that much thought at first, but now I believe you're right. Oh, that's fine. And I have a little lady who'll be just the person for you. You think she'd know how to run my home right, huh? Oh, yes, and make you very happy, too. Hope she knows how to cook. Oh, yes, I'm sure she's a wonderful cook. Uh, Very nice looking, also. Not interested in her looks, Gildy. At my age, a good cook is a lot more important than a pretty face. Oh, well, this lady is both. Um, I mean, she has both. Huh? That is, she is one and has the other. (laughs) Uh, When would you like to meet her? Sooner the better. Well, how about dropping over to my house for dinner next Friday? I'll have her there, too. Fine. Only you needn't go to all this trouble. Couldn't you just meet me here and we could settle the whole thing in ten minutes? Yes. Oh, no, you can't do things that way. Why not? Well, how do you know you're going to like each other, Hooker? Huh? Uh, this is a serious step you're about to take. Huh. You've got to approach it uh, cautiously. Well, maybe you're right. Believe me, if she's all that you say she is, I'll keep her for life. Well, I should hope so. Oh, Judge, recess is over. All right, Bailey. I'll see you Friday night, Gildy. Yeah, all right, Friday night. So long, Judge. Say, Your Honor, if you're still looking for a housekeeper... No, never mind, never mind. Mr. Gildersleeve has found a woman who sounds like a perfect servant. Well, that's nice of him. Yeah, he's a pretty good friend. In his fat, bumbling way. Ah, good afternoon, Bertie. Hello, Leroy. Hi, Uncle Mort. Well, I've arranged the whole thing. Judge Hooker's coming to dinner day after tomorrow. Oh, then I better fix something extra special scrumptious with a touch of romantic and a dash of lovey dovey. Yeah. You invited Miss Banks, of course. Oh, yes. And she was so excited, she kept calling me a dear boy. <laughs> I sure hope she's going to like Judge Hooker when she meets up with him. Oh, of course she will. Just as soon as I tell her that he's the unknown admirer who's been sending her the flowers and candy and poems... Say, did I read you the new poem I sent her last night? No, let's hear it, Uncle. Yeah, I've got a copy of it here under the desk somewhere. Ah, yes, here it is, under the water bill. (laughs) Listen to this, folks. Oh, Henrietta, sweet Henrietta, I can't forget a girl like you. Where'er I go, I see your face in the sun and the snow or any old place. (laughs) Your smile turns the winter into spring and makes my poor heart go tingling-a-ling. <laughs> and though I'm so shy, I worship from afar. Way up in my sky, you're the number one star. <laughs> oh, Henrietta, sweet Henrietta, I'd sure like to get a girl like you. Oh, gee. Gee, I never knew you were a poet, Unc. You sure have a gift, Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah, do you like it? I'll give you copies if you want them. Well, that should sure make her feel mushy towards the judge. Yeah. Say, does he know he's been writing her all that guff and sending her all that stuff? Yes. Well, no, I've invited him to come here half an hour before Henrietta gets here. Remind me to button hook her and tell him all about it then. Yes, sir, that's a very good idea. Yeah. And he won't have time enough then to get cold feet. Yeah. And cold feet has ruined more romances one way or the other than practically anything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything set, Bertie? Yes, sir, right to a T. All the judge's favorite dishes to put him in good humor. You know, I planned to decorate the table with orange blossoms so Miss Banks would feel like a blushing bride, only I couldn't get none. So I used oranges, but we was out. And that's why we got lemons on the table. Yes. <laughs> that must be the bridegroom-to-be now. Let him in, Bertie. Yes, sir. And won't he be surprised to learn of what we used to cook up for him? Yeah. Leroy, leave those olives alone. Yes, sir, I was just rearranging them, that's all. Really? It ain't the judge, Mr. Gillsleeve, it's the insurance company. They done sent another doctor to give you that examination. Oh, my goodness, I can't make it now. Tell him I'm busy. Have him come here another time. Okay, okay, but you better hurry before the rates go up. The rates. Gee, of all the times to show up just when we're ready to put over a big merger like this. Uh, Leroy... I wish you'd include yourself out of this affair. It's a delicate matter involving the future happiness of two fine people. 
And I don't want you in your juvenile way to mess it up. Oh, don't worry, Uncle Mort. I know my part. As soon as they go in the living room after dinner, I'll start playing those Nelson Eddy Jeanette McDonald records. Well, you're a bright boy, Leroy. That's right. Don't slip up now. The doctor done went, but he's been replaced by another visitor, Miss Henrietta Banks. What? Oh, she's too early, Bertie. Why, the judge isn't here yet. Of all the numbskull females that ever are, hello, Henrietta. (laughs) My, how lovely you look tonight. Oh, thank you, Throckmorton. And dear little Leroy, how are you this evening? Oh, just fine, Miss Banks. Oh, come, come, come now. No more of this Miss Banks, darling. Just call me Auntie. Uh Oh. (laughs) Well, how are you, Throckmorton? The cat still got your tongue. Uh, who, me? Oh, no. <laughs> we don't keep a tongue. I mean, nobody's got our cat. <laughs> uh, won't you have a, a sit down? <laughs> Thank you. Now, come over here and sit beside me. Huh? There. Uh-huh. That's better, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes, considerably. <laughs> You know, I was so anxious to find out what your surprise was. I, I just couldn't wait. Oh. That's why I'm here so early. Uh, do you think I'm acting like a giddy young schoolgirl? Yes. Oh, Throckmorton, you say the most flattering, precious things. Yes. Almost as nice as your poems. Yes. Yeah. My poems? But I never wrote you any poems. Oh, come, come now. Don't deny them, you shy, modest boy. If, but there must be some mistake. Why, not at all. Oh, uh, incidentally, Throckmorton, uh, do you particularly like the color of those drapes at the window? Well, I don't know. I never gave it much thought. Why? Oh, I was just thinking about changing them, that's all. Oh, uh, y- you mean... Uh, uh, yes. That's what I thought you meant. <laughs> uh, uh, Throckmorton, am I going to get that big surprise before dinner or afterward? Well, Henrietta, looks like you're going to get it any minute now. <laughs> Excuse me, 